Yeah, that's right. I was completely off time with the music. Bitch! <laughs> Welcome in. Hi, Desa. I'd like to say the fact Ohio is boring. I've never been to America, but I will take your word for it. You're right, best and correct. I'm gonna go driving through Ohio in a few days, and I'm not excited. Yeah. Nice. Also, rest in peace, Mia Fair. She died today, did she? I'm so sad. Rip Queen. She had big boobies. I'm so sad. I saw up with the music, painful suffering. Da da da. Da da da. Da da da. Da da da. Do 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 do. Do 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 It's very easy for me to be off time with the music because. Oh! Because, <laughs> um, I can't hear it, as I've stated every single stream so far. She had big boobs, she did. This is so sad. Hmm. This is so sad. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, today we are starting, and probably finishing, Kiss 4, A Visit Any Investigations. So far I'm loving this game, and apparently this is, like, the best case in the game. So, I'm really looking forward to today. It's always unsettling with no music. You know what? You're gonna hear exactly what I'm hearing. I'm moving you to- whoopsie, live scene. I'm moving you to my- to no music. You're not allowed it. If I can't have music, neither can you. So... I know three characters in this case. Besides, like, main characters. Like, there's obviously- there's Van Karma, Francisca. The three characters that I know are the Judge, uh, Callisto, and Bad. And I know that the judge isn't going to be a killer, and I highly doubt that Bad is going to be a killer, so... You know, for my sussy today... I'm sorry, little lady, it's got to be you. She's just a silly gal, she got too silly, and, uh, fucking murdered... Burned Faraday. Whoopsie. Sorry, spoilers. We don't know that yet. <laughs> my original stream title was going to be Burned Faraday, more like Burned Faradad. But then I decided it would be funnier if it just cut off, like, Ben Faraday, more like- Oh, he's dead. <laughs> Jokes on you, it is the judge. Shit, damn. And that's why he shows up in the later games. He got- he got off. He's like, Oh, but you see, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, you can't convict me, because I'm epic. Bye! And that's why Edgeworth doesn't show up in the later games, because he's sad at the judge. Even though this takes place before, like, the first Ace Attorney game. But, ignore that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's let's just get started. I can't really think of anything else to say. I'm pretty certain that everything's all ready. And it is getting so hot, by the way. Like, recently it's been so fucking hot. The last, like, two streams, was it? The two- the- We've had, like, three streams in a row at this point. This is the third stream. So the last two streams, it's been so hot. Like, after stream... I've, I've been, like, <laughs> practically stuck to my chair because I'm so, like, sweaty because, oh my god, it is boiling. And I'm wearing only, like, a vest and some very thin pants, so, like, Jesus. I've started wearing clothes more recently. I say more recently, it's been, like, probably a month or two by now. Comfy, but really inconvenient. Unconvenient? That's not right, is it? I don't know. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Let's start stream. We are started stream. What am I doing? I'm live. <laughs> Let's start the game. <laughs> Confirm. <clears throat> okay, Faraday. The young lady who calls herself the second Yatagrasu. Hi, are you good, buddy? Listen! The piece of cloth that she'd conjured up has taken me back to many years ago. Seven years? Wait, seven years earlier? I thought it was ten years earlier. Wait, now I'm confused. These incidents are not the same. Oh, it's me! Hi, bitches! It's I! Oh my god, it's Killer Stone Burn! So I feel like this is gonna be like a... sort of... Yeah, that's right! I did it! I killed the guy! I'll explain after. But it was the great Thiefiana Garasu that told me to do it! Objection! I asked the defendant just what exactly you're trying to say. Don't you get it? I know the true identity of the Yada Garasu. The Yadagarasu is the man standing over there to prosecute his bench. Are you saying that I'm the Yadagarasu? Don't you dare deny it. 
you told me to kill him when you snuck into the embassy. Embassy? Ooh. Are you claiming that Mr. Faraday is the Adagrasu? That's exactly what I'm saying. Objection! Mr. Rell, I think we've heard just about enough out of you. Your Honor, please listen to me. I'm telling the truth. You've got to believe me! No. Guilty as fuck. Bye! Hmm. In accordance with the defendant's ac accusation, a new prosecutor shall be called to replace Mr. Faraday. This court will be in recess until the new prosecutor is ready. Guilty as fuck! Sorry, I love saying that. Am I allowed to speak now? Okay, thank you. Uh, I feel like there's gonna be some similarities. Oh fuck, I just realized Edgeworth is gonna be young Edgeworth, so I have to do this voice, where it's a bit higher pitched, more like Egg Benedict, but not quite. Um, I feel like this is gonna have some parallels with the DL6 incident. I feel like that's what it's gonna be. Probably, my, my, I do have reasoning for why Callisto is the killer, because we know that Burn dies. Whoopsie, spoilers, my bad. He's a baby, he is. But we know that Burn dies, so I think that it's gonna be that Burn found out that Callisto was, like, forging evidence or something, and so Callisto, you know, you know, took the opportunity to, um, silence the little guy. Interesting theory. I feel like, because that's... You know, I feel like that's the reason Edward's gonna, like, take on the case, because the last three cases Edward's taken on because he's had some kind of personal stakes in it, you know, the first two, the first, all, all of the first three he was, like, knocked out, you know? So I feel like this, he has no reason to take place. Oh, is he the new prosecutor? Is he gonna be brought in as the prosecutor? Is that Von Karma? Anyway, I feel like he doesn't really have a reason to investigate this case, other than he's gonna, like... He's gonna see Kay and it's gonna be like, oh my god, I was missing my papa once. I, yes, let's go. And then I feel like it's gonna be parallels and stuff. Anyway, let's get started. Enough theories. Oh fuck, I have to speak like this now. It's almost time for me to enter the courtroom. <laughs> I missed my papa once. And so it is that my first assignment as a prosecutor will be as a replacement for a prosecutor who has been accused by the defendant. But we already know that he doesn't. He doesn't prosecute this case, because his first case is turn about beginnings, right? And so, something is going wrong. Oh, uh, Edgeworth. That's not right. That's not Dick. That's not Dick. Edgeworth! Sir. Oh my god, it's him! Have you read over all the documents regarding this trial? Yes, sir. I've memorized everything there is to know. Very good. The paperwork for the prosecutor substitution is just about complete. Edgeworth, always bear in mind that as my as your mentor, I, Manfred von Karma, will accept nothing short of perfection. I understand, sir. To have the chance to stand in court as, at such an early stage in my career, I am honored and proud. As I have watched over your studies, I'm giving you this very rare chance. Prove yourself. Crush the defendant's pathetic lies into oblivion. Yes, sir. That such a legendary prosecutor is watching over and judging my performance. I have to be perfect in every way. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so excited. It's lagging though, like heck and golly. What is- what are people doing here? What- 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 what are we doing? This is so good! Go, go, go. Oh, I could drink a whole gallon! I've never heard of water that tastes that good. Sorry, I'm a little man. Maybe I'll give him a minute. It's like a fucking hamster. Does he plan on gulping an entire reservoir dry? Ah! Excuse me, madam, but is something the matter? I just thought someone would have brought order ver by now. But, but this is a courthouse. It would be quite atypical to provide order ver here. Are you sure? Someone poured me a fresh cup of coffee last time I was here. That was Diego Armando. What the heck does she think a courthouse is for? Aren't these great? Daddy made all of these. Awesome, but didn't you get fired right after you made them? Ah, uh, yeah I did. 
I spent the same amount of money on this model as it cost to build the real thing. And my boss wasn't very happy with me. <laughs> hey, Daddy, didn't you say you built a secret mechanism inside of it? <laughs> I'll tell you about it someday when you're older. A secret mechanism? Maybe he installed it as payback for getting fired. It could be trouble. Now I'm curious. Hi, Papa. I mean, Manfred. Sir. Today's trial should have ended in just one minute. Because the defendant was picked up by the security camera, correct? Exactly. If I was there, I would have gotten a new speedrun world record. The killer had the gall to say that he only killed because he was instructed to do so. Even more outrageous is his claim that the case prosecutor, Bern Faraday, gave the order. Ha! Faraday's such a fool. He's been cornered by his very own prey. Sir, are you an acquaintance of Mr. Bern Faraday? Hmm. <laughs> He's a pathetic man who speaks nothing but nonsense. Nonsense? He once tried to explain to me a way of punishing those who cannot be brought to court. Those who cannot be brought to court? That is nonsense, but no man is above the law. Well, there are always a few exceptions. However, there's no reason to even deal with such individuals. A procedure is a guardian of the court, but with no obligation to outside matters. Thus, there's no reason to deal with such individuals. I see. Edgeworth. Disgracing yourself as Faraday has... Disgracing yourself as Faraday has will not be forgiven. Have no fear. I will not let you down, sir. In place of the accused prosecutor Bern Faraday, I'll prove the defendant's guilt. Very good. I've secured an hour of recess for you to prepare to do just that. Show them all the power of Von Karma. Yes, sir. So, have you achieved a firm understanding of the case? Yes, sir. I've memorized everything that is written down in the case files. Fuck, I pressed Alt. Well, then explain the case to me. I want to see if you really know what you're talking about. Ah, uh, fuck, I need to look at the case files. Fuck, I only have my prosecutor's badge. Burn Faraday. Oh, no. My mentor has never known defeat in 35 years, a legendary prosecutor. Oh, shit. I want to see if you really know what you're talking about. Understood. Ew. A murder was committed on September 8th in front of the Kodopian Embassy. The victim missed a dyed man. We did it. We did it. We did it, finally. Finally, we did it. Yes, we did it. So I don't know if this is Dyed Man or it's probably Dead Man. As in like Dead Man, Dead Man. I always thought it was Dyed Man, but upon closer inspection, it's probably Dead Man, is my thoughts. I'll say Dead Man. Was a staff member at the embassy. The defendant in this case, Mr. Mackerel, was held for questioning the night of the incident as he was, he was deemed suspicious. Sussy Sussy Barker. He was quickly placed under arrest for possession of the murder weapon, a gun. Furthermore, at the time of the murder, the great thief Yatagarasu had successfully infiltrated the Kodopian Embassy as well. At first, Rel claimed that he himself was the Yatagarasu, but that he did not kill dead, dead man. I wonder what he expected to gain from such a desperate lie. It's possible that he wants to go down while in the spotlight if he's found guilty. There truly is no limit to people's insanity, inanity, inanity. I don't fucking know, I'm spouting nonsense. Just like that prosecutor, Burn Faraday. But I digress. Continue, Edgeworth. Yes, sir. During the trial, the prosecution presented the security footage that captured the murder. The footage clearly showed Mr. Rell as the murderer. The act of Mr. Rell firing the gun could be clearly seen from the visitor's gallery. Upon seeing that, the defendant retracted his statement and admitted to the murder. I did it because I was told to. By the real Yatagrasu, Burn Faraday. Hmm, that sounds about right. However, you've forgotten one thing. Uh. While this may appear to simply be the murder of a Kodopian Embassy staff member, people are actually referring to it as the second KG-8 incident. The second KG-8 incident? 
I'm very sorry, sir. I fear I've failed to study hard enough. <laughs> well, even among us, among us, sussy baka, sussy among us, emergency meeting. I think that red is sus. But, Mr. Mr. Von Karma, I'm red. Exactly. Ha ha ha. I can't laugh, that will fuck up my throat. Even among the police, it's information that only a select few are privy to. Could you please enlighten me, sir? Sir, what do you mean by the second KG-8 incident? In order for me to tell you that, you must first learn about the original case. Take a look at these documents. This is a three-year-old newspaper. <coughs> You've heard of the Amano Group scandal before, correct? Yes, I have. The secretary of Ernest Amano, the Amano Group's director, was arrested under suspicion of smuggling. Correct. So the KG8 incident is the smuggling ring. This is different. Who the... CC? CCU? CCU? Sese, what the fuck is this? What is this name? CC? I don't fucking know. CCU was an employee of the Amano group. CCU, thanks. That's very helpful just saying, spelling the name how it is in the game. Thank you. I now know how it is pronounced. Thank you so much. I appreciate... I, thank you, gratitude. What, what the fuck does gratitude mean? Where does that fit in? I gratit. I b bestow you my gratitude. I don't fucking know. Thanks! <laughs> the pun name is CU. Oh my god, that's silly. CCU. <sighs> so, where? CCU. So, is this a nickname for Callisto or is it someone else? was an employee of the Amano group, and the sole witness to the smuggling operation. It was she who brought the crime to light. However, Ms. Yu was silenced before she could testify in court. Wasn't the Kadopian Embassy staff member arrested for the murder? Kadopian Embassy staff member Manny Korchin found not guilty. I know that name, because I saw it. Ahem. <clears throat> I saw that name when I was looking through the embassy to try get the image, the background. The... This one for next case. I know that name, but only just the name, <laughs> nothing else. I just know that he has something to do with the Kodopian embassy, which, I mean... Now we know why. The victim... Miss CCU, oh shit, so she's dead. Rip. Alright, so, not, not Callisto. <laughs> What's his relation to the smuggling ring? Yes, a Kadopian by the name of Manny Cochin was the suspect. However, due to lack of evidence, the case went unresolved. A shadow of the Amano group. Lack of evidence. Ha! If only I was in charge of the case. I would have done everything in my power to prove his guilt. <laughs> But there was new evidence. I would have made it. Oh, okay. To make sure that all criminals are found guilty, my mentor really is dedicated. Faraday was the prosecutor on the case then, and he was as pathetic as ever. Connected to chat? What? No. Don't do that. Welcome to the chat room. Okay, everything's fine. Faraday was the prosecutor on that case then, and I already said this. Ah, you already said that. Mr. Faraday was in charge of the KG-8 incident as well. That's right. And now, once again, the victim of the case you're currently assigned to was someone who was scheduled to testify against that smuggling organization. And just like last time, the victim was murdered right before he was to testify. You're catching on. The victim was murdered just before his day in court against the smuggling organization. Events are occurring almost exactly the same way as they did in the KG-8 incident. So that's why it's being called the second KG-8 incident? Yes. Yet there's one difference between the two incidents. What would that be? The so-called noble thief that is sending everyone into an uproar. The great thief Yatagarasu. Yatagarasu? I'd better find out more. If it is true that the Yatagras who showed up at the Kodopian Embassy, what could he or she, or they, have been after? Hmm. You think that a female is the Yatagarasu? Don't be foolish! 
No doubt to steal any suspicious accounting records and release them publicly. Or more likely to steal secrets from the Kadopian Embassy itself. Since the item that the Artagrasu stole from there was sent to the police. What was it that the Artagrasu sent to the police? I don't know the details. Anything related to the art blah 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 Oh my goodness! That's spooky! Don't just do that! Anything relating to the Yatagrasu is getting the top secret treatment. Still, I find it very ironic. By returning the stolen item to the police, it was proved positive that the Yatagrasu had infiltrated the embassy on the same day the staff member was killed. Criminals have a way of incriminating themselves, wouldn't you say? That would have to be the first time the Yatagrasu has left evidence behind, correct? Yes, indeed. If you wish to learn more about the Yatagrasu, then I suggest you ask Faraday. Mr. Faraday? He happens to be the prosecutor in charge of the Yatagrasu case as well. He's the prosecutor in charge of both the KG-8 incident and the Yatagrasu case. Mr. Faraday really has a lot on his plate. Okay, Icy Widow Baby K, look at her. Also, I just realized, last, last chaos, I did intend to go to the bridge and look out at the river at the um, Phoenix and Maya cameo, but I honestly don't know when it was. I was never able to move around in that area freely. To my knowledge, at least. If I was, then I was just being silly, but I'm positive that I was never able to... Unless, like, when I was in the Wild Wild West area, I could go to the right and go there. If that's the case, then I missed it, just by not understanding that, but... Other than that, I, I don't think that there was ever any point where I could walk around freely at the... Um... At the entrance where, so I have no idea when that was supposed to be. What is it, little girl? You're scary, mister. Ugh. I'm not scary, I'm just a little guy. Did you need something? Um, I want to trade these coins with you. A fistful of dimes, quarters and pennies, but it looks like you've exactly a dollar. Is this what you want? Oh, look at her! Thanks, that's exactly what I needed. Why am I scary? I, I, I'm just a little guy. Could that child be here to watch the trial? How disrespectful for a child like that to be running around inside the courthouse. Does no one have respect for this country's judicial system anymore? Sir, you forge evidence. I don't think that you have much respect either. Oh fuck, it's a little guy! The paper right in front of the brand is gonna sound strange and complain. Why do your voices keep on getting stupider and stupider? It's almost like Ayako does not give a shit about you. Why, you? Do you even know how much time there is left before the trial resumes? I am so sorry. I can have you mopping up the courthouse instead of protecting it in an instant. <laughs> it's no bother, sir. Not being completely prepared could prove to be a perfect handicap for me. Hmph. <laughs> A proud one you are. You had better collect the evidence from Faraday and prepare yourself. Oh my god, the way that he's pointing his cane, I do that sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I just like, get my cane over and I'm just like, YOU! <laughs> it's time for your debut, Edgeworth. There, I- oh, I don't get any more lines. Never mind. Little bit bit. September 10th. 4 p.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Ha! Huh, I'm the coolest. What the fuck is happening, sir? Well, I mean, sorry, I don't call you sir. Bailiff, what the fuck? This isn't right. No. Ha! Huh, what? I'm confused. Just what is going on? Why isn't Faraday here yet? How is it possible that the defense is not prepared yet either? Bailiff, where is Mr. Faraday? I'm not sure. I wasn't really paying attention. Yeah. Oh, I love being a judge. I'm going to get ready for my trial. Hey, what the fuck? That's not right. Ah, you must be the one Mr. Von Karma recommended. Wait a minute. Oh, look at me. I'm a little man. 
I hear this will be your first trial. I look forward to seeing how you perform. Oh, by the way, was there someone celebrating a birthday during the recess? I could have sworn that I heard a popper going off. Come to think of it, the other day with my grandson. Sir, sir it, it looks like the trial is about to resume, uh, however... Yes, it will be all but impossible to prove the witness a liar. Without the evidence from Faraday. What is that blasted buffoon up to? It's an emergency, sirs! Oh my god, it's me, Dick Gumshoe! Oh my god, it's him, Dick Gumshoe! Silence! There shall be no yelling in this sacred hall of law! Remove that man from this courtroom at once! Oh, but it's me, Dick Gumshoe! Oh, please, wait! You have to listen to me! There is an emergency! Defendant lobby number two, Mr. Faraday and the defendant! The two of them, they're, they're both dead, your honor. What? Uh. What? That's not, no, he's not the victim, he's the prosecutor, silly. Oh my god, it's, look at them, it's, look who it is. Stay back. Oh. No one's allowed in the crime scene. Period. Ah, but I'm not on my period. Just who does this oddball think he is? This is becoming quite the hot spot. Isn't she Mr. Rell's defense attorney? Oh, I remember. I, I couldn't think of, um... I couldn't think of a voice for Callisto, and I was thinking maybe giving her, like, a similar voice to Kay. You know, like this or something. And I was like, no, I can't do that, because Kay's in this case. But Kay's baby as fuck. So Kay's gonna have, like... Oh, fucking baby way, something, I don't know, something like this. So I could give Callista that voice. I don't know. <laughs> I can't quite figure it out, but we'll see. Hey, you! No running in the hallway, pal! And who are you to tell me what to do? Unless that was... Was that supposed to be Gumshoe? I thought that he wouldn't be question marks, but that makes sense, I guess. No running in the hallway, pal! I'll never find out what's going on like this. It's time for some civil discourse. Bye! <laughs> I'm running away! First I need to get a handle on this situation! Perhaps I should talk to some people. <gasps> Fire extinguisher! My special attack! Fire extinguisher! If one were to be hit in the head with this, I suppose the victim would lose a memory or two. But it's not as though I'd ever be so foolish as to be struck by one of these. Huh? A poster of the judge has a slogan of some sort on it. Every strike of my gavel brings the truth close to me, and my hair further away. Is this a promotional poster for the court of a, or a hair growth product? Defendant lobby number one is through here. The incident took place in lobby number two next door. I shouldn't allow myself to be sidetracked like this. I'd better get a move on. Hmm, a drink vending machine. Ah, now's not the, not, now's not the time to be pondering what kind of drink I want. Interesting, they're selling special court-themed food products here. Many of them seem sort of troublesome and suspicious. Objection, I suppose. I love walking. This sofa looks like it's seen its fair share of use. And it looks like another part of the courthouse is visible from the window. Ah, my eyes have locked with my reflection's eyes in the barred window. As a student of Wonkama, I refuse to back down. <laughs> He's having a staring at I won. <laughs> nice. I'm so happy for you, Mr. Edward, sir. And you are? Who, me? Hey, pal! It's common courtesy to tell someone your name first before asking theirs. Yeah, point taken. My name is Miles Etua. I'm a district prosecutor. A prosecutor? I've never seen a prosecutor as young as you, pal. I've told you my name. Now would you mind telling me yours? Detective Big Dick. Gumshoe. And just recently I achieved my dream of becoming a detective. More than a dream, it's what I was born to do. Being a big dick. Gum. Gum shoe. Wait. That's not right. Maybe I should check and make sure I'm not really in some crazy dream first. This detective is entirely too excited to be at a murder scene. So, Detective Gumshoe, would you mind telling me what you know about the incident? You know that I don't have to tell you anything, right? Gummy with his tan coat, yeah, he's so, he's looking so fresh. 
You know that I don't have to tell you anything, right? I know that. But it would behoove you to fill me in on what you know. Wow, you're a problem for such a youngster, aren't you? Well, anyway, Detective Pat is the one in charge. So you're just gonna have to ask him for all the details, okay? As for me, I was guarding the door to defending lobby number two. Wait, isn't that the murder scene? Hmm, so you were the guard detail. Did you notice anything strange while you were on duty? Well, I freaked out when I heard a gunshot, and then I kind of froze. You're a detective and a measly gunshot scared you that much? Then again, I can hardly claim to not know what it's like to hear one at a clo close range. Then, Detective Bat came running to the scene. We went into lobby number two together, and both men were lying there dead. Lying coldly. Is that everything? Hmm. Yeah, well, that's it. I was on the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of a struggle. Interesting. Other than the gunshot, he didn't hear a single sound of commotion. No commotion, got it. See ya, bitch. Excuse me! Do you have a minute? You know, I'm not really into talking to people I don't know. Especially at a time like this. Ah, I apologize for not introducing myself before bothering you. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I was to take Mr. Faraday's place in court. Edgeworth, huh? Never heard of you. So Faraday's substitute is a newbie, huh? I'll have you know, madame, that I've studied under Manfred von Karma. You will take me seriously, please. I don't want to be taken like a little man. I'm a big boy now. I'm a prosecutor, and you will treat me as such. Ah, oh, I go. T -t -t -t. I do not take me for some naive novice. <laughs> what? You're not taking me for some naive novice. Ah, oh, the um... <laughs> So, <laughs> you're a student of Van Karma. <laughs> I should have. <laughs> Those clothes are a dead giveaway. <laughs> Stop right there! <laughs> These are the garments of one who gallantly presents the facts. Don't laugh at me! Don't laugh at me! <laughs> Thanks for the great laugh, but try not to make me laugh so much, okay? I wasn't trying to do anything of the sort. Stop making fun of me. I am so sad. That's it, I'm Edgeworthing up. You're a fuck bitch. That's right, I said it. I haven't even discovered the word fuck bitch yet, and I called you it fuck bitch. What are you going to do? <laughs> just kidding. I was just giving around. By the way, do you know who I am? My name is Callisto Yu. <laughs> Laugh at his ass, bears. Callisto making fun of Edgeworth is the best part of this case. I'm already in love with it. <laughs> My name is Callisto Yu. And if you're telling the truth, then we're about to go head to head in court. Ah, but of course, I've heard much about you, Miss Yu. <laughs> ah, but of course, I've heard much about you. You're a regular Shakespeare. Did I say something funny? I rammed you with you. That's the same word. That's it. I'm a prosecutor, fuck bitch. Fuck. I'm a prosecutor, fuck bitch. It is a shame that we will not be able to face each other. It was to be my first trial too. Oh, was that a declaration of war? How nice it is to be young and carefree. And what a nice squeaky clean badge you've got yourself there. I'm jealous. It, I'm sure it's clean will dull over time the experience. Are you saying your reputation will also tarnish over time with it? Well, that's not what I meant. <laughs> well, you just can't avoid some things in life. I'll never allow my butt or my reputation to become tarnished. Stop being a meanie! What about the crime scene? I'd like you to update me on the autopsy report. I'd like you to update me on the situation. I don't really know anything. Why don't you try t talking to those detectives over there? If that's the case, then why are you here? <laughs> oh, what's so funny? It's just that the way you speak is so tactless. The person I was going against in court until only a little while ago was just murdered. It's not like I could go back into the courtroom pretending as though nothing happened. Oh, that's a good point. I apologize for asking such an intensive, insensitive question. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that guy's dead. <laughs> Madame, what the fuck? Hey, what up? B -b 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 man Excuse me, but who are you? 
Detective Tyrell Bad. Homicide. I was informed of the situation and came as quickly as possible. Bad, 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 bad. <laughs> Something tells me that Astra likes bad. Hmm. Anyways. Hmm. Yeah, something here. Something here is, um, telling me right now that Astra likes bad a bit. Hmm. I don't know. Just a, a little, a little something right now. Hmm. I don't know. I love them both so much. That's fair. Get me off the screen. I'm sorry, you typed bad like 20 times. I have to show, I have to show the VOD watchers. I was informed of the situation and came as quickly as possible, and I already read that, because I am a little man. I mean a big boy. I am a big boy. So how did you arrive and inspect the body before me? Faraday requested for me to testify in the trial. Plain and simple. Mr. Faraday requested that you be here. I've already contacted HQ about the situation. I've got nothing to say to you, kid. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised that he has the bullet holes and the grey hair in this case. I was kind of expecting him to have the same sprite as he does in um, case 3 of AI2, where he's younger. I guess they just hadn't made the sprite yet, but I was kind of expecting that. He's just old, yeah. The kid! I'm a big boy! Why does everyone keep making fun of me? You'll see, one day, I'll be a big city prosecutor. I'm Mr. Faraday's substitute in today's trial. Therefore, I insist that you update me on the situation. How old is he, actually? Oh my god, we have so many people. <laughs> Dead man. <laughs> uh, gun down, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rel, embassy staff killing suspect, rel, blah, 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 blah. Get to grass here, rel, I didn't need them on. Oh, little baby kid. I go with a balloon. Age? Why is my age a question mark? I guess you don't know, bitch. I did come to. Callista. Anyway, how old is he? 53? Damn. You're looking... Great for your age, my dear fella. I can't back down here. I have a right to know. Do I need to teach you a thing or two about how to talk to an adult's kid? Uh, is he threatening me? He was 42 in AI too. Wow, this dude aged awfully. Don't think they have the sprites yet, but also, like, it's 18 years after the case is in AI2? Oh. Fair enough. Is he going for his gun? It's just a mirror. How dare he trick me like that? Hard he was stabbed to death with some kind of blade, and he had a gun in his hand. The other man, a Mr. Mackerel, was shot and killed. Wait, Mackerel? Is that a fish? Am I crazy? Is that a fish? Nice. He was found holding the bloody knife in his hand. In this hand. Was there anyone else who went into defended lobby number two? Yeah, that big lug over there. His name's Gumshoe. The Gumshoe. He was in charge of guarding the place. He's claiming that no one else entered the room. If that's the case, then they must have killed each other, correct? Maybe. Such impudence. This guy's really testing my patience. It is a fish. Yeah, you would know, wouldn't you? Why was I not informed that you were going to testify in court? Homicides are my only gig. The autograph case is also one of my assignments. Hmm. So you were called upon... So you were called upon to comment on the autograph car characteristics. In order to assess if Mr. Faraday really was the Atagrasu or not. Well, well. Looks like he just might have a brain after all in that head of yours, son. Son? I'm not your son, Pops. <laughs> Get it? Lollipops. Like the girl from the last case. Miss you. There's someone here who wishes to see you. Why the fuck do you sound like that? Who is it? A Kadabian Embassy staff member by the name of Manny Cochin. <laughs> Ugh. What's going on? Detective Bad and Ms. Yu, Yu's mood just changed all of a sudden. Oh my goodness. A character means to let slide or to get away with in Japanese. His English name is a play on mackerel, but may also have come from his Japanese name. And the unofficial French name is Sangui Soho, which is a play on the French proverb, Il y a un gris sur roche. 
uh, for there to be an eel hidden beneath a rock, equivalent to something being fishy, smelling a rat, or something being a foot in English. Oh my god, the game is a foot? Many manys in this case? Is that a... Is that this dude? That's this dude, right? Wait a second, wasn't Manny coaching? I'll be right there. Oh, there he is. Um, uh, I don't know who I am. It's nice to see you again, Ms. Yu. Why are you here? I have no desire to ever see you again. Now, now. Wait, that was you talking. <laughs> Literally, you talking, get it? Haha. <laughs> Now, now, actually, would you mind stepping outside for a brief chat? Fine, let's go. I'm here now, bitches! Let's go! Oh, fuck. Oh, no, we're about to speak to each other. Fuck! Oh, this is gonna be bad. Tyrell bad! Bad. Long karma. It's been a long time. I knew you would show up. You usually do when the Atagrasu's involved, and I see this case is no exception. Do you know Detective Bat, sir? Yes, he's like an old bloodhound that never leaves the scene of a crime. If only he would get a promotion and move on. It's the crime scene where a detective's most useful and effective. Hm, <laughs> it's not like I don't know that. Moving on though, Bat, the man that I just passed by. Was he not the suspect from the KG-8 incident? So I was right. Just what is that man doing wandering around here? That Faraday. I can't believe he let such an easy cat get away. Imbecile! I would prove his guilt in three minutes, and finally gotten my world record. Von Karma, I think you've said enough for now. It's in poor taste to speak like that about the departed. <clears throat> Very well. Back on topic. I'm placing Edgeworth in charge of the investigation here. Objection. What? That Francisca? But your baby as fuck, why do you sound the same? Papa, how can you place him in charge? Francesca, what are you doing here? I'm here for summer vacation. What else? Baby, so small, she's so tiny. Francesca von Karma, so she's here on vacation from Germany. She's the daughter of Manfred von Karma and a student of his, who's also junior to me. You're the one who's junior to me, and don't you forget it. You're not conveniently avoiding the bar examination, are you? If you were able to pass, then I'll have absolutely no trouble at all. i never allow myself to lose to you. Never. Why does she always have to be this competitive? Anyway, Papa, are you really assigning Mars Edward to cover the case? Yes, I am. Why do you ask? Well, you know, I'm close to becoming a prosecutor myself. She's like 13. Yeah, ripe old age to be a prosecutor. <coughs> Oh, look at her whip, it's so tiny. And I'm 100% confident that I can do a better job than him. That's just like Francesca. She has no problem badmouthing someone right in front of them. She's a little bitch. Bad. Yeah? These two will be conducting the investigation. What? You want me to let both of these kids loose on the crime scene? Huh. This is a perfect opportunity for them to work on their prosecutorial skills. That's a writing crop. Don't give me a lesson. I already know what that is. I just didn't know the word for it. Hmm. <laughs> crime scene's not a place for children to be messing around in. I'm the one with the authority over this crime scene, Bat. And I will not tolerate complaining. Gah. <sighs> Edgeworth, Francesca, I leave this case to the two of you. Okay. Understood, sir. Ah, oh, she bows. Yes, Papa. I'll go take care of the paperwork now. Remember, I'll accept nothing but a perfect report from the both of you. Do not disappoint me. Well, too bad. Get a lesson. Shush. Hold up, Von Karma. I still haven't agreed to this. Maya Zetchworth. It's been quite some time, Francisca. This would be the perfect chance for us. To see which of us is truly worthy of the Von Karma name. Would it kill you to at least say hello? Ah, uh, um, long time no see. Very good. Just because you became a prosecutor first doesn't mean you can act all proud. <laughs> she hasn't changed a bit. Maya Zedgeworth. 
As I was saying, we shall see which one of us is worthy of the uncommon name. For crying out loud, I've been reduced to a babysitter. It looks like Mr. Von Kamo is successful in convincing the detective. How? What did he do? That's just like him. He never fails. Now, I'd appreciate it if you could quickly run me through the facts, Detective Bad. You're better off checking things out on your own. I don't think that the 13-year-old should be at a crime scene. Very well. Seems like getting help from Detective Bad will be a most arduous task. Wait, does Frenzy have a profile? We have to check that. Oh fuck! Someone's been murdered! Two people? I didn't sign up for this. I just want to look at little Frenzy's profile. Oh, and this guy as well. Manny Kutchin, could obviously number staff member who was the suspect in the KGA incident. Frenzy Skavan Kalma. Setting to be a prosecutor in Germany, back on break. Yeah, what up? Yeah, it's the only real explanation that they killed each other simultaneously. Maya Tetua, you should listen to someone until they have finished talking. Um, what are you talking about? I'll only say it one more time. This is a competition to see who is truly worthy of the Von Kama name. A competition? The person that figures out the truth first wins. Hmm, so the person who doesn't discover the truth is a dishonor to the name. Exactly. I don't care that you became a prosecutor before me. I simply refuse to hear any more foolish things come from your foolishly foolish mouth. After working a few things, I'll be looking for a bit. Have a good luck. Hmm, fine. Whatever makes you happy. Can I take that as you accepting my challenge? Once again, whatever makes you happy. Ha! Well then, let's begin the investigation, shall we? I'm going to find the perfect evidence and prettily present it like the professional I am. Competing to discover the truth behind the crime? How delightfully childish. Uh, I'm a fucking bub bub. You kids, over there, hold it! Kid? Ha! Serves you right, Miles. He just called you a kid. I said kids, kid. H how dare you call me a kid as well? I'll do what I please, and I won't allow you to cause some ruckus on my crime scene. Hey, big guy, you're gonna watch over these two. Yes, sir. They took the butt, sir. Now, do what I say from now on, kids, okay? You'd better not get in our way, Scruffy. He'll feel the bite of my whip if you do. Hey, uh, new prosecutor boy. Let's get your inv investigation started already, alright? Great. Now even that detective is treating me like a child. Alright, it's time to get investigating. Get a move on, prosecutor boy. My name is Miles Edgeworth. And if you were to call me prosecutor boy one more time, it will be my duty as a prosecutor to look into your monthly salary. What? I know what would you do with my salary after you saw how much it was. That's up to you now, isn't it? Really? Sounds good, pal. He's so naive. Detective Bad, may I have a word with you? What is it? It appears that both a knife and a gun were used as murder weapons. Yeah, it does. That leads us to our first question of the investigation. Where did the men acquire the weapons? Uh, the gun was inside of Faraday's bag. It was a piece of evidence that was presented in the trial earlier today. It was used to kill the Kadapian Embassy staff member. But I never heard anything about the knife. Mr. Rowe was being held by the police. There's no way he could have brought it in. Which means it's possible that Faraday had the knife on him from the start as well. Could it have been a piece of evidence that had yet to be presented? But then, why doesn't Detective Bad know about it? Wait, what if? It's possible that Mr. Faraday brought the knife in under the guise of prosecutor prosecutorial evidence. He could have then brought it brought it out and attacked Mr. Bell with it. Ah, huh. maybe you've got a brain iron there after all, kid. <laughs> Is he going to treat me like a child forever? Looks like Mr. Faraday attacked Mr. Will first, who then counterattacked. That's the only logical conclusion you can draw from a scene like this. Hmm, not yet. I feel that, uh, that it's much too early, early to be drawing conclusions already. I must first find conclusive evidence so as to ensure the honor of the Von Karma name. 
First things first, conclusive evidence. There are some plastic bags that put stacked up on the table. There's a tea set too, but there doesn't seem to be any sign of a disturbance. Yeah, the table's all neat and tidy. The table is all tidy. Maybe. They were super quiet in their scrub scuffle. After all, I didn't hear anything from out in the hallway, you know. Maybe the plastic bags scattered on the floor are throwing us off. There's some stuff in the bag, Bo. Or... I suppose this was Mr. Faraday's bag. It's probably the trial evidence. <clears throat> I was supposed to collect from him. Well, this is evidence. Oh, I'd better not touch it. I'd leave prints on it. You just don't pay attention to anything you do. Whoa! Oh, what is it, Detective Gumshoe? My TV at home is so tiny compared to this one, pal. Then perhaps you should purchase a more normal-sized television like this one. Oh, let me see here. Wow, this thing is huge! Whoa! And way too noisy. You're the noisy one, Scruffy. Don't touch it. You'll get your fingerprints all over it. But, but I didn't touch it. Preservation of the crime scene is the foundation of detective work. The foundation, huh? Sounds like something the rookie here needs to shore up on. The window's open, and... Huh, there's a fresh, flowery scent in the air. Oh, the flowers in the garden down there are so gross and ghastly. Do you think maybe you could try offering something useful for a change? Well, at least there's no way someone escaped through this window, Bull. They wouldn't wake up and smell the flowers after a fall from the third floor. Are you willfully ignoring the fact that there are also iron bars on the windows? Yeah, I guess there's that too. Either way, no one can get through these windows, right? They thought of everything when they were designing this courthouse. They're very nice. Sir, what are you doing? Sir? Sir, what are you doing? Sir, are you okay? Are you okay? Oh, he's walking all of a sudden. Sir, are you okay? Oh, back to running. Ooh, oh. Oh, where's he going? Oh, oh, golly. Oh, oh, where's he going? Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, oh my god. Oh, Jesus. Hey, get, get, get back here. Get, get back here. Oh my god. Oh, get back here. <laughs> Sorry, I had too much fun with that. Hi, bad. <laughs> Detective Bat, do you have any thoughts on the case? Party and Rel. It looks like they killed each other, to me. <laughs> Thanks, Einstein. Although, there are a few things that just don't seem right. Hmm. And what would they be? Hmm. <laughs> Why don't you try thinking on your own first before you bother me, boy? Uh, uh, now I've been downgraded to just boy? Well, I want to have fun before I get started, bitch. This decorative plant's foliage is quite nice. It's actually soothing to be around it. Hmm, perhaps I should purchase one for my room. Hi, Franzi. Ah, I see. Did you figure something out? This is a competition, Miles, and as such I'd appreciate it if you didn't talk to me. Ah, oh, as you wish. Alright, body time. Body is time, sorry. It looks like Mr. Faraday fell on top of Mr. Rell. At first glance, it seems like they must have killed each other. However... Using logic, the only logical conclusion is... Aha! Uh -huh. Well, what was that outburst for? My detective's instinct just hit me real hard. It was Mr. Well that fell first, see? You don't need a detective's instinct for that. It's common sense. But I suppose we wouldn't know much more than that until after I examine the bodies. I wonder until I've inspected every suspicious looking milk and Cammy. Who's Cammy? What? What did I just say? Looks like Mr. Faraday died while holding the gun in his right hand. So he shot Mr. Rell and then fell on top of him while he was still gripping onto the gun. I guess that does seem kind of strange, huh? I mean, why would Mr. Faraday know how to fire a gun? It's not exactly rocket science. Even I know how to pull a trigger. Although I doubt I'll ever need to use one. I hope I never have to fire a gun either, pal. Well, but it sure does look cool to hold a gun in your hands. It appears that the police's screening procedures need a thorough review. Anyway, I should jot down some notes about the handgun in Mr. Faraday's hand. No signs of a disturbance, and there was a gun. Fuck! There's nothing unusual about this area, bitch! Fuck, bitch! Looks like- Looks like Mr. Bell died with a knife in his hand. There's some blood stuck on his- 
Then you must have used this as a weapon. Yep, no doubt about it. Was Mr. Faraday carrying this in his personage? Did he bring this as a piece of evidence for the trial? Or did he bring it with a very different intention in mind? I should jot some notes down about it. Hmm. Why are there plastic bags scattered all around? Those bags are making evidence safe, Paul. I... I know that much, Detective. You sure are good at this stuff, aren't you, Paul? Normally, I'd be happy when someone compliments me, but when it's this guy... Anyway, could these plastic bags be evidence of a fight between the two men? My logic is it going to be so awesome! Mr. Faraday, how ironic it is for him to lose his life in a courthouse. Yeah, why did it have to be like this? I don't know what to say. I can't believe this happened while I was on watch, Paul. Rather than beating yourself up, you should spend your time continuing the investigation. Didn't you become a detective? Didn't you become a detective in order to solve crimes? Yeah. Then get back to work. Find out the cause of his murder. Right. I'm on it, Paul. First he killed a Corrupian Embassy staff member, then he was murdered himself. This guy wasn't exactly an angel, you know. Oh? What makes you say that? Well, he's been holed into the precinct several times for a theft and assault, Paul. So yeah, he's definitely the type to have committed a murder or two. Well, he did admit to killing Mr. Dave Mann. Hey, good point, Paul. I knew my detective's intuition was telling me something. Detective's intuition? Yep. Do you know about it? It's a special feeling that all the tech... We don't have time for this conversation right now. Let's return to the investigation. I'm watching this in class. Chloe! Focus on class! Oh, it's just a sense every suspicion looking cammy. Brought earbuds to there for once. I... Listen, I'm not a cop. But I think that's some illegal behaviour you got there. The sun is all black down here, see? I wonder what it could be. Hmm, if you look closely. This blotching pattern resembles an ink stain. We only have two minutes until school's out, it's okay. The police are gonna get you, Chloe! Mr. Friday has ink on his left hand. Oh, ink, an ink stain? Yes, I usually get ink on my own hand when I use it, when I use my feather pen. A feather pen? I've never seen one before. Sure you aren't just making it up, well? Edgeworth would use a quill. I want to do my logic. Mr. Bell's cause of death was from being shot, correct? Now I'm going to get baby gel. No! GBJ! Oh, well, that's what we think, but it's hard to tell them lying face down. Death is bad enough, but it's truly lamentable that someone will try to hide the truth. Um, are you sure they were trying to hide something? I can't confirm Mr. Bell's cause of death with his body position like that. Detective Bat, I'd like to examine the bodies in further detail if possible. What's this? You're not able to form a theory with them so as they are? I believe an examination of the bodies is vital to finding the perfect evidence, don't you? Hmm, I suppose you do have a point. Well, hurry up and get on with it. Labby. Yes, sir. We've taken enough photos of the scene, sir. And there you have it. The, do you not approve? Of course not. What? Investigation of a crime scene's the work of a detective. So don't touch a thing. Hey, big fella, turn over the bodies for me, will ya? Okay. Please forgive me, Mr. Fardy, sir. Gumshoe, do not get emotionally involved. Remember, you're a detective. Yes, sir. Understood, sir. Well, it certainly does seem like a stab wound and a gunshot wound. Ooh, a pen! I wouldn't rest until I've inspected every cami. There's something in his breast pocket. Heh <laughs> breast. It's a fountain pen. What did that say about the nib? Hey, you know I always keep a pencil behind my ear. I did know that. Fuck, I can't check the logic. It's because Detective Bad's always telling me. You should always write your name on everything you own. Yeah, somehow you do strike me as quite a forgetful individual. I'm not at logic. What did that say about the nib? Has an especially nice nib. Well, let's connect a couple things. I'm assuming the fountain pen's gonna be the ink stand.
That splotch on Mr. Faraday's hand. I wonder if it might be the ink from his fountain pen. Oh, let us the lab guy. It's active gum shoe. I confirm that the substance substance on Mr. Faraday's hand is the ink from his fountain pen. I see. Good work. Oh, you know I've always wanted to say that. If it was just one time of my life. If Mr. Faraday wrote his fountain pen with wrote with his fountain pen in his left hand, I think it's fair to assume he was left-handed. It appears that Mr. Faraday's pen is very important to our case as well. Okay, if you say so, Bow. And then I was thinking, yeah, the plastic bags and the neat and tidy table might be um, might be something. Bad to know about this one. Yep. There is a very tidy pile of plastic bags on the table, and yet a portion of them wound up scattered on the floor as well. It's not likely that the ones on the floor were knocked over during the struggle. In which case, might there not be another explanation as to how they got there? Um. Another reason. I believe it's possible that the blood on the outside of the bag is related somehow. Ugh, please get that blood away from me, Bow. Detective Gumshoe, whose blood is on this bag? Um, hold on, let me ask the lab guy. All right, please hurry. Wait till you get a load of this, Bow. It's Mr. Faraday's. Oh, and the technician said they didn't find anything else on or in the bag either. Hmm. It would appear that this bag is a very important piece of evidence. Okay, if you say so, I leave it in your hands, Bow. Same thing, bitch. Let's just examine the wounds then. There's a knife wound in his chest here, see? I wonder if the wound matches the knife Mr. Bell is holding. Labby! Yes, sir, very thing now, sir! Make it quick! From the look of things, one could deduce that the knife Mr. Rell is holding is what killed Mr. Faraday. Shot in the chest, and you're to blame, honey, you give love a bad name. Take some guts to fire a gun in a courthouse. I mean, I've been a detective for a whole week and I still haven't fired a single round yet. There aren't any burn marks on his clothes. That must mean... Wait, burn marks? A round grows very hot as it is discharged from a firearm. Therefore, burn marks are usually left when a shot is fired from point-blank range. Ergo, Mr. Rell must have been shot from at least a yard or two away. You sure do know a bunch of neat stuff for your age, Bow. Apparently, this detective has as much common knowledge as your everyday marsupial. Let us now try to understand how the two men died. First, Mr. Faraday took the gun and the knife out from today's trial evidence. Then he aimed the gun at Mr. Rell and fired. However, Mr. Rell managed to grab the knife and counter Mr. Faraday while being shot. Then the two men fell together as they stood. That is my theory, in any case. What a crazy way to go! Still, something about that explanation just doesn't seem right. Hmm, I believe I now have a firmer grasp on what happened here. I guess there's not much left to investigate, huh? They really did kill each other. No, we can't conclude that quite yet. There's still something I find very peculiar here. The theory that they simply killed one another is too simplistic in this case. In fact, there's actually a contradiction that shows there is another possibility. No way, Paul. Really? Hm, I suppose I'll just have to show you the conf conflict in this crime scene. Do 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 I need to steal his necklace, it looks very nice. Mr. Faraday's holding a gun in his right hand. Oh, it's his right hand. <laughs> Fair enough. <clears throat> That's the one Mr. Will got blown away by, right? Labby, your answer. Yes, sir, we found that the ballistic markings do match that gun. Oh, um, blessed it's smoking, sir, um... Are the figurative fingerprints of a gun that lives where a bullet is fired? Every gun leaves its own unique ballistic markings. Therefore, by looking at the markings on a bullet, you can tell which gun it came from. Yeah, that's it. Oh, of course I already knew about all that, pal. Maybe you'd be better off going back to the academy. Hey, come on, sir. Cut me some slack, will ya? 
So, the bullet of, that was fired from this gun is what felled Mr. Rell. S. The deuce. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? Um... Where is it? Um... <laughs> Left-handed. Now we come face to face with the contradiction I spoke of, and it is this. Mr. Faraday used his left hand to write with his fountain pen. Ergo, he is left-handed. And yet, the handgun in his, is in his right hand. Don't you find it odd that the left-handed Mr. Faraday would hold the gun in his right hand? That, lady and gentlemen, is the great contradiction haunting this crime scene. Hey, you're right, pal. That does seem kind of strange. But how could something like that happen? The facts add up to one conclusion, and one alone. Someone else put the gun in Mr. Faraday's hand after he died. Someone else? Plastic bags scattered on the floor, and a gun in the wrong hand. I sense the presence of a shadowy figure behind this case. A person of vile intent who is serious about keeping the truth from us. Here is the autopsy report. It is probable that Mr. Rez survived for a short time after he was shot. However, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously from his stabbing. Interesting. It looks like we now know everything we need to know about this case. I'm sure we know everything. Of course, the incident began with Mr. Faraday attempted to get his revenge. The prosecutor went into a rage from being accused and tried to kill the defendant. But the defendant fought back and they ended up killing each other. Oh, she bows. It's all very clear and simple, as there is absolutely no margin for doubt. Do you really believe that to be the truth? Ha, are you saying that just because I figured out the truth before you? That you don't want to believe it's true? <coughs> oh. It's alright. If you disagree with my argument, then prove me wrong. Well, if there are any contradictions to be found, that is. Don't worry, I will. Wait. Francisca, we proved this in front of you, and I said very loudly, The left-handed uh, burned Faraday with the gun which was in his right hand. And you still don't get it? Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous, while Mr. Rare survived for a short time. From this, it is obvious that Mr. Faraday died just after he shot Mr. L. And Mr. Rell, while on the brink of death, stole Mr. Faraday's knife and stabbed him. Those are the facts of this case. Oh, I can't argue with you. You're so tiny. Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous, therefore he must have attacked first. Proving that logic to be false is probably the fastest way to show her that she's wrong. In that case, I should first look for any holes in her theory. Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous, and Mr. Riel survived for a short time. Do you truly believe that Mr. Faraday died instantaneously? I have some murder report right here. Mr. Faraday died instantaneously of shock due to being stabbed in the chest. There, you see, it's been documented clear as day. Oh! From this, it is obvious that Mr. Faraday died after he shot Mr. Rell. Mr. Faraday shot Mr. Rell before he died. Do you have any basis for that statement? Your foolishness has no end, does it? Now I hate to repeat myself. However, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously. That's all the basis I need. Alright, so if Mr. Faraday died instantaneously, then he must have attacked Mr. Rell before being stabbed. You're finally beginning to catch on, I see. And Mr. Rell, while in the brink of death, stole Mr. Faraday's knife and stabbed him. So you believe that the dying Mr. Rell stole the knife from Mr. Faraday? Mr. Rell became desperate, as he did not want to die. Human beings can do amazing things when they are put to the test. So the two men struggled. And in the end, Mr. Rell was able to grab the knife and stab Mr. Faraday. The messy condition of this room is a testament to their struggle. Hmm. Yes, my logic is perfectly sound. Can you really say that it's perfect? What are you insinuating? 
nothing. However, I can't let what you said slide by without further inquiry. That must be clear and precise. See if you can append that statement to your testimony. Fine. And then they struggled, yeah, and then Gomashiro's statement. They struggled, and Mr. Rell used the last of his strength to counterattack Mr. Faraday. Fact. Hold it. I bought this statement. Mr. Rell used all of his remaining strength to take the knife and defend himself. One can easily see that they had a, f a violent struggle. Of course, it's nothing compared to what my riding crop can do. How does one compare the damage her crop can do with the state of this room? Furthermore, all the plastic bags on the floor in this room were scattered there due to the fight. Is there anything else that can I, I can explain for you? No, that will be fine. Those are the facts of this case. Claiming speculation is fact already. Don't you feel that the evidence is a bit lacking? You'll find all the evidence you need just by looking around this room. Mr. Faraday collapsed on top of Mr. Rell. In addition, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously, making a counter-attack impossible. As a more, this room is a total mess from their fight. I dare say that there's more evidence here than you can whip a whip at. It looks like she's becoming more and more confident. And, looking at this place, she might have a right to be. After all, everything here seems to support her theory. It looks like you're starting to see my point. I was good of, as one our little competition. There's something strange about Francis's theory. I should compare her claim with the day job. I just know it's a contradiction somewhere. <laughs> oh, I'm a fucking bitch, aren't I? I'm figuring out the hotkey still. Uh, come, shoo. Dick. Come, shoo. If the two men were fighting, their struggle would have surely caused quite a bit of noise. However, Detective Gumshoe testified that he heard absolutely nothing. Ha! You place too much faith in that detective's testimony, you know. But for the sake of argument, let's say there wasn't a fight. How then did Mr. Rell get his hands on the knife? Mr. Friday's bag was sitting right here in lobby number two. It's not hard to imagine that perhaps Mr. Rell saw chance and took it out at some point. So, what you're saying is this. Mr. Rell took a chance when he saw the opportunity and took the knife from the bag. And then Mr. Faraday shot Mr. Rell after being stabbed. Hmm. Isn't there something strange in Francisco's statement just now? Yeah. It was burned out instantly. Wait, something doesn't add up. Oh, really? It's simply not possible for Mr. Faraday. Was it here? Instantaneous death. Take that! According to the coroner's report, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously, meaning that he died immediately upon being stabbed by the knife. A girl he could not possibly have fired the gun after that. Who? You got me. But of course. Well then, if the report is correct, then there is only one correct explanation. If we suppose that Mr. Real attack first. Then Mr. Faraday, who died, died instantaneously, would have been unable to kill Mr. Rell. Therefore, Mr. Rell must have stabbed Mr. Faraday after he was shot. Then they both died. That is the only explanation that makes logical sense. Negating your opponent's ideas in order to prove your own theory. I see you've been studying, Francesca. I just wanted to explain it to you as simply as possible. Before you foolishly propose a foolish theory that only a foolish fool like you could. Hmm. How naive of you to believe that only your opinions are valid. And still expect to discover the truth that the crime scene offers you. Francisca, you've still got a ways to go. What are you talking about? Are you saying there's a flaw in my logic? Mr. Faraday died insta instantly. And the fact that he did is what gives rise to the contradiction in this scene. The contradiction here in this crime scene is... The odd of the bodies fell. Right? Let me get this straight. What you're arguing is this. Mr. Faraday took the gun from his evidence bag and shot Mr. Rell. 
Then the wounded Mr. Ralph found an opportunity to take the knife and strike back. Upon being stabbed, Mr. Friday died on the spot, and Mr. Rell died thereafter. If that's the case, then how do you explain this? Take a good look at the order in which the bodies are piled. <coughs> no! Mr. Friday's body is lying on top of Mr. Rell's. Therefore, Mr. Rell must have died before Mr. Thar Faraday. Impossible! Yes, I agree that it seems strange no matter what angle you approach it from. Which means that the real mystery behind this crime scene that we must solve is... No, not so fast, man, as it were. What now? I simply think that you ought to think a little more outside the box. And that it's even clearer now that the incident started with Mr. Faraday's murderous intent. She sure bounced back quickly. An explanation won't be enough this time. It's going to take some very decisive evidence to prove her wrong. What's happened, part two? I am... the coolest. It was just chance that Mr. Faraday's body fell on top of Mr. Rell's. The two bodies fell into a pile. Which indicates that they attacked each other at the same time. It really doesn't matter as it's slightest that they fell in the opposite order. I just knew that Francisca's ex explanation isn't absolutely correct. All I have to do is find a hole in her logic. Once I do, I can then present her with the evidence that proves the contradiction. It was just chance that Mr. Friday's body fell on top of Mr. Rose. About that. Ah, pressing someone's testimony in order to gain some time to sink. You're a real one-trick pony, aren't you? Just like my little pony, my favorite, is Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash? Why is that? Because she is the color of a pride flag. I am a lesbian, Maz Edgeworth. Oh, uh, congratulations on coming out, I suppose. Yes, thank you. I don't know where that bit was going. Well, I'm gay as well. I could tell. You're a real one-trick pony, aren't you? It's too bad your trick only works on fools. That wasn't my intent. I simply wish for more details as to how Mr. Faraday ended up on top of Mr. Brow. Hm. Someone's impatient. I was just about to explain everything to you. So do you think you could hold on for a minute? Oh! Francesca, I'll make you a deal. I'll hold on if you hold on to that whip of yours. Oh, I'll hold on to it, alright, as I whip you. Oh! Well, now that you've quieted down a bit, I'd like to continue if you don't mind. See, two bodies fell into a pile. The two fell on top of each other. Didn't you find that to be just a bit strange? Not at all. Oh! I can see it in her eyes. She is dead set against me from the bottom of her heart. My Edgeworth, once I'm done here, you'll see that there's nothing strange at all. Now then, as the two men fell into a pile. Which indicates that they attacked each other at the same time. What do you mean by they attacked each other at the same time? I assume Mr. Faraday had the two different weapons in his hands. He made to attack Mr. Rell while holding both the knife and revolver. And then... After Mr. Faraday tried the gun, fired the gun, Mr. Rell grabbed the knife as he was falling and stabbed Mr. Faraday. That is how Mr. Rell wound up on the bottom with Mr. Faraday on top. That's close range. That is more than possible. Yes, it's possible, but... Well, if you have any other ideas, then show me what you've got. Oh, I will. And to that extent, I'd like for you to append what you just said to your testimony. Hm, I don't see any point with that, but as you please. That fact indicates that they attacked each other at the same time from close range. You're saying that they attacked each other at the same time from close range? That is exactly what I just said, yes. Mr. Faraday pointed the gun at Mr. Rell's chest and pulled the trigger. Mr. Rell then took the knife from Mr. Faraday and stabbed him before he fell unconscious. The dead Mr. Faraday instantly fell on top of Mr. Rell from the stabbing, pinning Mr. Rell under him while he died shortly thereafter. And that's how they ended up on top of each other, with no contradictions to be seen. Hmm. I wasn't paying attention, but I'm guessing that it's the... no gunpowder. It really doesn't matter in the slightest that they fell in the opposite order. 
Do you really believe they fell in the exact opposite order in which they attacked? Naya Sedgeworth, you're not listening to a word that I'm saying. Oh! They both attacked each other at the same time, and Mr. Rell fell first by chance, leaving Mr. Faraday to just happen to fall on top of him. Then Mr. Rell died shortly thereafter, pinned underneath Mr. Faraday. And that's how it happened. So the two men attacked each other with Mr. Rell randomly falling down first. The fact that the order that they attacked each other in varies from the order they fell in doesn't cause a problem for me. However, there's definitely one certain aspect that I'm having trouble swallowing. So, why did she append this one? The fact indicates close range. Yeah, she did say close range. I didn't, like, notice that, but I was assuming it was something like that. Um... I'm guessing... Oh, fired from a few hours away. This might be it. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was that or the... Body report again. Do you believe they killed each other at close range? Sorry, but that's impossible. <clears throat> Just as it is written in the crime scene notes. Oh yeah, it was the crime scene notes and the gun. The firing of the handgun did not leave a powder burn on Mr. Rell's clothes. Therefore, Mr. Rell and the gun must have been separated by a distance of at least two or three yards. Uh. Yes, this is by far the biggest contradiction. The two bodies are piled up on upon each other, yet the gun was fired from a distance. And with there being no chance if Mr. Rell moved that far after being shot. That leaves only one possible explanation. Oh, what a completely foolish line of foolish thought from a thoroughly foolish fool. If I'm not right, then who was it that made the first move with the intent to kill, huh? Who? The person that attacked first with murderous intent. That would be... Neither. Here in this room, contradictions appear no matter which man we claim attacked first. Thus, there can only be one explanation. There was a third person here. Ugh. It was that third person who killed both Mr. Friday and Mr. Bell, and set their bodies up to make it look like a double murder. That third person is the real culprit. Mayor Zetchworth, there's just one thing you're missing. There's no way for them to escape. Evidence, correct? Oh, that too, yeah. Exactly. Everything you've said up until now is nothing but a story played out in your head. However, this is where the real test begins. Can you prove that there was a third person involved in this crime? Of course. If a third person was truly here, that fact would resolve the glaring contradiction. The proof that this has all been a setup made it look like they killed each other. I'll present it and lay bare the final piece of the puzzle that's not yet in place. What is the piece of evidence that proves there is a third person involved? Uh-oh. Stinky. Is it just simply the gun being in the wrong hand? That is left-handed. I'm going to try the left-handed. Nope. Could be the bag, maybe? Immediately after a gunshot was heard. Max about the bodies. Friday died of a knife stab to the chest. The shock from the, the shock from the stabbing caused instantaneous death. Rell died of a bullet went to the chest. There's no gunpowder burn on its clothes, suggesting he was shot from a few yards away. It's possible to live for a little while after being shot, and then just them. Best rap, huh? Dick Gumshoe. Have I checked this? Oh, it's just that. Well, I think it could be this, or it could be the other thing that I said it might be. The bag. Take that. The gun in Mr. Friday's hand, and the plastic bag with his blood on it. These two items point to the presence of a third person. How so? Recall Detective Gumshoe's testimony. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single paper struggle. If there wasn't a struggle in this room... There shouldn't be any plastic bags on the ground, meaning that someone else must have deliberately scattered them around. Uh. Do you not see the possibility in this? Disregarding the gun for the moment. There's a high probability of blood splatter when the knife is used on a person. If the culprit held the knife with the plastic bag around it, they could have they could use the bag to catch any blood splatter from when they withdrew the knife. 
Then, by spreading a few more plastic bags around, mixing the bloody ones in with them, and arranging the room to make it look like there was a struggle between the two, they were, they were able to conceal their presence. Ah! We did it! Hooray! Looks like we've still got a long way to go in this investigation. Yes. Uh, CC, uh, I mean, not CC, Callista? Oh my god, the judge is here too. What the heck's up with you, Bull? Mr. Bad, I advise you to place Detective Gumshoe under arrest. Whoa, war! Why? Again? Stop it! I mean, again? What are you talking about? This is my first time as a detective. What's the meaning of this? <laughs> Looks like you're not man enough to discipline your own subordinates. Don't you dare! That detective claimed he was there standing in front of the door the entire time. But I have it on good authority that it, would, that it was all a giant lie. Huh? Miss Hugh, I asked that you please explain that statement. I'll let his honor explain it himself. I saw it with my own eyes, I tell you. During the recess, there was a period of time when there was no one in the hallway. What? See, Mr. Bad? So I ask you, why would, it, why would a detective who is supposedly doing his job the whole time want to fabricate such a lie? Dumb shoe. Did you... Did you kill Faraday? No! Of course not, sir! It would appear as the one who sets this whole crime scene up is that detective. Which basically renders his testimony a complete lie and wholly invalid. It looks like your perfect logic has just come tumbling down, Niles. Yeah. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of a struggle. Was that statement really a lie? Detective Gumshoe, you're now a suspect in the murder of two men. Now spit out the truth or so help me. Oh, I, I haven't lied to anyone, sir. Honest. I really, I really was really there. I was in the hallway the whole time. Detective Bad, I ask that you please do not act without my permission. Let me get streamer mode on Discord. I forgot about that and now I'm getting Discord notifications and it's covering my chat. Please do not act without my permission. After all, I am the one that's heading up the investigation, am I not? Don't talk like you know what's going on, boy. All I want is for this investigation to run perfectly. Perfection is the only wish of a disciple of Von Kahn, after all. Therefore, before you take Detective Gumshoe into custody, I'd like to set the record straight on something. And what's that? Hmm, what should I ask Detective Gumshoe about? Motive, why he wasn't in the hallway. State of the hallway. Hi, Sinja! Welcome in! I hope you're having a good day. It's been a while since we've talked, but like for real this time. Usually I say that as a joke, but welcome in! Hope you're having a good day. Haha, uh -huh, no eye command. Detective Gumshoe, I take it that no one else was in that hallway at any time, correct? Oh. Oh, of course not, Bull. You're being awfully defensive. Might you be hiding something from me? It has to be. Nah. -uh. Watch your mouth, Bull. You can't go around saying stuff like that about me without any evidence. Hmm? I suppose you're right. I have no evidence at this point. Now, Sitra, how can you be losing a battle of wits with this detective? You're a disgrace. Oh no, Sinja's here to witness my awful German accent. Girl, maybe I should ask about something else. What should I ask Detective Gumshoe about? Um, why he wasn't in the hallway. Even I think that he was. Detective Gumshoe, why were you missing from the hallway for a span of time? Look, Bell, like I said, I was there the whole time, okay? I had rumors about you spending your time with other people than the fruitcakes. Yeah, it's true. I've spoken to someone. Ah, uh, it's really upsetting. But there's testimony against you that... May I say to her, why are you wasting our time was a completely useless question. Hmm? The only logical reason as to why he was absent is that he was busy committing the crime. Anyone who says otherwise is a fool. Oh, maybe I should ask about something else. Do the German accents, there you go, I did it for you. Motive. I suppose the one thing I'd like to clarify is Detective Gumshoe's motive for committing this crime. Hmm. Motive, huh? 
Gumshoe. You got a grudge against Faraday or anything? Pretty good German accents. Well, Sinja, the German expert, has spoken, so... Yeah, I'm kind of amazing at German accents. You heard it here first, folks. Uh, I now have bragging rights. <laughs> no, sir, not me. Not a single bad thing against Mr. Party, sir. Is that a fact? You really have a problem with lying, don't you, Detective Gamshu? I'm telling you, I'm not lying! The more unnatural you act, the more suspicious you become, you know. If you want a motive, Edgeworth, I have one for you right here. If you want to accept you as a fellow German from now on, thank you so much. I am a German, I'm no longer British, I'm now a German. It's true, and real. Could you please share it with us? However, be forewarned that I won't hesitate to object uh, to flights of fancy. Because all I'm interested in is the perfect explanation. <laughs> You're serious, aren't you? Fine. You amuse me, so I'll humor you with a little courtroom practice. Oh, I get to... I get to argue with the defense attorney. This is like court. It was about a week ago. Ah, uh, look at her. I saw the detective got chewed out by a livid Faraday in front of the precinct. Ooh. He got shouted at once. Murder. I haven't got authority that a brick converting to Germany makes a Japanese passport. I... What are you talking about? I'm German. I've always been. Since the day I was born. The moment I was born, I have been German of a German blood. He stood there super pale. Has Mr. Friday yelled, That's a salary cut for you, you nitwit. A brand new detective suddenly getting his salary cut. That's reason enough for a grudge. Well, how's that for the perfect explanation? She's like crossing her eyes. Have you ever heard of stereoscopes, Mr. Edgeworth? You totally misunderstand me, Bo. No matter how mad I get, I could never hold a grudge. Quiet. We can't trust anything you say. Sir. Hmm. There's nothing wrong with the motive she proposed, per se. But there are some gaps in her logic that need to be filled in. Very German blood, absolutely. Home from school now. Welcome back, Chloe. Have you had a good time at school? <clears throat> Ms. Yu's perfect explanation may not be so perfect at all. Ha 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 It was about a week ago. No, it wasn't. Ha 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 A week ago? Then you and Detective Gumshoe were acquaintances. <laughs> no way. I only met him in person today. Then how did you know about Detective Gumshoe? Oh, I've seen him around before. I saw the detective get chewed out by a little Faraday in front of the precinct. Mr. Faraday was upset. Yeah, you know what else? Mr. Faraday isn't exactly known to get angry often. <laughs> there he was, totally beat red in the face. <clears throat> and the offending detective just stood there, pale as a ghost, like he was about to die. Just like the, just like the face he's making now, right? Oh, I'm completely innocent, I tell you. <laughs> the poor man. <laughs> it was quite the scene with the detective. He stood there super pale as Mr. Friday yelled, That's a salary cut for you, you nitwit. You just stood there, watching this unfold in front of you. Yeah, I have to say, it was really enjoyable too. Can't believe they framed the gummy. Yeah, again, what the heck? For the first time, rather, because he's just become a homicide detective. But that's why when I saw Detective Gumshoe earlier, I knew to steer clear of him. No way! I thought it was because I had something stuck in my face! <laughs> What'd you do? Huh? What have I got stuck in my face? Let's start with your eyes, nose, mouth. Oh! And those ridiculous eyebrows. Oh, <laughs> oh man, messing with your head is just too much fun. Miss Yu, if you don't mind, I'd like to. I'd like to return to your testimony now. Sure, why not? I love Callisto. I really hope she's not the killer, but she's so lovely. That brand new detective suddenly getting a salary cut. That's reason enough for a grudge. Hmm, to cut a new detective's salary right off the bat like that. 
I'm not really familiar with the way you guys relate, but is that a common practice? Oh, speaking of cutting my salary, didn't you threaten to do that to me earlier too? I suppose I did. It's only natural to cut this worthless, a worthless detective salary down to send actual worth. My father can even fire anyone, new or old, with the snap of his fingers. <laughs> do you think maybe that's reason enough for detectives to hate you people? Well, I guess. They really shouldn't cut people's pay. I agree, best bad. You should not cut people's pay. They, people should be able to, like, survive off of a wage. Best bad. We love him. Detective Bad, don't tell me Mr. Mr. Von Karma cut your salary earlier. Oh, that's how he convinced him. <laughs> well, how's that for the per perfect explanation? Hold it. it isn't! Stop it! You call your explanation perfect? <laughs> Is it not to your liking? No, no, no. Unfortunately for you, it's just not up to my standards. Oh, is there something you want me to clarify in that case? Imagine earning lovable wage. Yeah, imagine. I don't have a job, so... I can't imagine that, actually. But I'm sure that if I got a job, I would be earning so much money, enough to live, definitely. What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Should I raise an... I don't know why I'm saving. Obviously, I have to raise an objection, but... Alright, if you could clear this one thing up for me. Um, uh, um, 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 uh, um, 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 uh, um, 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 I'm a little bitch. Motive. I understand Detective Gumshoe's potential motive for killing Mr. Faraday. However, what about his motive for killing Mr. Rell? I think this one's answered. Because he had to friend Mr. Rell. His motive for killing Rell? Like I would know. Hm. If there was no clear motive for both of the murders, then I doubt this incident could would have occurred. Wouldn't you agree? Is there anyone else who might have had a grudge against either of the two men? I think no wealth in our faces, you know it. I'm so rich. Or should we look into that ourselves? Oh, in that case, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> well, hi Astro, welcome back in. What the fuck, I had you do that? What are you talking about? I've never done anything bad. Oh! What? But that's impossible. She must know something. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please not flirt at me like that? It makes me laugh. <laughs> oh, I didn't even do anything and you're already laughing away! Well anyway, the way I see it, as long as he had a motive to kill one of the two, this crime would have played out the way it did anyway. SMH, SMH, I can't believe you. Stop it! My wealth is of none of your concern, but I am very rich. I so rich from all the lovable wages Paul sends. Exactly, Paul pays me. Uh, to keep, to not kill him, because I have been hired to assassinate him, so he pays me monthly so that I don't. I'm still gonna do it, I just need, I just need some more money for, um, saving up for, uh, I'm trying to think of something funny I could buy. New wallpaper, fuck. <laughs> I was looking at my walls and I was like, wallpaper? Yeah, sure. <laughs> this crime would have played out the way it did anyway. Oh, would you care to explain your logic? And this time, please try to provide a truly perfect explanation. <laughs> perfect this, perfect that. Stop being so tight. Is that a requisite trait for being a Von Karma? <laughs> My such work, I demand that you shut this rude woman up. I wish you'd both be quiet for just one second. <laughs> oh well, I guess I'll just have to explain it to you kids. New wallpaper, yup. Paul pays you what he withholds from me. I'm not threatening enough for the killing money. Sinji, you gotta come in with a knife and a gun and uh, stage a murder with Ben Faraday and Matt Crowell. That'll be threatening, probably. There's no one out there with a the motive to kill both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. All you really have to establish is that someone had a grudge against one of the two men. Mr. Rell, who happened to be there, became a witness to Mr. Faraday's murder. Therefore, he was killed out of necessity and set up to look like they'd killed each other. I knew she would say that. I thought she'd say it sooner, though, so I thought that my... Uh, the option motive was wrong. I wonder if that's really true. There's then no one out there with a grudge against both men. I'm thinking that it's gotta be... What was his name? Is it gonna be this man? Manny Cochin. I don't know if he does, but maybe. Come to his testimony. We don't really have anything else that would be... Right? 
I'm thinking it's Manny Kutch, and I don't know why, I don't have any reason. I don't remember if anything was said about him having issues with either of them, but it's gotta be him. Well, Pippa's made from gold money, you know it. I'm pitting my world's goal. Is there no one out there with a grudge against both men? I should take another hard look at the evidence for this morning's case. The second KG8 incident, as people are calling it, involving an embassy staff member. Where? And the two men who both wound up as suspects in the case. So... Dead man, nice. A little care, um... I don't remember how Cece died. She is dead, right? I'm pretty sure. This isn't very specific. The victim is CCU. I don't know, I'm gonna say- I'm gonna probably say that it's Manny, maybe. The two men who both wound up as suspects in the case. Baby cares little teeny, she's so teeny tiny. Is there someone else I'm overlooking who is somehow related to them? I love how they just straight up say, look at the KG8 files, it's there! Like, I haven't even, like, got to the end of the testimony yet, and they're like, listen, this is the answer! There's no one out there with a motive to kill both Mr. Friday and Mr. Rel. I'm assuming it's this statement, but, um... Press! My special move! So there's no one else who might have a grudge against Ms. both Mr. Friday and Mr. Rel. I suppose no one is a bit of a stretch. But I'm pretty sure no one like that was here in this courthouse today. Okay, so it has got to be him. Because he, he he appeared in the courthouse. Mr. Courtian. She's lying through her teeth. We just saw someone saw someone like that here earlier. Oh my god, they're making it so fucking obvious, Jesus. They really want me to get this answer. Besides, you don't need to prove that the killer had a grudge against both men. All you really have to establish is that someone had a grudge against one of the two men. Someone with a grudge against one of the men. In that case, aren't there plenty of other people who fit the bill? Sure, after all, who doesn't garner a score for another simply by being alive? But the only one who held a grudge and acted upon it by killing was Detective Gumshoe. Ew. Furthermore, you're a defense attorney, not a prosecutor. Why are you so hell bent on this? Mr. Rell, who happened to be there, became a witness to Mr. Friday's murder. Hold it. <laughs> Man. <laughs> So you're saying that he was basically silenced. Aren't you glad you managed to avoid the same fate, Your Honor? Why, if you'd been the one to witness the bloody, blood-covered detective. <laughs> oh, what? what, what? Detective Gumshoe, you know what killed even me. What? I, uh, I could never do something as terrible as that, Your Honor. There's no need for even a second of deliberation. I will hand down my verdict here. Your Honor, take a look around. We're not in court right now. It would be greatly appreciated if you could stay with us in reality. Ah, oh, please forgive me, I know not what I do. <laughs> and you then, Miss Yu, hurry up and continue with your testimony. If you fail to do so, I will whip you onto ship. <laughs> That's nice. Sounds kind of like fun, actually. Excuse me? <laughs> anyway, Detective Gumshire had to erase the witness, Mr. Rell. <laughs> okay, I'm <laughs> brushing past that. Therefore, he was killed out of necessity, and set up to look like they killed each other. Alright, so I think the first statement is just either his profile or the KJ isn't files. Hmm. I didn't do it, though! No hard feelings, but I don't think we can take the word of a criminal seriously. Whoa, but I can't even begin to think of ways to set up a crime scene. I suppose you do lack the necessary, the necessary tactical mind required to do such a thing. Oh, why do you have to kick a man when he's down, Bow? <laughs> you shouldn't put yourself down, Detective. You're a big boy. I bet you thought it all by yourself, right? Yeah, that's right. And I work real hard at it, too. I think this proves one thing about the Detective. He has the mental acuity of a worm. Would you still love me if I was a worm, sir? <laughs> However, there's also something she overlooked in her testimony. I should present that piece of evidence to see if I get a little 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 Scat Man's World. I think it's the first one. Uh, I cannot present profile, so it has pro it's probably this. The KJ incident overview, which they mentioned five fucking times. <laughs> before we even got to the testimony. He's now worm gum gumworth, more like gumworm. Nice. Miss you. I believe there's someone you overlooked in making your statement. 
Or rather, is it because you'd rather not bring this person up? What do you mean? We are looking for someone with a reason to kill both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. I can think of at least one person that fits the bill. He was the suspect in the original KG-8 incident. And a member of the Colombian Embassy staff, Mr. Manny Cochin. <laughs> That's right, the very man who came to visit you earlier, out in the hallway. The man who killed a member of the Colombian Embassy staff, Mr. Rell. And the man who was the lead prosecutor of the KG-8 incident, Mr. Faraday. Are you telling me that Mr. Cochin has no reason at all to kill both of these men? Well... I suppose he might have a reason or two. You! You covered for me, pal! Maybe you're not such a bad guy after all. Don't get ahead of yourself! You're still a suspect, make no mistake about that! The perfect evidence, the perfect testimony, these are the only things I wish to hold. But what I didn't do it! Hm. He will stay under my authority, and then go investigate Mr. Manicotin for me. And remember, I will not be very forgiving should any of this leak out. Oh, that! You ought to investigate Cochin. Oh, damn. Oh, damn! Ooh, I'm kind of a slick guy, aren't I? Ooh, kind of a smooth guy. Mm, yeah. You ought to investigate Cochin. You'd just be wasting your time. And why is that? Cochin was up in the viewing gallery, watching the trial. Or so I was told. Every cop in this place has been keeping an eye on the guy since he arrived. Since the only real suspect we have is still Detective Gumshoe. I suppose so. No way. Come on, Detective Van, you've got to believe me, sir. I really wasn't that hallway the whole time, sir. I never took a single step into this room, sir. Okay, then are you saying? There was someone else who passed through the hallway. I... no, there was no one else, sir. Then why should I believe you didn't do it? That is one incredibly foolish detective. Standing right in front of a crime scene all by himself. That skull looks like smashed cheese, I'm gonna eat it. It's got holes in his body, just like the cheese from Tom and Jerry. It's as good as a confession of guilt. I have to admit, it's a bit strange. Most criminals will fabricate some sort of lie to escape their crimes. And if that detective really wanted to prove that he is innocent, you'd think he would at the very least offer up I spaced out while on duty or the like. Come on, Gumshoe. Time for your interrogation. Oh, Detective Bad. Oh. Oh my god, it's me, Dick Gumshoe. Miles Edgeworth, I would go on ahead and report this to Papa. And that, as they say, is that. Right, everyone? Oh, oh, oh. oh, I'm such a good judge. Well, I suppose we should both be getting back to our real jobs now, huh? No, no, no. Before we do, Miss Yu, there's something I'd like to speak with you about. What is it? I, stop laughing at me. I haven't even... I'm not even at your full body spread and I can already tell that you're laughing. <laughs> stop it. Uh, 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 I'm gonna... I'm gonna go sleep. Have a good... What am I saying? What am I saying? Have a good sleep, Sinja. I for some reason forgot the word for that, even though it was right there. Have a good sleep. I hope that you get some lovely rest. So, what did you want to ask me about? The KG-8 incident, you fool! The current case of the murdered Cardopian Embassy staff member. I've heard that people have begun calling it the second KG-8 incident. Honey among you law enforcement types. And, what about it? I'd like for you to tell me everything you know about the original KD-8 incident. I'm afraid I can't help you. I don't know anything beyond what was reported in the papers. No, I believe you know much more. Since you are directly tied to the KG-8 incident. I'd appreciate it if you'd stop with the false accusations. Baseless outbursts are useless both inside and outside the courtroom, don't you know? I do, but I also know that I do have a leg to stand on here. <laughs> Think you can stop making that ultra serious face in front of me? Yeah, if you could please stop laughing for just one second. I'm not going to make any headway like this. I'm just going to have to show her exactly how related the KG-8 incident she is. So just this. Miss Yu, I believe that I have proof of your connection to the KG-8 incident. That files your proof? 
Very well then. Why don't you tell me exactly how I'm related to the KG8 incident? To the victim. Your connection to the KG8 incident is through the victim. Ah! The victim's name is CCU. You will note that she has the same last name as you. Can you really still tell me with a straight face that you're not related to this case? <laughs> Sorry, but we're not related. Whoop! Just kidding. You asked that question with such a serious look in your face. <laughs> that I couldn't help but... <laughs> oh. Miss Yu, I ask that you please tell me the truth. Stop making fun of me! <laughs> Alright, I'll tell you everything I know. As you guessed, the one who reported the smuggling activities of the Amano group it was my sister, CCU. As I thought. And she was killed right before she was to testify at the impending trial by Manny Cochin. But because he was tried once and was acquitted, he gets to live out the rest of his cushy life completely carefree. Wait, is Double Jeopardy actually going to come back? Double Jeopardy is actually going to become a, a plot device? Like, for an actual reason? It's being brought back for an actual reason? Oh my god! All because of a lack of evidence. No, I heard that the evidence to convict him did exist. What? I heard it from Mr. Faraday himself after Mr. Cogent's trial was over. Apparently a man in black made off with the most important piece of evidence. Oh, then the evidence had been tampered with. Isn't it just like a criminal to do something like that? The smuggling ring being run out, out of the Amano group by one of its secretaries. They bailed Mr. Cochin out. Turns out they were in league with each other all along. How big was that smuggling ring? Was it a large operation? I don't really know. Which is why I wanted to become the lead defense. On this case, the people are calling the second KG8 incident. But I haven't learned anything new at all. I was probably expecting too much, I know. You mean you think this case has nothing to do with the smuggling ring? I don't know what to think. Why did Mr. Cochran want to meet with you earlier? Actually, he came to watch the trial. Apparently he only found out that I was the defense lawyer on this case after he'd arrived. He figured he should, he should hey, ha say hi and one other thing. Looks like he can resolve anything this time either. Too bad. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Oh boy, stop it with scary face already. I'm fine, really. I give him a good slap across the face. The way she talks about slapping him as she laughs away is kind of creepy. Ahem. But it's just as Mr. Bad said. He is not related to the double murder. I asked around and people in the gallery claimed that he was in his seat the entire time. Talk about cruel fate. Well, this is about all I know. <laughs> Sorry. I guess I wasn't much help, huh? That's not true. I'm sorry I made you recall such a painful time in your life. <laughs> Edward, you really are too serious for your own good. You really need to learn to relax. We won't want you to die of stress, would we? She's literally me. She's literally me. Like, whenever I'm talking to, like, a therapist or something about, like, past trauma, and they're like, Oh, I'm sorry, this must be difficult. I'm like, really? Sure thing. <laughs> Which is probably unhealthy, but still funny. Thank you for the advice, but there's no need to worry. I'll work in my own way, and I will catch this criminal in my own way as well. You'll see. <laughs> Look at you with your game face on, ready to go. I- I'm making no such face. Did you know, laughter is the best medicine, Edgeworth. Then you get tired of making such a serious face all the time. I'm charged with making sure that all the criminals of this world are found guilty. I have no need for laughter. There you go, making that face again. Oh well. I've got to get going. I still have a few loose ends I need to tie up. Hmm. <clears throat> the KG8 incident and this murder investigation. It is my belief that these two cases are related to each other somehow. Plus that detective, Detective Gumshoe. It's obvious he's lying, even though the lie is hurting his chances. Clearly this case is far from over. But whether or not that detective is the murderer can only be determined once I've completed my perfect investigation. Mr. Von Karma, I swear to uphold your honorable name, or my name isn't Miles Edgeworth. To be continued.
Man. I love Callista. I hope she's not the killer, but I think she probably is. Unless we meet Manny, in which case he might be, but it seems too obvious. But maybe. Sir, what is to become of the trial into the Kodopian Embassy staff member's murder? Indeed, since both the suspect and the prosecutor are now dead. The case will be dismissed. In other words, the trial ends here prematurely. Ha, huh. looks like you'll have to wait just a bit longer for your big debut. I suppose it can't be helped. The evidence for this trial will be transferred to you in a little while. Sir, what do you think about the murder of the Kodopian Embassy staff member? And the murders of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell? What an outrageous circus it has all become. That Faraday brought it all upon himself with his naivete. An outrageous circus? Right, sir. I grow weary of this topic. Edgeworth, I will have you assigned to a different case. Papa, care to come and watch my courtroom debut next, won't you? Hmm, I'll consider it. Consider it? What the fuck? Sir, if I may, please allow me to continue with my investigation. Whatever for? I know that there's already a suspect in the murder of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. However, there's not enough evidence to prove that it was he who committed the crime. I'd like to continue investigating in order to find the perfect proof of his guilt. The perfect proof? Don't make me laugh. Because laughing really hurts in this voice. A worthless person like you has no right to claim such a thing as perfection. Um, Papa. Who do you think is the real culprit behind the, these murders? Miles and I, we're competing to see who can find the real killer first. Plus, being able to investigate a real crime scene is a really rare opportunity. It would give us some real-life experience, wouldn't you agree? <clears throat> if you want to investigate this case that much, then do as you wish. Then, you're allowing us to continue. In court, your top priority is to win, and a solid investigation is one of the keys to winning. We have to make sure you become recognized as a first-rate prosecutor, don't we? It wouldn't be very interesting. Otherwise... I'm returning home now. Edgeworth, Franziska, see to it I'm not disturbed, save the results of your competition. Yes, sir. Of course, Papa. Franziska. Thank you. What are you thanking me for? Your logically I was built on that scruffy detective's lie. And that means that the competition is still on. Oh fuck, I pressed alt. Yes, just as you wished. Hmm, I couldn't let you get off so easily. Now then, let's see how well you fare on the investigation from here, Miles Edgeworth. Miles is... Ma um, sorry, Manfred is almost not a dick in this case for once. Yeah, he's a, a little fella. I love him. I know I don't have enough information yet. So my first order of business will be to question anyone involved with this case. What about you, little man? Sir, another to report, sir. Oh. Is there no one who will make this man take responsibility for his actions on the job? Looks like we have no choice but to report this to Papa. Then this guy can have fun in a walking, waking nightmare after being awakened from his dream. Actually, let's not. I kind of feel sorry for him now. Can I leave? Oh my god, I can! What the fuck, I'm in court? What? I wanna be the judge! I wanna be the judge! Oh my god, I'm the fucking judge! Francisca, I now declare you guilty as fuck! This must be the judge's desk. You can tell by the gavel sitting on top. I had a dream once that I was being squashed from above by this gavel. <laughs> that sounds like a Mr. Phoenix Strait dream. Be the judge, I, I now declare Gumshoe innocent. Oh, you're such a weakling, Miss Miles Edgeworth. You have no idea how frightening it was. That's also my first thing I did when I came in here. It's judge time. Of course it's judge time. Franziska, get down into the witness stand. I'm going to declare you guilty. We're playing uh, judge now. We're playing lawyers. <laughs> Ooh, I want to sit on the defense's bench. Is this defense's bench? I think so. Francisca, you're my co-counsel, okay? <laughs> it's the defense attorney's bench. 
I'd probably be standing on this side of the courtroom if that incident hadn't happened. What are you thinking about? My dear papa. Let Lizzie more wrinkly your face becomes, the less I'm able to read about what you're thinking. Well, I never. I'll have you know I don't have a single wrinkle upon my youthful brow. I'll testify, I swear. It's the witness stand. I'll make sure that each and every person that ever stands here will be found guilty. There are others besides the defendant that stand at this podium, you know. I don't care, just make sure you never end up standing at one of these. I am right now. Are you going to declare me guilty? Or you'll be sorry. I'll keep that in mind. Okay, Francisco, let's actually do our job. We are now prosecutors, do you understand? Any dinner, I'll be taking my rightful place behind this bench. By that time, I should already be standing here. It'll be downright disgraceful if I beat you to it, wouldn't it? If that were to happen, Francisca. I'll eat my cravat. It's, it's the viewing gallery. This is where the riffraff sit when they come to watch. It's it. This is what I say about my chat. <laughs> it's situated at the same height as the judge's bench. I wonder if that's to represent the intense scrutiny of each and every case from all sides. My as it was, are you are, are you are, are you not man enough to stand up towards those eyes? What sort of, of course I'm man enough. What about this? I can't examine it. It doesn't hold any sort of relevance and it's not real. I love how you can just come up here. I think, was this completely worthless to check? I'm so happy I checked. Oh, Callista! Miss you. Oh, it's you, Edgeworth. And who are you? Wait, you were at the crime scene just now, weren't you? You should be disbarred for not knowing who I am. I am Francisca von Karma, and I'm about to become the successor to the family name. About to? I guess that means that for now you're still just another kid. In which case, it's only natural that I didn't know who you are. Oh, uh... well, why are you with me? Anyway, it looks like, like they're planning to hold the evidence a bit longer. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's waiting. I'm terribly sorry, but I have but a few more questions to ask of you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, eyebrows scrunched with lines on your forehead. <laughs> and that <laughs> to ask of you. <laughs> what exactly is so funny? <laughs> Sorry, I am just bad at dealing with a super serious atmosphere. Apparently they failed to teach you proper behavior at a crime scene in law school. <laughs> I feel much better now. So, oh, what is it you want to talk about? I'd like to inquire as to where you were at the time of the murder. We were in defendant lobby number one the whole time, up until we heard the gunshot. We? And by we, I mean Mr. Bad. If you don't believe me, feel free to ask him yourself. You were Detective Bad? Why? We had a little something to discuss, that's all. So, I take it that you're acquaintances with Detective Bad? Yeah, he was the detective in charge of the KG-8 incident. Detective Bad is also related to that incident, and we already know that. That's right, he was the one who was supposed to protect my sister, Cece. But you know how that turned out, don't you, Edgeworth? Miles, I us. I have no idea what you two are talking about. I've heard of the kid yet incident from my papa. But how does that case relate to you, Miss Yu? The victim of that case, CCU, was my little sister. Ah. <laughs> You're making that super serious face again. I am fine, really. I just make it a point to rub some more salt in his wounded pride every time I see him. The way she talks about doing that as she laughs away is kind of creepy. Oh, speaking of Mr. Bad, he and Mr. Faraday... I'd say they met up just about every single time the Yadagrasu made a move. Why am I so slow now? It was practically a given that the two would meet up at every one of the crime scenes. I see. He did mention that he is in charge of the... Yatagarasu investigation earlier. Maybe I should wait until these finish because there's so much lag. Maybe I should ask her what she knows about the Yatagarasu in more detail. Hello? You claim that at the time of the murder, you were Detective Bad. 
But don't you lawyers usually discuss the trial with your clients during the recess? We do, and that's what I was planning to do. But Mr. Faraday was being rather threatening, and he dragged Mr. Rell away. After that, Mr. Bat came into lobby number one, so we just stayed there and talked. And what did you talk with Detective Bat about? Nothing interesting. I just insulted him some. Talked about how the trial was going, and then I insulted him some more. Bloody, when she's not laughing, her mouth seemingly spews nothing but insults. Anyway, Mr. Bad and I were in defendant lobby number one when the murders occurred. So I really can't tell you anything about the hallway, or lobby number two. I see. I'd like to ask you a few questions about your client, Mr. Mackerel. Now your client first claimed to be the Yatagrasu, is that correct? Yeah. Once I heard that it was the Yatagrasu that had made off with the evidence from KG8, I began to ask Mr. Rell all sorts of questions, but to no avail. Turns out Mr. Rell was not the Yatagrasu. He just made that up. He made it up? Mr. Rell's crime was caught in tape by the security cameras. But there's no footage of him sneaking into the Qadapian embassy itself. Hold on for just one second. Then you mean to say that you knew he was not the yet real Yatagarasu? And that he was just another cold blooded killer? And you are ready to defend him? Yes, that's right. I see. So, a defense lawyer is actually just someone whose job is to cover for criminals. And that's why defense lawyers are so detestable. But they're no match for us von Karmas. <laughs> I don't believe it. You're serious. Why don't you save that face for something really worth being serious about? And Edgeworth, you remember what I said earlier? I have my own agenda. <laughs> I'm still on the hunt for leads regarding the KG8 incident, alright? And for that, you have not a single qualm about defending a known killer. Don't put words in my mouth. I said no such thing. The only way I had to get close to Mr. Rell was to be his lawyer. I had no intention of covering for him, ever. So don't you dare suggest I was going to. I'm sorry, forgive my rashness. Ms. Yu, I was wondering if you could tell me about the Yatagrasu. The Yatagrasu, huh? I don't really know much about the ca that character myself but I do get a lot of consultation requests from companies to defend them. Requests from companies? Categorize with some petty thief out for money, you know. Hm. All right, then. Perhaps the Yatagrasu is in the business of stealing people's lives. You're not very funny or witty, are you, little Ms. Von Karma? Damn. She's 13. Go easy on her. Girl. Francesca, be careful about who you whip. Choose carefully, or we may be sued by you. There, I chose carefully. Just like you wanted. <laughs> that just now was hilarious, little Missy. <laughs> of course it was. What is wrong with these two women? Why does my pain give them delight? One delight. And, so in the end, what is yet to grass you? I have to say, I'd never even heard of this thief when I was in Germany. The Yatagrasu deals information. Oh, I can't keep speaking in Callisto's, but I, I need to stop speaking to her. I need like a whole part away from her, please. Because she's fucking making me so out of breath. <laughs> Namely, in digging out dirt about backroom dealings and the lack of companies. The autograph is a vigilante who steals such info and then makes it public for all to see. Hm. Vigilante or not, this person sounds like just another criminal to me. I suppose he could put it that way too. But either way, I get a lot more clients now, thanks to that thief. That man! Sounds like Miss Yu is pro profiting nicely. Hmm, I suppose I've gotten all I can out of Ms. Yu. Oh, thank God. I should move on and speak with Detective Gumshu now. Oh, thank fuck. I can breathe again. Detective Gumshu. Hey, it's you, pal. You're here. Yo! As am I. I don't think you needed to whip him to let him know that. 
Oh, I didn't do it, Bo. I swear on my honor as a detective. I really didn't. Your words are useless. I place my trust only in the evidence, detective. Once the investigation is fully over, and should we find out that you are the killer, there will be no mercy to be had for you. I have a heart, Bowl. Hm. But you're not worried, right? After all, you have nothing to worry about. If you really are innocent, that is. Lots of right. Hey, Bo. Uh... Go and do your perfect investigation and get the real killer for me, will you? Hm. I would have done so, even had you not requested me to, detective. So you and Mr. Faraday had a small meeting last week, did you? And what exactly did you do to make him so angry? I just had detected bad. The same thing myself, Bo. Turns out he was mad at me because on my very first day as a detective, I reported in my usual post instead of the Criminal Affairs Department. By the time I got down to Criminal Affairs, I was really, really late. And, uh, that's when he gave me that huge speech. I remember doing the same exact thing in elementary school. On the first day of school, every year, I'd always wind up going to my old classroom. That doesn't sound very perfect. How pathetic for the detective to be compared to a mere school child. Fuck, I'm a little bitch. I'm a dumbass. Oh. <sighs> oh my god, I keep yawning. I'm tired. I want to finish this case today though. I'm sure that I'll stop being tired soon, but that's annoying. Who claimed to be standing guard in front of the door to lobby number two during the recess? However, when did you receive the order to do so, and from whom? Um, earlier, at around 3.20, and from Detective Badball. Today's trial took a really crazy turn, so I was told to make sure nothing happened to Mr. Faraday. And yes, something did happen to him, correct? It looks like it was a total waste of manpower to assign you to guard duty. Oh! Your words sting worse than your whip. Oh, why do I talk so slow? So, it was Detective Bat who ordered him to stand guard, huh? Now then, Detective Gumshoe. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me? Nope. Nope. Not a thing, Bow. In that case, allow us to take a look at what you're carrying in on your personage. Oh, wait, you can't do that. There's nothing of any particular value here. Well, my handcuffs and bat were con confiscated by Detective Bad, so, you know. And what is that open envelope I see sticking out from your coat pocket? Oh, hands off, pal. Just show it to us already. Oh! And you will bonus check within. Five dollars total. Except there is no check inside. You've had your look, now give it back, Bowl. It's my first bonus as a brand new detective. I just got in cash it today. I had literally no cash on me and up until now, up until I did, you know. So that envelope is really special to me. Now give it back. You don't need rubbish like this. Don't worry, we'll throw it away for you later. That's mean. How could you? Dick Gumshoe. I'm sorry, but I need to take him in for questioning now. I think I've asked him just about everything I needed to. No, wait. Since he became a sus suspect, there's one piece of evidence I should re reconfirm. Officer, I ask that you wait a second. I still have one thing I'd like to reconfirm with Detective Gumshoe. I understood, but please make it brief, sir. I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. I must confirm whether or not his testimony about when the crime occurred is the truth. Well, I assumed it was that. I was going to present that anywhere. Oh, it's a bookshelf. Hmm, what's this? Judge's trial exchange log. It appears to be a journal where the various judges share their thoughts and ideas. The real daily lives of the judges are laid out here on these pages. There's nothing about the court in here. It's just page after page of unrelated drivel. 
chatting about the content, they are very enthusiastic about the courthouse's daily menu. And it would appear that fried oysters are a favourite. I have no use for such foolishly foolish words from that foolishly foolish crowd. Someone please assure me that this is not the true state of this country's judici judiciary. You told me earlier that you heard no sound other than the gunshot out in the hallway. Is that correct? No mistake about it, Paul. Hmm. Then, you're also claiming that no one passed through the hallway either. Is that also correct? Yup. Not even a single one passed through that hit hole while I was on duty. Hmm. Hmm. You do realize that the lie you're telling is only making life more difficult for yourself. Oh? Oh. But it's true! I didn't see anyone go through the hallway, and I didn't hear anything else, Paul. I bet the killer found a way to kill the two guys that be that's beyond what I I bet the killer found a way to kill the two guys that's beyond what I what I could even imagine. So he intends to continue telling this ridiculous lie. But why would he do so, given the situation he's in? I believe the thorough investigation. The hallway in front of the defendant lobbies is in order. It's K! This theme plays for K and you associate with the old bag. Oh, I didn't read that. Something. Oh, no! She kicked him! See ya! <laughs> what the fuck? How could you have not noticed that coming? <laughs> oh. Wasn't that the child I changed the child I changed money for earlier? Usually it doesn't play for care, well it is. Baby care. Are you saying that you hit baby care, Chloe? Thanks, that's exactly what I needed. This is a one-off? Wasn't it also a one-off for old bag? I'm sure I only played one time for old bag. Oh my god, this is actually ridiculous. Kids can sometimes be so cruel. It looks like she dropped something. Swiss roll, one second. Let me reload. Alright, let me reload, like, fully. And it plays again for a later. Old bag? Does it? If you say so. When K comes back later, I'll have a normal music, I'm sure. Nah, it would never. Let me just do this, because the lag is insane right now. Do 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 This is insane! Maybe we should arrest the girl. She might turn out to be a valuable lead. I'm gonna open Task Manager real quick. Because this is an insane amount of lag. Dun 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 do do Yep, there's stuff open that should not be. Oh, there's lots of stuff open that shouldn't be. Okay, broke again. She hella dead. How dare she. Oh, my homies hit K. That was rude, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say such mean-spirited things. Maybe we should arrest a girl. She might turn out to be a valuable lead. Uh -huh. I believe some sort of punishment may need to be dealt with the next time we meet. Oh my goodness. I believe I've asked all that I need to of this man now, but it's acted bad and the judge. We have to confirm who is correct. The judge is that scruff face, right? I suppose we should inspect the hallway in front of the lobby number two next then. Hmm. I suppose so. Shall we head on over, Francisca? Bye, Callisto! So, did you see anything else? Hmm, no, I don't think so. I see. 
Well, thanks for your cooperation. Oh, it's nothing. I'm just doing my duty as a defender of the law. And that'll be all for now. I'll ask again if I have any other questions. Any time, detective. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a few loose ends I have to tie up. You're not gone yet, bitch. Oh, you're that new prosecutor Mr. Von Kammer recommended, right? My name is Marsetworth, Your Honor. Oh, I love a little bow. And I'm Manfred Von Kammer's daughter, Francisco Von Kammer. I'm set to become the successor to my genius father any day now, Your Honor. I see, Mr. New Prosecutor recommended, recommended by Mr. Ah! I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're right, Your Honor. Please feel free to refer to me as just Ms. Von Kammer, Your Honor. As for him, just Edgeworth is fine. Apparently somebody doesn't feel that I'm worthy of a proper title. Oh, very well then. I shall call you Ms. Von Kammer, Mr. Prosecutor Edgeworth. Your Honor, Mr. Edgeworth is fine, sir. Now, about your earlier testimony. Yes, what about it, Mr. Edgeworth? I would like to ask you a few questions about what exactly you saw. All right. After all, it's my duty to clarify my testimony as a defender of the law. I greatly appreciate your cooperation, Your Honor. Now, the first thing I will need to do is figure out that detective's exact movements. Your Honor, I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Where were you at the time of the murder? Ah, uh, do you suspect me of something? No, nothing of the sort, Your Honor. Ahem, uh, very, very well. You may continue with your testimony. Your Honor, it's your testimony I'm after. Oh! I had no idea you were chasing after me or my testimony. I'm beginning to sense that I might want to avoid being in a trial run by this judge. Yeah. Let me also check something, I want to make sure. Then about reminisce. Four parts, beginning, middle. So this is the middle part, and then there's two end parts. I don't know exactly what that means, but I think end part means... You stay in the area. Because what I have for end parts so far... Ten about airlines, the last two parts are end parts. And the kidnapped ten about the last two parts are end parts. And in both of those, the last two parts you take place in the sim area. So I'm assuming that's the sim in this. So after this, there's two more parts that probably take place in the same area. Let's see here. Now then, how should I put this? When you get to be my age, you need to pay more frequent visits to the restroom. Hmm. If you go, go take a look through the window at the end of this hall, you'll see a small window. That is the window to the men's restroom. In other words, you can see clearly into this hallway from the, from the men's restroom. That seems... Like an invasion of privacy, my dear fellow. When I was going into the restroom, that detective, Gumshoe is it? Well, he was standing in front of the vending machines, buying something from it. Buying something from it. Hmm. However, and this I couldn't believe when I was about to exit the restroom. There was not a soul in the hallway anymore. Your Honor, if you could please calm down and explain it to me rationally. Oh, I'm really sorry. Let, please let me regain my composure. It was really suspicious. That's what my finally home judge's intuition said. Although, well, until the murders occurred, I just sort of brushed it off. Ho ho ho. Apparently this judge doesn't understand the concept of staying calm. That's probably all I'm going to find out from his honor. Mr. Atworth, may I return to my other duties now? Yes, I'm sorry to have held you up. Thank you for your cooperation, your honor. Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho. Any time, Mr. Atworth. Any time. What a bitch. The judges in this country seem rather friendly. Yes, if not a little wishy-washy. However, I hear that they're known to hand down very fair verdicts. What are you doing, bitch? Have you found any suspicious fingerprints, officer? No, I'm just the fingerprints of those involved the case, sir. I guess we know all of the players in this case, then, huh? It appears that, that way. Sorry, I turned German. Are you trying to mock my accent, Mr. Edgeworth? No, of course not. The judge is my favorite character in this case, and that's not a bad thing. I love all of the characters, the judge is just really funny. Yeah. Terrible judge, but good character, you know? Like, it, it's, it's, it's fun to make fun of the judge, you know, when he's being stupid in a case. But also, like, you can't say that the judge is a bad character. Like, he's, he's fun, he's funny. 
it's just silly that, you know, he's a judge and he's like this stupid and it's like, oh, it's not realistic, but who cares? Realism would be fucking boring. If this game was realistic, oh, I, oh, that'd be so boring. My god, imagine if Ace Attorney was realistic. Like, it would stop people's complaints, I guess, but Jesus Christ. No breakdowns, no OBJECTION! With a finger point, like, oh, That's just so boring, you know? It would appear that way, but I have the nagging feeling that we're missing something. And I suspect that what we're missing is hiding right here in the cri this crime scene somewhere. Did you find something, officer? I think there's a $5 bill back there. Come on, just a little more. Is there no one working in this crime scene who is a total waste of living tissue? Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a single person we can deem useful here. The judge in this case is the best judge in the series, and it's the normal one, but he feels different in this case. Okay. Ooh. Haven't risen to What's this red thing? Hmm? What? Is this? What is this? It's a pink colored piece of trash made of rubber. Balloon? A condom? Those are the two things my mind goes to instantly with rubber. Hmm, I feel like I've seen something like this before. Well, all I see is a piece of garbage. Oh wait, balloon! It is a balloon! Kay's balloon, right? Kay was missing a balloon! But you know, the fact that there's a litter running loose inside this courthouse, it's simply unforgivable! Oh! It's not like it was I who littered! Rubbish belongs in a rubbish bin. Go! It's Kay's balloon. Oh! What's the matter? I pricked myself on one, one of this cactus's needles. I didn't think the needles on this thing would be so sharp. Well, what did you expect? Can you imagine how bad it would be if you were hit on the head by one of these? Anyway, this cactus seems to be unrelated to our case. Do you really think so? Because I believe that this cactus sitting on this windowsill is completely related. Oh? Because it hurt me. Oh? Well then, I look forward to your explanation on how exactly it is related. Maybe how the volume popped. So that window on the other side belongs to the men's restroom. I can't see it. At your height? I'm not surprised. Ah! That whip was deserved. Whoa! I guess short people have feelings too. He said the lion! <laughs> this fucking... Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to see the line again. That line is so fun. Wait, what's this? It's a hard at work carrying their food home. It's a marvel that they can pick up such comparatively large ob objects to their size. Well, if you want to carry the mighty von Karma name and not be squished under it, you'd better work extra hard just like Zila Zilans. The same goes for you, Francisca. Fuck. I don't know how to go down. Well, let's... Fuck. Never mind, let's not. Oh my god, I'm just going to... Handprint. The dirt on this bench. It smells like some sort of sweet substance. I can't believe there's no someone going around dirtying the courthouse. For oh, shame! Calm down, Francisca. Now take a good look. Doesn't this smudge look kind of like a handprint to you? I suppose it could be. Which means that perhaps we can lift the prints of the person who sn sullied this bench. I see. And then we'll know the identity of our mystery slob. You there, the lab technician. Could you please find out who the ha this handprint belongs to? Sir, yes, sir. I've got the results of the red analysis, sir. And do we know who they belong to? Sir, they're from the land of the little room shoe. Oh, interesting. Good work, officer. So I'm thinking that he bent down to grab something off the floor. And that's why his hand is there. He was like kneeling and putting his arm on the bench. And that's where the ditch didn't see him. And there you have it. Yes, I suppose so. Now we know the identity of the person who dirtied the bench. I sense that you and I will be using this information in very different ways. What is these black speckles? I believe it's a pile of ants eating away. Who oh, is that detective? He claims that not a single ant slipped by him. And yet here is a whole hill of them. Girl! 
Well, what are you hitting me for? Has a replacement for that pathetic detective. Oh. Perhaps I should add this deduction to the de detective's growing type of pay cuts. Anyway, I want to see answer eating. From the look and sweet smell of it, pieces of cake and chocolate from a Swiss roll. Ooh. Okay. Miles Edgeworth. This courthouse is to be kept under pristine at all times. No, oh, it wasn't me that dropped food on the ground. The courthouse must be kept clean. No, oh, oh. that might be all. I already checked this area earlier. Logic time. Maybe I don't know. I just wanted to. So, no human can climb through these bars, bad windows. Um, I want to say that these are connected, but I don't know if we know that this is a balloon yet. If that is it, which I think it is. Yes, I'm a big brain genius. This pink rubbery substance I saw. This pink rubbery substance. I saw this in a different form earlier today. I believe this is a piece of a pop balloon. I suppose that's possible. The balloon probably got a little too close to our friend, the windowsill cactus. That would be the logical conclusion, yes. So Kay was around here. She's a suspect, I tell you. That's talked about, I guess. <laughs> Detective Bad, I have something I wish to inquire about. Hey, how about doing some actual work, you? I wish to inquire into Detective Gumshoe's movements during the recess. You're getting in the way of the investigation. I have an order from Mr. Von Karma himself. Plus, I still hold investigative authority. Yeah. So I hear you were the one who called for Detective Gumshoe to come down here. Faraday. That guy was just accused, you know? I just knew something was gonna happen. My detective instinct told me. A lot of good it did you. You couldn't even protect one lone prosecutor, is it? Yeah. Uh -uh. Sir, stop beefing with the 13-year-old. Francisca, I think you need to apologize. Hi, welcome, Anthelos. Welcome in. I hope you're having a good day. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry, Detective Bad. Please continue. Calesta, you'll be like, I'm totally not suspicious. Yeah, she, she's so saucy. So saucy. Hmm. I used the phone on the first floor and called the precinct. Do you let it slowing down or? Yeah, it's kind of laggy. Apologies for that. It's not the, not the best. I told them to send somebody over. And that, and that detective's the one that showed up. Hmm. And only upon his arrival did you set Detective Gumshoe to stand guard, Detective Bad. Yeah, I waited for him on the first floor. After we got here, we came up to these defendant lobbies together. On the asshole, uh, this emulator is, uh, Desmumir. Desmumir. I don't know exactly how it's pronounced. But that's what I'm using. It's not the best, but it's... Uh, the best that I can run on my computer. As we entered this hallway, we ran into you. She told us that Faraday was really mad. And they dragged Rel off to lobby number two to have a word or something. And that Faraday had said, Do not let anyone interrupt them. Oh, that's so fucking sus. You just happened to be the last one to see the two of them, and said nobody should go in there? Come on. So what choice did I have? All I could do was tell the big look to stand guard outside. Yes, sir. And around what time did all of that take place? Let's see. I think it was about 30 minutes before they heard the gunshot. After giving the big luck his assignment, he never left the hallway. Not once. Oh, and how can you make such a claim? <laughs> One of the guards out on this floor's main lobby swore to me he didn't. If the detective never left the hallway, then where did he disappear off to? He was just crouched down, I think. Hmm, is that simple? He must have gone into lobby number two, just as I suspected. You and I, we were in lobby number one next door. The only one without an alibi is Gumshoe. 
Hmm, it would seem that I'm still missing some key piece of information. Detective Bad, you also heard the gunshot, did you not? Yeah. I heard that when I was in defendant lobby number one. And that's why I came running towards lobby number two together with you. How much time elapsed between you hearing the gunshot and your arrival on the scene? Uh, less than a minute. What were your movements upon hearing the gunshot? I grabbed the big lug, who was just walking around in the hall, and raced into the lobby number two. And that's when we discovered the bodies. In that order. As that makes you the discover of the crime scene, right? Yeah, I guess it does, little miss. I am about to become a prosecutor very soon. You will treat me with the dignity I deserve, or else. Hmm. <laughs> you ain't that thing around anymore. And I'll have you arrested for obstruction, little miss. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. <laughs> Just joking. Yeah. Detective Bad's really something if he can make Francisca behave. Are we about done? Is there anything anything else I should ask him about? Um. Tammy had the gunshot, we already know that, don't we? Lacey had the gun- situation around the gunshot. That one's the most vague, so I'm curious. I'd like to know a little more about the circumstances under which you heard the gunshot. Like I said, I was in lobby number one with you. I have nothing else to add. Well, this testimony suddenly corroborates what m with what Ms. Yu said. Maz, you already asked him about Zach, remember? I already asked him about everything! I want to know about something else. Plus, he had the gunshot then. Detective Bird, where were you when you had the gunshot? Well, we already asked him that too. How many times are you gonna ask that? I was in defendant lobby number one when I heard the gunshot. Hmm, that's exactly the same as what you said earlier when I asked. Now get out of here! You're getting in the way. I'm not through questioning you yet! Is there any little, little, Time you had the gunshot, even though we already know her. I'd like for you to tell me the exact time you heard the gunshot. Exact time, okay. It was around the end of the recess, and the trial was about to start again. I think. It was supposed to make time for himself to transfer the evidence he was holding. But I got the sense he wasn't gonna show for the handoff. So I figured I should go get him, or I'd be late. And just as I thought that, bang! The sound of a gunshot hit my eardrums. So I hit the gunshot right before the trial was about to restart, huh? Are we done here? I don't have any time to waste. Hold it! Oh, come on. All you're doing is standing in front of this door, doing nothing. <laughs> I get the sense that he's somewhat investi- That he is- I get the sense that he is somewhat investigating this crime scene. Or rather, that he's keeping us under surveillance. But to what end? Detective Bad, may I ask you what you that you cooperate with us for just a bit longer? Uh, I don't have anything else to say to the two of you. You guys were the ones who said you wanted to investigate in the first place. Fine, then. Be obstinate. We'll just do as we please. Come on, Miles. You may no longer be willing to help us. However, may I ask for the Forensic Scientist Corporation? Do as you like. Okay, bye-bye. Can I go in here? Nope. Can we go in here? Nope. Wait, what? I'm confused. Is there any logic? Nope, it's just these two. Fuck, I didn't mean to do that. Did I have to present something to him? Detective Rad, I've already asked you about this piece of evidence. Hmm, what a narcissist. Here, Raz, look at his face and the evidence. Don't trust your eyes all the time, little girl. I can see the evidence, and keep an eye on the two of you with this mirror. What? Then why don't you answer? Because I've got nothing to say, that's all. 
Understood. Why couldn't he have just said that at the beginning? Well, now I'm confused. What next? It's just as I said. I have nothing further to add. But if there's one thing a detective honors, it's that he must have confidence in and take responsibility for anything you say. And that's what it means to be a detective. In other words, you're just another stubborn horse, aren't you, detective? The KG8 incident. I heard that you were involved in this case as well. Yeah. Uh, that's all you have to say. It was an unpleasant case that I don't wish to recall. I've got a lot of regrets I'll never forget related to that. Regrets I'll take to the grave. Does he really have that many regrets? On the other hand, thinking back on what I know, I suppose he just might. I don't think I have to present anything, I think I just missed something. Fuck! I already checked this area, so no, not there. Hmm. It would appear that this vending machine sells snacks and various other foods. Why is that important? Just lovely. What will they think of next? Don't be a jerk in court like these beef jerks. One packet for nine dollars. Defendant's fresh milk. One half pint for seven dollars. Stay neutral as the Swiss. Do until the end with these for six dollars. They're awfully overpriced. The lineup is simply awful. Period. Speaking of snacks, I wonder if that Swiss roll the little girl dropped is from this machine. Hmm, I was wondering about that myself. These bits of chocolate and cake. Could they not have been from a Swiss roll? A Swiss roll? Why would a courthouse sell a thing like that? Francisco, we just examined it. as like two seconds ago. It may not seem like the right venue. However, it is being sold right over there. Is it vending machine? Ah, I see. Stay neutral, neutral as the Swiss do until the end with these. Two for six dollars? Talk about expensive. Francisco, we just talked about... Are you okay? <laughs> Leaving the fact that it's on the expensive side aside, the fact that the cafe crumbs and chocolate bits were found in this hallway suggests that they came from a Swiss roll that was purchased from this machine. Hmm, I think I have a pretty cl clear picture of what happened here now. Hmm, naturally. After all, I'm here, aren't I? Detective Gumshoe must have sat in this bench as he ate a Swiss roll. Oh, I bow. And as he ate, he dropped it on the floor and sullied the bench. Oh, how could he have not cleaned up that after himself? How utterly despicable. Don't you dare whip me again. It wasn't I who made the mess in the first place. Anyway, if it was indeed Detective Gumshoe who brought the Swiss roll, that creates a rather interesting contradiction of facts. A contradiction? Where? Hm, I think another look at the special courthouse vending machine is in order. Let's go! Just not enough money for it, I guess. Five dollars. Wait, K wanted a dollar. Was it for gummy? About Detective Gumshoe's finances, he said that until this morning, he didn't have seven. He didn't have even a penny. In on his personage. Just how poor is that guy? If his bonus really was only five dollars, then he should not have been able to purchase a pack for Swiss rolls. However, fact being as they are, we found cake crumbs on the floor. Meaning Scruffy must have bought a pack somehow. Indeed. That detective should not have been able to purchase a pack, and yet he did. The question is how? Investigation complete! Hmm, I believe I now have a very firm grasp on what happened here. Uh, 
Uh, well, well, I do too. <laughs> All right, Francesca. Would you care to share what conclusions you've come to? Oh, why should I do that? Oh, we're still in the middle of a competition, you know. We should be checking to see if your conclusions are wrong first. So you go ahead. I love Bad. He's so he's so lovely. I made a remaster of his theme too. Oh, nice. It's almost cute that she's going this far to ensure that she wins. Almost. Very well. But first, we need to pay his honor a visit to correct his testimony. All right. I I, I noticed some uh some some Swiss roll crumbs on my on my judge's bench. Uh, w w were you sitting on my bench? No, no, not at all. What do you mean? I well, I just noticed some some crumbs. I was wondering if someone if if someone went up that. No, no, not at all. It's your imagination. Your Honor! <laughs> if I may, I'd like to test your witness testimony to see how it stands up. Do you doubt me? Am I your new suspect? In a sense, I suppose you could say that. Even you, a judge, is nothing but a common witness before von Karma. Silence in the courtroom! Silence, I said! Mr. New Prosecutor, recommended by Manfred von Kammer, Miles Edgeworth, and Mrs. Janus, Prosecutor's Executive, from Manfred von ah. You bit your tongue again, didn't you? Ahem. As a defender of the law, I could never give false testimony. You can even place me under oath if you want. Very well then. Your testimony, if you please. Hmm. Yeah, he just simply didn't see a gum shake as he was sat down. What I thought, Recess. Oh my god, look. Why am I behind... Why am, I, why am I behind the fucking... Which one is this? The defense's bench. Why am I behind the defense's bench? During the recess, I, um... I went to the restroom. There's a window on the hallway side. In other words, I could see into the hallway. As I entered, I saw that detective buying something from the vending machines. But when I was about to exit the restroom, it completely disappeared. A detective that goes missing while on duty. That sounds mighty suspicious to me. I didn't remember this. I have to bite your honor. <laughs> your honor, he did a piss, your honor. Your honor, can you please try to remain calm? Oh. I'm so used to simply listening to testimonies that I got caught up in the excitement. I'm sorry, your honor, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to spoil your fun now. Do 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 During the recess, I am... Um, I went to the restroom. You needed a little piss. You're a little piss boy, aren't you? I'm not a piss boy. I'm not. You're a little piss boy, aren't you? I, I'm not. Your Honor, why exactly did you pay a visit to the restroom, if I may ask? Oh, well, isn't it obvious? Oh, what else do you go to the restroom for? Or oh, maybe... Uh... I knew it! You suspect me of some sort of tomfoolery, don't you? Please stay calm, Your Honor! Oh my god. We found... We found him! Thomas Foolery! It was the judge all along! This is going to be much harder than I anticipated. I'm sorry. You're right. I need to think things through with a level head. I'm just nervous because so much has happened today with this trial. Let's see, I announced a recess and a time for us to reconvene. But having done all that, I still wasn't able to go to the restroom right away. And why couldn't you? Mr. Faraday had been accused, so I had paperwork to process regarding a new prosecutor. Once I'd finished that, I was finally able to make a mad dash to the restroom. At least he said consistent on the going to the restroom part of his testimony. There's a window on the hallway side. In other words, I could see into the hallway. Your Honor, did you really go to the men's restroom? Oh, what is the meaning of that statement? I simply meant that perhaps you went to a restroom on a different floor. I had to go for such a long time. It was all I could do to dash to the closest one to the courtroom. Hmm, I suppose that's only natural given, given his circumstances. I ran through the courtroom through this through this floor's main lobby and down the hallway. Piss law. <laughs> Sorry, law. I need to uh, differentiate because it sounds like law, as in like law and order. But I mean law. Once you enter, you can see there's a window just above the urinals. And it was through that window that you witnessed Detective Gumchi, Your Honor. Yes, exactly! Your Honor, there's no need to yell, I can hear you just fine. Wait, so. 
Gumshoe could just like watch him piss. Right? I don't know much about urinals. I've never seen one in the flesh. But like, aren't there just like things which you just like piss into? And there's like no barriers or anything? So if Gumshoe looked at the window, he could just see like the judge's dick. Gumshoe. Like what? That's an insane placement of a window. Your Honor, there's no, no need to yell. I can hear you just fine. Oh, I guess I put a little too much into that last answer. Now then, let's continue with the testimony. Why are there windows in a bathroom? That's the most unrealistic part of this whole game. Depending on the place, it doesn't have a barrier, yes. Do some places have a barrier? That would make more sense. As I entered, I saw that detective buying something from the vending machines. Ha! Huh. Are you sure that the person you witnessed was Detective Gumshoe, Your Honor? Yes, I'm absolutely sure. It's hard to miss someone of his stature, even from as far away as the restroom. Besides, I can't think of anyone else with that kind of hairstyle and big beige coat. Mostly because you can't see it from the side unless there were windows for whatever reason. Yeah. I am so... that's such an odd choice to put a window in the bathroom. Well, I was simply wondering if you were mistaken in what you saw. What? Preposterous! My eyes are sharp as can be, ready to see through lies to the truth! Although, recently, things do seem to be a bit fuzzier than they used to be. Clearly, his eyes are not the only things that have gone fuzzy! But allow me to say, with all, your, all the honour and dignity of a judge, I'm not mistaken in what I saw. But when I was about to exit the restroom, he'd completely disappeared. He disappeared? But your honour, didn't you just say? I saw that detective buying something from the vending machines. Why, yes, yes I did! The restroom window looks over the courtyard and right into the hallway. But, just as I was about to exit, I took another look and there was no one in sight. That led me to the only solution to this mystery. That detective must have gone into the crime scene! Lobby number two at that point! So, he looked into the hallway from the restroom and over to the courtyard, did he? A detective that goes missing while on duty. That feels mighty suspicious to me! Your Honor, I ask that you please remain calm. No, 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 I'm perfectly calm! Not being anything but perfectly calm. It appears that His Honor could not have been mistaken in what he saw. Hm, I suppose so, given his line of sight. However, Francisca, why do you suppose our line of sight is so different? If you're referring to my height. Can't you hold that whip still for just a second? Now, about His Honor's testimony. I believe his line of sight to be an important factor. If it's that important, why don't you hurry up and tell him already? I Listen, I want you to press all of it. Sorry. I will, but there's one more thing I need to do, if I'm to correct his honest testimony. I'm going to need to retrace it. I don't know which statement or which evidence, but... I think the evidence... What do we have? Do we have, like, the palm print? Yeah, this is probably going to be it, right? So, um... Completely disappeared. I think it's here. Probably the palm print. Objection! Objection! You, my honor, are but fucked. Uh, well, Mr. Edgeworth, you fucked up your line, I know. But that's the... That's what I... Fuck! Mr. Edgeworth, you're, you're not a very skilled prosecutor, right? Shut up! Shush! I'm trying! I'm trying my best! Stop making fun of me! Oh, what was that finger back for, Mr. Edgeworth? And don't you know it's rude to shout objection while someone's giving testimony? I... that's... what? <laughs> ha! If you truly are a man of the law, then you must always be vigilant. For example, I myself never let an opportunity to shout objection pass me by! Mr. Edgeworth, it's one thing to be passionate about your job, but this is real life. Edgeworth turned into Ronnie for a sec. I lost the crying on, okay? I don't like it when people yell! This is what some people may say is the pot calling the paquette black. Your Honor, I wonder if you might take a look at this for me. 
What is that filth? How dare someone dirty the hallway bench like that? Who is the culprit? That party is hereby found guilty of uncleanliness. If you must know, the uncouth bench sullier has already been placed under arrest, thanks to your earlier testimony, Your Honor. Oh? Well, that's good. But who was it? We were able to discover something from the smudge on the bench. Namely, Detective Gumshoe's fingerprints. Not happy with committing just murder, he had to go and dirty the courthouse too! Guilty! Guilty as fuck! Your Honor, please calm down. While it's true that the detective is the one who made the mess on the bench, we've not yet established that this action is related to the double murder. What do you mean? I believe that the detective brought a pack of, pack of Swiss rolls from the vending machine, and then promptly sat down on the bench to eat one. The cake crumbs and pieces of chocolate on the floor under the bench. And Detective Gumshoe's fingerprints prove my conclusions to be true. Oh, but I still don't understand. Is this whole thing related to how I couldn't see him as I was leaving the restroom? <laughs> it is indeed. The window in the hallway was built rather high up into the wall. At around a grown adult's chest height. As evidence, I submit that Francisco herself was unable to see out of that window. Deserved. No! I knew I shouldn't have used her height as evidence. Basically, what this means is that the area directly under the hallway window is a blend spot when the hallway is being viewed from the men's restroom. Then... Hm. It seems that you've made the connection. If someone were to sit on the bench under the window... Yes, even someone as large as Detective Gumshoe would effectively disappear from sight. Oh, <laughs> Do you finally see, Your Honor? Your testimony has just proven that Detective Gumshoe was in the hallway the entire time. Hold it! Uh, sorry. I didn't mean to say it with that much enthusiasm. All I wanted to do was try saying it once. <laughs> do, do you like when I say hold it? I'd make a good defense attorney, wouldn't I? Hold it! Objection! Ha. Huh. That rather suits me, doesn't it? Oh. <laughs> Oh, yes. Here, uh, let me- Wait, he literally did! He literally did try it again! Here, let me try that again. Hold it! Is there something of value that you'd like to say? Yes, actually, there is. I remembered something else just now. Mr. Edgeworth, please allow me to testify to the court one more time. Even if we ever ruled him, he'd just keep on talking, wouldn't he? That might not be a bad thing. The more info, the better in a- The more info, the perfect- the more info, the better in a perfect investigation, right? Well, you can't even speak. How perfect are you, hmm? Fuck! Ah, she got me. What I saw, part two. I suppose it's possible you can't see a seat person from the restroom window. However, that doesn't mean that the detective was sitting there when I looked. Anyway, I forgot to testify earlier about probably the most important detail. As I was leaving the restroom, I heard the loud bang of a gunshot. Well, that's just not... Huh? That's not when the murder happened, right? <sighs> How is that? That is the testimony of one who judges the crimes of others. Your Honor! Could you try that to state the important facts first next time? I agree. Before you go around judging others, you should learn to judge your own words. Yeek! I'm sorry! But honestly, I thought that sound was just a noise popper until just now. Now that he mentions it, Oh, the balloon. Right before we restarted the trial, he did talk about that. Oh, by the way, was there someone celebrating a birthday during the recess? I could have sworn that I heard a popper going off. Come to think of it, the other day with my grandson. The most critical point in this argument is when when did the judge look into the hallway, and whether that lines up with the gun was actually fired. Your Honor, if I may, I'd like to clarify a few details in your testimony. Balloon scary, balloon go pop, balloon da ba ba ba. It scared me, yo. Oh. I suppose it's probably you, but a little ramba. No, no, what did you just say? In that case, do you can see that you were overconfident in your last testimony? Now hold on there. I just said that it's possible you can't see a seated person for the restroom this time. But you know something? I don't think you know when the prints were you referenced were left on that bench, do you? Yeah. <laughs> While you've proven that it's possible the detective was sitting, I still have a problem with just when those finger fingerprints were left. He's right. I have yet to prove when the fingerprints were left from that bench. 
on his pain segment. His honors be saying a lot of life. This judge, I mustn't underestimate him. I think we can underestimate him a bit. But well, that doesn't mean that the detective was sitting there when I looked. As we established, you went to the restroom during the recess. However, at what point in the recess did you look into that hallway? Hmm, after I called for a recess, I handled the charge of prosecuted paperwork. Maybe, our tw maybe about 20 minutes until we reconvened. Yes, that sounds about right. Hmm. Just as I expected. Oh, what were you expecting? And I demand to know what that whole no smile is for. Your Honor, that statement you made just now is very important. I'd like for you to append it to your testimony. All right, if you insist. Bad says otherwise. Let's see, I looked into that hallway about 20 minutes before we were to reach a ring. What? Stop, stop scatting. Hmm, 20 minutes before we reconvened. Very well. What did you do after that? Let's see, I had to make some preparations, so I rushed straight back to the courtroom. As I had to track down a few pieces of paperwork for the various bailiffs. So you rushed back to the courtroom despite having just heard a gunshot? Well, at the time, I thought it was just the sound of a noise popper. I really couldn't think of any other explanation other than someone having a birthday party. But now, now that this has happened, I see. Thinking back, the judge did mention some. Anyway, I forgot to testify earlier about probably the most important detail. If it's something that forgettable, I don't need to hear it. But all I did was forget to mention it. That sort of excuse may work on as a people, but not on a von Karma. Oh! But it's such an important piece of testimony. Please give me a chance to present it. Hmm, I suppose I have no choice in the matter. As I was leaving the restroom, I heard the loud bang of a gunshot. Fuck. Hold it. Your Honor, how about what you just said? I know I couldn't believe it either. Bang when the gunshot I heard loud and clear, and then a new joke reaction. Ah, I jumped in the air like this. Yes, just like this. With a quick ah. Your Honor, please remain calm when you're trying to explain yourself to me. Yes, sir. Sorry about that. Now then, I must gather myself. Yes. When I heard the gunshot, there was no one in the hall. I should know I looked. There was no one there. This jet is a motion circuit. It's appeared to be, on st to be stuck on overreact. I believe. I believe that we've finally found the flaw in his honest testimony. Yet sadly, he's completely oblivious to it. But I guess I can't really expect him to be aware of it. Well, what are you waiting for? Hurry up and fill him in. At least that thing finally came in handy. Indeed. Now let's see what happens. When I present it to his honor. I'm a little bitch and I'm a stupid bitch and I, uh, I'm a little man and I'm a little bitch as well and I'm a little man and I'm a little bitch as well as the bitch's man. What does this mean? Objection! I don't like when you speak. You're on. I cannot allow you to make an objection. What? Y Your Honor, I, I, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I cannot allow you to not allow me to make an objection. Egads! I have been overruled! Your Honor, there are simply too many holes in your testimony for my taste. Oh, but what do you mean by that? You claim that you heard the gunshot during the recess, but that is simply not possible. Oh! Mr. New Prosecutor recommended by Manfred von Karma. Ah! Instead of biting your tongue, why don't you bite this the whip? Eek. I see you have no mercy for the elderly either, Franziska. Hm. Don't talk back to me unless you want to be whipped and zip back. With your height, you'd need a stepladder or four to accomplish that. What do you mean a stepladder? That is just a regular ladder. Oh, uh, where have I heard this before? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, my ears are not that far gone yet. I'll have you know, I can still hear just fine. And I heard the sound of a gunshot loud and clear with my own two ears. Ha! Huh. Your Honor, I have here an interesting bit of testimony. It's from Detective Bad. And according to him, he heard the gunshot right before the travel's about to start again. What did you just say? Your Honor, you just said that you heard the gunshot about 20 minutes before we were to reconvene. How do you explain this glaring contradiction? That can't be! Unfortunately, that is the truth. But I heard it clear as day. Bang! The loud sound of a gunshot. The sound of the gunshot? We keep returning to this point of contention. 
and that piece of evidence. I always did wonder why I found it where I did. However, now I understand why the gunship was there where it was. Unfortunately, Your Honor, this is what was really produced the gunship you heard. Take that! I found this object in the hallway earlier. What is that pink substance? It may not look it, but this is actually a piece of a balloon. I see. And I suppose you would like me to accept that pink balloon into the court record. Your Honor, I present this piece of evidence in order to overrule your testimony. Oh, what? Your Honor! Your argument goes as follows. You saw no one in the hallway when you heard the gunshot. Now, there's no guarantee that the detective was sitting on the bench at that time. Therefore, you believe he must have been at the crime scene, defendant lobby number two. Am I correct? Yes, that's exactly right. Hmm. Let me ask you something. Do you think that the gunshot you heard was produced by a real gun? Oh! I think I've said enough that even you can figure the rest out on your own. Your Honor! You were fooled by the popping of this balloon into thinking it was a gunshot. Oh, what manner of trickery is this? That was a good effort you put forth, Miles Edgeworth. But if it was me, I'd have wrapped this thing up before the judge even testified. Care to elaborate on how one ends something before it even begins? Hmm. Well, to be honest, I did think that the sound was a bit off from a real gunshot sound. But who could have guessed that someone would pop a balloon in a place like this? That's true. One doesn't usually think balloons in conjunction with courthouse. Um, I want to trade these coins with you. That's it. That balloon that girl was holding, it explains everything. Your Honor, if it makes you feel any better, you didn't lie once in your testimony. However, I can't really vouch for its accuracy. Oh, oh no. That giving testimony could be such a difficult thing to do. What have I done? I owe Detective Gum to a very, very big apology. I will see toward myself that he is released. Wait. There are still a few things I have yet to resolve about what happened in the hallway. Your Honor, I request you put your permission to further question Detective Gumshoe. Oh, but why? I thought we just cleared his name. Whether we did just now or not, I still cannot say. The judge feels so bad, poor judge. Oh no, I lied on the stand. I have convicted people guilty for lying on the stand before. But maybe they were just as cool as me. I'm a real cool dude, you know. The only thing I can do for now is to continue my quest for the perfect explanation. And to that end, I must resolve the remaining issues pertaining to the events that occurred in the hallway. Very well. Rayla, please, please bring Detective Gumshoe into the courtroom. I must fulfill my mission and find the perfect explanation to this case. To be continued? Oh my god, to be continued? No, never mind. Ebola. Oh, what is it now? Is it time for my trial already? I've already told you a gazillion times, Paul, I didn't do it. I'll be the judge of that, Detective Gumshoe. No, you won't. I'll be the judge of that. No, 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 no. I'm the judge around here, and I'll be the judge of that. Why can't you guys be a little less judgmental? Judgmental. Yes, well, speaking of hasty judgments, Detective Gumshoe, I am afraid I must apologize for an error in judgment on my part. Your Honor! I don't believe you should apologize just yet. We've yet to prove he is completely innocent of this crime. You're right! Guilty as fuck! I guess so. Oh, um, what are you guys talking about? In any case, I would like you to testify as to your actions while you were on guard duty. And please remember, you are not on trial. This is, this is all just a part of the investigation. As such, you may still be found to be innocent. However, if you should give false testimony... Yo! My whip will object loud and clear. If you are found to be lying, you will be held indefinitely. Understood? Oh, I got your bow. Thinking back on the state of the criminal crime scene and the judge's testimony, it's obvious that Detective Gumshoe is lying. And if I can't break this lie, 
then we may never get a break in this case. While I was on duty, why am I defense? Uh, oh my god, I'm a defense lawyer, Bow! I came down here to this courthouse on Detective Bad's orders. As soon as I got here, he offered me to stand guard in front of lobby number two. From that time on until I heard the gunshot, I was in the hallway the whole time. On my own as a detective, I swear it was on me, Bow! He's still singing the same tired tune. Hmm, in that case, I'll just have to change the melody. I know he's lying, and it's time I pulled the information I need out of him. Totally, that is. Well, I was on duty, Bow! I came down into this courthouse on Detective Bad's orders. So, was it really Detective Bad who called you down here? You bet it was, Bow! I was left in charge of the precinct while everyone was out, and this call comes in. I put you down here in one minute flat, he said. Well, I thought this was my big chance, my first case, so I made a mad dash down here. Although, I couldn't exactly get her in, get her in a minute flat. So how long did it take you? Oh, um, about ten minutes, I guess. And what was Detective Bat doing when you finally made it? It was waiting for me down on the first floor in the entranceway, Bull. As soon as I got here, he ordered me to stand guard in front of the lobby number two. And by he, you mean... Detective Bad, of course, and this being my first time in this courthouse. He also walked with me up to the front floor hallway in front of the defendant lobbies. When did you meet anyone along the way? Hmm, well... Just as we entered the hallway, we ran into Ms. Yu. When we heard from Ms. Yu that Mr. Friday was not to be interrupted, well, that's when Detective Bad told me to stand guard in the hallway, Paul. So far, Detective Gumshoe's testimony is matching up with Detective Bad's. From that time on until I heard the gunshot, I was in that hallway the whole time. Fuck. Hold it. You claimed you've been in that hallway the whole time. However, is it not a fact that you did something while you were in that hallway? Oh, of course I did something. I guarded the door to our lobby number two, pal. What else? Very well then. And what exactly does guarding that door entail? Um, uh, well, uh, to put it simply. Oh, I know! It was my job to stand in front of the door without moving an inch! Oh? Detective Gumshoe, you mean to tell me that you didn't take a single step away from the door to lobby number two? Is that really what you wish to testify to the effect of? You got it, Bo! I didn't take a single step away from that door, just like I was ordered not to. Why is everyone so quiet all of a sudden? Because we're all in shock. And in awe of your utter stupidity. Scruffy, if you're going to lie, at least tell us a more believable one. Yo! But I... I'm not lying. I should hurry up and bring this insipid testimony to a close. And until I heard the gunshot, I didn't take a single step away from the lobby number two door. I'm only going to ask you one more time, Detective Gumshoe. Are you sure you stood in front of the door to lobby number two the entire time? Yep. After I was told to, to by Detective Bad, I stood guard in front of that door without a single break. So believe me when I say that, I was in the hallway the whole time already, Bull. Oh, I didn't ever go quiet all of a sudden again. Apparently someone has a bit of trouble reading between the lines. What's that supposed to mean? I don't... Be quiet. Ouch! I should hurry up and bring this in seven... On my own as a detective, I swear it's on me, Bull. Fuck. Hold it. Would you also be willing to swear that there was no one else in that hall besides you? What are you talking about? I just warned you that I was doing my job, Bull. Oh, then what are you acting so nervous for? What? Oh, I'm not nervous at all, pal. Anyway, not, not a single person other than myself is in the hell the whole time. I should just let it go. Pursuing this train of thought that this time would just be a waste of time. You have such a foolishly foolish contradiction. And such a foolishly foolish testimony is just plain not foolish. Indeed. However, in the pursuit of the perfect investigation, I'm afraid we have to deal with it. By squashing it under the weight of the evidence. A bowl on the bowl, bowl, a bowl, a bowl. What? Whoopsie. So 
says it there, so... I'm gonna say this. Yeah. I have an objection. Oh, what is it, Bo? Detective Gumshoe, I wonder if you might recognize this from somewhere. Hey, it's one of those things. The Portal Special Swiss Rolls, right, Bo? Hmm, precisely. In that case, I suppose that you'll also recall the solid hallway bench. Hey, you know what? I think it was probably me that did that. Detective Gumshoe, you know you can't go around dirtying up the courthouse like this. You inconsiderate slovenly pig. Eee! I promise to clean it up later, I swear. Now then, shall we get down to business? How about the fact that you didn't move it even a single step from the in front of that door? If that really were the case, then how were you able to buy a back of Swiss, Swiss rolls? Oh! Furthermore, if you didn't move a single step from in front of that door, how did you manage to get to the bench dirty with your grubby hands? Yo! It appears that Francisca's whip can do more damage than my words alone can. Oh, right. I confess, Paul. I was hungry, so I bought a pack for myself, okay? I thought I'd get chewed out again if anyone found out about me eating on the job. So I didn't want to say anything. Well, unfortunately for you, I saw you do the whole dastardly deed. I clearly saw you buying a pack of Swiss rolls from the vending machine. Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry for lying. But that's all I'm sorry for, you got that? Because I'm not holding anything else back. That last statement. It may sound like it makes sense. However, there's something I don't quite believe about it. I'm sure you're not withholding further information from us. Oh, oh of course not. Uh, I've got nothing else to hide, Bo. Hmm. Oh, if only that were true, Detective Gumshoe. B -b 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 but it is true, Bo. Uh, I swear there's nothing else. Detective Gumshoe, I'm sure you're aware of the price of a pack of Swiss rolls, correct? Huh? Um, uh, remind me again, Bo? Is that a vending machine out in the hallway? He's selling packs of two Swiss rolls for six dollars a pack. Whoa. And yet, according to you, you didn't have any cash on you until you cashed your five dollar annual bonus check. Isn't that right? Whoa. Let me ask then, how did you manage to purchase a pack all by yourself? Can you provide me with a proper explanation to that? Oh, I, I told you, Paula, I bought it by myself, Paul. There wasn't anyone else in that hallway with me. So, there's no one who could have helped me buy it? Wait, don't tell me. You've got some kind of proof that it was someone else in the hallway, don't you? Correct. As if you could. I mean, what are the chances of that? Wait. You do? Of course I do. What? How? What proof do I have that there must have been someone else there in the hallway? I'm saying this is the balloon. No, never mind, bitch. Take that. Hey, they showed that to me not two seconds ago, Bo. Ah, uh, I think you're under the mistaken impression that I bought this pack of rolls. Wait, if you didn't buy it, then that means you must have stolen it, you thief! Oh, I would never do such a thing. All you liars are the same, you start out as thieves, you're under arrest, Bo. I believe you meant to assert that all thieves start out as liars. And in that case, what does that say about you, detective? No! This particular Swiss roll was dropped by a certain someone. Oh! There were two rolls in this package. You ate one of them. But you then gave the other one to a certain person, didn't you? No, 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 no way, Paul. You've got it all wrong. I ate both of them. Uh-oh. She's gonna do it. Caught red-handed, bitch! You're under arrest! <laughs> Look at her! It would appear that we've caught you at last. Hey, don't you dare do anything bad to that girl! It would appear that they do know each other, after all. Okay, why do you like my game so? So, why do you continue to come up, come up to me and kick me? Have I wronged you somehow? I have a name, it's Kay! Kay what? Kay Faraday! Faraday? Maybe perhaps Mr. Faraday's daughter? I'm not a UMK! Ugh, K. You know, uh, good little girls don't kick other p people. 
Especially not hard enough to leave big and nasty bruises like the way you do. Well, then you shouldn't have put Gummy under arrest, mister. Gummy? My guess is that she's talking about Detective Gumshoe. What a cute nickname you've given him. Gummy didn't do anything wrong. Okay. It appears that I will need to speak with her in a bit more detail. Yeah. What the heck? Is she a fucking... Are, are you a monster? Kay is here, heck yeah, Kay! Now then, Kay. <laughs> She's like a stray cat. I wonder if I should feed her something. Um... Why will I get penalized for this? What the fuck? This is empty, right? I can't tell. Okay, I promise to give this to you if you calm down. Oh, that's Westerl. It really belongs to you, though, doesn't it? It really belongs to you, though, doesn't it? Yeah, I was saving it for Daddy. <laughs> like a, oh, I'm just a little guy. Just a little fella. <laughs> oh! Oh my! Your father, he's... Oh, don't you say another word, Paul. She doesn't know yet. Thanks for watching out for me, Gummy. But I... I already know about Daddy. I overheard the guards talking. Oh no! About how Daddy's... He's not here anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't protect him. Okay. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna. No, little baby, cry. It's all right. Let it all out. Your father just passed away, after all. I myself was also involved in a case at this courthouse when I was a young child. Yeah, he is sympathizing. He's like, oh, I remember losing my dear papa. The case in which my father, who was a defense attorney, passed away. All of my dreams of becoming a lawyer were crushed into fine ash on that nightmarish day. Even now, the wound festers deep in the depths of my soul. Ever since that incident, I have dedicated myself to locking away every criminal I can. And now, to have this happen right in front of me. This child, I feel a sudden shared fate, a common bond between us. Miles, I twerk. What sort of gentleman are you? Are you going to just stand there and watch a lady cry? Ah, uh, you're right. Sorry about that. Okay, here. How about we use this handkerchief here and dry your little eyes? Never did kill Bernice to kill themselves. <laughs> well, that might be Callista and she's lovely. <laughs> oh, my that don't blow your nose on that. I feel better now. Thanks. <laughs> my that. That's it. I'm doing it. That's it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Guilty. 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 Francisca, get out of the way. I'm standing in front of you now. Guilty. Wait, can you... Oh my god, Francisca, you're the judge now! Oh my god, I love playing judges. I'm the judge now, bitch. This must be the judge's desk. You can tell by the gavel sitting on top. I had a dream once that I was being squashed from above by this gavel. You're such a weakling, Miles Edgeworth. You have, you have no idea how frightening it was. Well, that was the same thing. Kez guilty of cravat sneezing. <laughs> Hey, okay. are you going to be all right? Oh, look at her. Yep, I'm already all right. Somehow I highly doubt that, but I'm not going to push it. I promised Daddy I'd never cry in front of strangers. And you're a good kid, aren't you, Kay? You always keep your promises, right? <laughs> That's right. Ah, oh, look at her. She's so adorable. Even if I can't see Daddy anymore, I'm still going to keep all my promises. You're a very brave girl, Kay. You're a very good child for keeping the promises you made to your papa. 
Hallie even testifies that she didn't cry. Just for you. That's called perjury. Thank you very much, lady. Ha! <laughs> it's nothing. I am only telling the truth, after all. It would appear that because her father was a respected prosecutor, Francisca is sympathetic to Kay's feelings. Kay, what kind of person was your father? Daddy was a hero of justice. His job was to catch all the bad people in the world. But you, a prosecutor, is a hero of justice, huh? I suppose we're in a sense. I suppose we are in a sense, as we are the ones who seek guilty verdicts for criminals. Plus, you know what? Whenever I came to the crate house, Daddy would buy me my absolute favorite cheese, Swiss rolls. Oh? I want to be a hero of justice someday, just like Daddy. So I've been working really hard. I see. And what have you been working hard on? Oh, I love Alumna. She's such a... Oh, she's so good. I've been working hard to keep all the promises Daddy and I made together. Oh. Okay. Are you a bit of a clown, Kay? A bit of a clown, perhaps. A promise notebook. May I take a look inside, Kay? Sure, okay. It appears to be an exchange diary of sorts between father and daughter. Mr. Faraday's writing conveys a sense of the kind of man he was. This little notebook just might come in handy out later. The clown book. Promises, Kay. Thank you for showing it to me, Kay. I hope you'll continue to work hard and become a hero just like your father. I'm gonna try. Hey, Kay, some detective that catches the bad people, right? That makes me a hero, too! Yeah, you're really cool, too, Gummy. Yeah, aren't I, Kay? What is with the two of them? I hunt down my verdicts of justice, so that makes me a hero, too! Yes, and thanks to your also heroic testimony. He almost painted the detective as a vile criminal and sent him off to jail. Well, I'm really sorry about that. Gummy's not a bad man, okay? But she's gonna fight the judge. That poor judge. He's been treated like a vile criminal rather than a hero of justice. It appears that you and Detective Gumshoe are good friends, Kay. Yeah, we're friends. In that case, would you mind telling me a little more about him? Dick. Gumshoe. So I take it that you ran into Detective Gumshoe earlier. Yep. I was on my way to see Daddy when I saw Gummy standing there. He was standing in the hallway, staring really hard at the vending machine, so I said hi. And when was this? Huh? Oh, um, before everything got crazy. How long were the two of you together? Um, we only talked for a little while. And then we went on our own ways. That's right, pal. Can I only talk for a little while? And that's it. Oh, which means... We've now confirmed that Kay was in the hallway during the recess. The recess, isn't that right? Oh, you got me! I told you to stop pinging on Gummy, mister. Hmm. Very well, then. I'll just have to speak with the good detective in private later. Were you the one who bought this pack of Swiss rolls, Kay? Um, well... I didn't really have a lot of money. And I somehow made a dollar out of all the pennies and quarters I had. But that still wasn't enough, and I really, really wanted one. Come to think of it, she did come and ask me to exchange a handful of, of change for a dollar. And that's when you came and asked me to change your money, correct? Yeah, thanks a bunch for doing that, mister. Sure. But let me ask you, even with that dollar, you still didn't have enough, correct? Um, well, that's why... Hey! If you bully Kay anymore, I'm gonna have to arrest you, pal! Need I remind you that you're the, the one already under arrest? Don't whip Gumshoe! Yo! Come for the K. I sense that Kay is going to be in less than forthcoming with this question. Um, sorry about your roughly thing. Ugh. <sighs> yes, well, now that it's positively drenched in your nasal mucus. Don't worry, Kay. I have a spare. So here, you can have this one. Oh, the cravat, he's giving it to her. Um, but Daddy said, never take things from a stranger. Ah, oh, it's one of the promises you made in your promise notebook, correct? Yeah, 
Look, see? It's right here on this page. Kaz promises to Daddy. Promise one, never take them from a stranger. Promise two, never go anywhere with a stranger. Hmm. Alright then, I'm not giving this to you. I'm merely allowing you to borrow it. You can take it home, wash it nice and clean, and then give it back to me next time we meet. Okay, Daddy never said I can borrow things from strangers. Of course I have a spare, of course I do. Now then, Detective Gumshoe. Oh uh oh I believe it is now crystal clear that you were with little K in that hallway. Oh! K, I told you to stop being mean to Gummy. Oh, hold it. Mad as it was, there is still something you have yet to resolve. I beg your pardon. You still haven't offered an explanation for why that man would lie to us. Uh, that's... well... Gummy, don't tell me you lied for my sake. Hey, don't worry about it, Kay. Everything's gonna be okay. Ah, so that's why. So what was Detective Gumshoe's motive for lying? If you can't explain that, then you ca can't cause it's a perfect investigation. Hm, his reason for lying is very simple. Oh, what? Here is what I believe to be his reason. From simple ob observation of the detective's actions and his interactions with Kay, it's obvious the detective was lying for the young girl's sake. For the young girl's sake. And this piece of evidence will show you exactly why! Oh fuck. Which piece of evidence proves that Detective Gumshoe was lying on account of K? And I'll look through the promise not but first. Promise 3. Always greet people with a smile, even people you don't know. Promise 4. Never cry in front of strangers. Promise 5. Always try your hardest to learn about things you don't understand. Daddy's job is to make sure that everyone follows the rules. Okay, be a good girl and promise it'll keep your promises, promises to me, okay? Love your daddy. Aww. This is like you. It's your daddy just dead. Whoopsie. Uh, lied for K's sake. Well, there was a murder. Take that. Is that good enough? This is that piece of evidence. What are you showing me that for? Doesn't seem to add anything to the conversation. Um, I don't get what you're trying to say with that. Or do you just like showing it off? Take that! This is that piece of evidence! Ah ha ha ha! Do 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 do! It's simple, you see. Take that! Oh. Mr. Firing, Care's promised notebook. How does this explain anything? If you could take a look at this page, it's clearly written that Kay should never take things from a stranger. When Detective Gumshoe heard about that promise, he tried to cover for Kay. What a foolishly foolish fool's fool of a foolish reason for a fool! Oh! Gummy, you lied because of me, didn't you? Because I'm your friend, Kay. That's why. Gummy! At long last, Detective Gumshoe, can you please tell me the whole truth now? I guess there's no being you, huh, pal? Okay, okay, I'll spill the goods. I've been standing guard for a while. I was getting really hungry, and that snack vending machine was taunting me. But all the cash you had on you was five dollars, and that wasn't enough to buy anything, right? After all, the cheapest item in that machine is a six dollar pack of Swiss rolls. Yeah, but then, like an angel from heaven, Kay showed up. <laughs> I was thinking about sharing a snack with Daddy. So I wanted to buy a Swiss roll, but I only had about a dollar in coins. So I pulled my five dollars and her one dollar together, and bought a pack of Swiss rolls together. But I was worried about breaking one of my promises. So then Gummy said, Mr. Friday's one scary guy when he gets mad. But don't worry, you won't get in trouble if I don't tell, right? Besides, you bought it with me. You bought it with me, so you didn't really get it from me, you know? He told me it'd be okay, and he gave me a whole roll to save and give to Daddy. Who knew that Scruffy could be so considerate? 
Indeed. Detective, I take it that you then sat down on the bench and ate the rolls together? Yeah, we split the other rolls and ate it, and ate it right then. The sweet taste of that cake's chocolate. Oh, I'll never forget it as long as I live, Paul. Anyway. Okay, I believe this also belongs to you. Oh, that's from the Bolina path. It's bad manners to leave garbage lying around, Kay. I'm sorry. Well, I guess I can't blame you for not throwing this one piece away. It was sitting high up on a windowsill where you couldn't see it. So just this once, I forgive you. But that bullion. I wanted to surprise Gummy a little, so I popped it on purpose. <laughs> and because of me, Gummy dropped his half of the Swiss roll. Oh no. Oh, wow, you really got me there, pal. So I thought maybe I should give Gummy this other roll. And then I saw you picking on Gummy, mister. So you kicked me, is that it? You sure are a feisty one. I'm really sorry, mister. It's alright. I'm perfectly unharmed. But about this Swiss roll? Would it be alright with you if I held on to it until Detective Gumshoe is cleared of all charges and free to go? Yeah, sure. Just make sure you give it to Gummy afterwards, okay? Of course, I promise. Now then, I believe we've proven beyond the shadow of a doubt that Detective Gumshoe was in the hallway for the entire duration of his duty, which undeniably proves that Detective Gumshoe could not have committed the double murder. Philistor! That voice line always throws me off for some reason. I don't know why. She, she sounds like just so... Chill. Objection! Hey, hold it. Hey. The killer was Gumshoe. <laughs> I don't know why, it's so funny. Actually, it proves just the opposite. Hedgeworth, you've just shown that Detective Gumshoe is the only one who could have committed the crime. Well, what do you mean? Oh my goodness. It's quite rude to eavesdrop, Miss Yu. <laughs> I'm getting lectured on manners by a girl with a penchant for whipping people. <laughs> What? How dare you talk back with such insolence? You're wrong, lady. Gummy's not the bad guy. Oh, and what if we hear? What's a child doing here in a courthouse? Bailiff, please take this child in. What? No. Fuck you. She's running away. Judge, stop this. Oh, Miss Callisto Hugh, that girl is Mr. Faraday's. I know. So what? You think that just because she's the victim's daughter, it literally is care that's lagging this, I swear. Any time that Kay is on screen, it lags. It's like, much better now. She gets to just run wild all around the crime scene. I think it's actually quite dangerous for her to speak, to speak nothing of getting underfoot. I suppose you're right. However, as long as we're in agreement on that point, let's get back to the real issue at hand. Now then, detective, you're in front of the door to lobby number two the entire time, correct? Yeah, but... You see, isn't it obvious that it could only be the detective? He's the only person who could have gone into lobby number two at the time of the murders. Oh, I have no counter-argument to that. Don't worry, I've already put in the necessary paperwork for his formal arrest. Yeah, but the investigation's far from over. Oh, that's right. I was going to speak with you about that. Don't you think it's reckless to talk to the suspect out in the open without a guard? Yeah, I suppose it is. Well, as someone with more experience in law than you, allow me to share something. Always keep a good eye on a criminal, or you may regret what comes of your negligence. Oh, Maz, I can't believe what you're letting this woman lecture you like this. This is unforgivable as a discipline of Onkama, disciple. <laughs> Down, Tigress. Now then, I'll be looking forward to the results of your investigation. So, we're back to square one. Actually, this is our last chance. I can tell that if we fail to solve this case, Detective Gumshoe will be formally charged under all of the circumstantial evidence. This investigation's not over yet. There's still one location we've yet to inspect. Ah, oh, the, the, the defendant's lobby with you, with Callisto. It's where Detective Bad Miss you were at the time of the crime. Lobby number one. To be continued.
Alright, we're definitely finishing this today. So I think we're going to go here, investigate, and then the, this part will be over. This is the third part. At least I hope so. I, I don't think I'm getting it wrong again. That last time I completely didn't realise that the second part ended, I think. I think that's where I mixed it up. So I thought that the third part was just a continuation of the second part, and so I just got my parts completely mixed up. But hey, bad. What is this incredibly overpowering sweet scent? It's... it's... it smells like flowers. Okay, Uncle Bad, is this it? Hmm? Isn't that Detective Bad and K over there? It looks like she managed to escape the bailiff. Hmm, no, that's not quite. Ah, uh, too bad, but it's so pretty. I think you're still a bit too young to be wearing that. But since you found it, I guess I can let you keep it. Thanks, I treasure it always. Those two seem to get along rather well. Oh, here, I've got something else for you. Yay, thank you, Uncle Bad. Oh, he's so lovely. Earlier I ate one of these with Gummy. Gummy? Oh, you mean Gumshoe. Gummies. He was trying to be nice to me because I was going to get in trouble. And then he got in trouble because he lied to protect me. Gummy. <laughs> I know he didn't kill Daddy. <sighs> Don't cry. Friday would be sad if he saw you crying. I'm not crying. Okay. Oh, it's the mister from before and the lady too. Don't you think it would be a good idea to go home for the time being? You're not involved in the investigation, so it's fuzzy best if you do. Um... Actually, I'm Uncle Bad's assistant. Oh, she's a weird girl assistant! Oh my god. I'm so proud of you, Kay. So I'm related to the investigation. Is that so, Detective Bad? Uh, yeah, I guess. What? You were just scolding us like kids to not mess up the crime scene. And now you let this child run free? Why? People are afraid to investigate things outside of the actual crime scene. You also had a few things you wanted to look into. Got a problem with that? Yeah, well... I don't have a problem with that, but I am curious as to what Ms. Yu is looking into. Uncle Bad, I'm gonna go look some else now, okay? Alright, I'm counting on you. Oh, that's right. Hey, mister. Hmm? Yes? What is it? I know Gummy really isn't the bad guy. I mean it. So, please, find the real bad guy, okay? I won't forgive whoever did this, but in the absence of the perfect piece of testimony and evidence, there's no one else who could be the true culprit other than Detective Gumshoe. Hm? She wandered off while I was pondering. <laughs> Is she gone then? Alright, yeah. And that expensive painting is ill-suited to be hanging on the wall of this room. I wonder if a guard detail should be placed on it. Why do you say that? Well, a desperate low-paid detective might make off with it someday. You never know. She may be thinking about hiring a guard. But it's obvious she isn't factoring in that guard salary whatsoever. One of the windows in this lobby is open as well. The air conditioner's working just fine in this room. So why did they open it, I wonder? This television is the same model as the one in Defendant Lobby number 2. Looks like the two rooms are basically the same in terms of layout and supplies. Yes. Hmm, the two rooms are basically the same, huh? Okay. Fuck! I meant I want the plant. This decorative plant. Plant sleeves are shinier than the ones in the plant in lobby number two. That's probably because it's next to the window, so it's easier to photosynthesize. You may be right. Plus, the curtains are always drawn in lo lobby number two. The caretakers of this courthouse don't think enough about the plants, do they? That's because they're the courthouse's caretakers, not a bunch of botanists. What an incredibly strong scent of double tea. I feel that more than being relaxing, the scent may may make one a bit heady instead. You put in a special request for that. No wonder she's so violent, if she's been drinking this stuff the whole time. Neither woman should be allowed to comment on this particular topic, ever. It may not look like much, but I find that ordinary tables like this one are very useful. I think it's time they bought a new one. I wonder if they will replace this table if I hit it enough with my whip. A much too heavy-handed method if I ever saw one. 
Detective Bat, what exactly was Kay searching for? Nothing that concerns you, boy. Oh, then I suppose it has something to do with Kay. It does, because she's Faraday's daughter. Anyway, hurry up and get to the point. I don't have time to waste. Sounds like you'd rather be left alone. I have something I'd like to confirm with you once again. I don't have anything to say to you. Hmm. Be that as it may, we still have questions that we need answers to. Now then, first of all, what is the overpowering smell that is permeating this room? Upon entering this room, I thought I was going to suffocate. Uh, it's that ultra-strong perfume you wear. She spilled some of it. I was having a bad time of it myself. I didn't think twice and opened the window, but uh, that smell's still here. Perfume, huh? Now the sweet scent is in the air is perfume. Well, it's giving off quite a stench. I bet it's some cheap non name brand. She said uh, it's a famous brand from overseas. Uh, it's a knockoff. Yes, definitely a knockoff. No disrespect, but she forced one of those bottles on me. Here, little girl. You can have it. Hmm. I was born for a much more expensive and refined perfume. However, seeing as how you just happen to have a spare, I suppose I'll take it. Ma, as it were, you will hold on to this bottle without fail. Oh. Why can't she ever be honest about her wants? Monsieur's perfume. So now we have the perfume Monsieur wears, which is fantastic. Is that all you wanted to talk about? If so, I'm going back to investigating. Actually, I still have a few other things I wish to inquire about. Chip. So, you're in this room the entire recess? Like I said, I made a call to the precinct to get that big lug down here. But other than that, I was waiting for the recess to end in here. At least your story is consistent. Earlier, you stated, you stated that you were in the lobby with Ms. Yu. Yeah, I ran into her in the hallway. She said she wanted to talk to me about something, so we came in here. Then, what you're saying is that until Detective Gumshoe's arrival, you and Ms. Yu were in two different locations. Hmm, I guess I am. Interesting. Speaking of that lawyer, she seems to have a great dislike for you. Oh! Let's see, Ms. Yu is the sister of the victim of the KG-8 incident. And as I recall, Detective Bad was the lead detective on the case. I wonder if the reason for her dis disdain is simply because you failed to guard Cece. But because you were the lead detective on the case. Uh, you knew! <laughs> I also know that today's trial involving the Kadopian Embassy staff member is being referred to as the second KG-8 incident. Uh. Now then, detective, I believe it's time you're honest with me. And told me the truth behind your real relationship with Ms. You and Ms. Mr. Faraday. And the KG-8 incident. If you already knew that much, I guess it'd be alright to tell you. Now then, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the KG-8 incident. It's not exactly a happy story, uh, other than the people who were just directly involved. You two will be the first to hear what I'm about to tell. The honest truth behind the KG-8 incident. It's a lollipop. Faraday, you and I. As you already know, we three were involved with the KG-8 incident. Faraday and I were originally on the trail of a smuggling ring. You mean the smuggling case involving one of the Amano Group's secretaries? Hmm, <clears throat> that trial was just a front. A facade? Yeah, but the case became tainted. All because the witness who was going to testify about the Amano Group's ties to the smuggling ring, CCU was killed. And what became of the secretary who was arrested? His name was Colin Deveray. To be honest, the guy didn't know a thing about the smuggling ring. But, he confessed to knowing about it anyway. Deveray was probably being intimidated by the big boss man. Just another scapegoat. The boss man of the Amano group? He can't seriously mean Mr. Ernest Amano. That can't be right. It's probably just Detective Bat's personal hypothesis. What is he trying to do, suspecting Mr. Amano being involved with the smuggling? I suppose it would have been quite difficult to secure an acquittal after he confessed. 
but the man who can see you, Manny Cochin, was a completely different person. But since he's already been acquitted one, once of her murder, Mr. Faraday, how could you let, let have him? How could you have let him go? If I remember correctly, I heard that Mr. Faraday had an important piece of evidence stolen from him. Ah, uh, that wasn't Faraday's fault. It was mine. I wasn't vigilant enough. Faraday, Cece, I was supposed to protect them both. Miss Yu did mention that as well. About how Detective Bat was supposed to guard her sister. But even I was supposed to protect them. Ah, I fell into the trap. What kind of a trap? Hmm. <laughs> the holes in this jacket are a testament to that trap. Ah, uh, you mean... You were fired upon? You were shot at that many times in one gunfight. No. Only about half of these are from that case. But... The reason I continue to wear this jacket is to remind myself of the lessons I learned from the KG-8 incident. One of the bullet holes is behind your head, though. You're covering it right now. There it is. I... How did that get there? <laughs> that one I'm curious about. I see. I couldn't protect CCU, and the suspect was found not guilty. We hit a brick wall. As far as the law was concerned. And that's when she came to the courtroom. The victim's sister. And that's when I first met Callisto Yu. About when you first met Ms. Yu, it was on the day the ver verdict of the KG-8 incident was handed down, was it not? Yes. Faraday and I, we apologized to her from the bottom of our hearts. It was all we could do, but... Just saying you're sorry won't bring my sister back, she said. And then she gave me a hard slap across the face. Well, she certainly had a lot of self-control to stop at just a slap. If it was me, not even a hundred lashes would have been punishment enough. <sighs> I suppose not. You said it herself. That she never wanted to see either of us ever again. But after that... You've seen her many times over, correct? Yeah. Faraday and I, even after the KG-8 incident had come to a close, we continued to hunt down the smuggling ring and got involved in a variety of cases. But it was no use. We cracked so many different cases. But the result was always the same. We couldn't find the real mastermind behind the ring. Oh, mastermind, sorry. A bit early for that. Is the ring really that big? It was in the pursuit of the ring that we met you once again. It was during another trial related to the smuggling ring. Scat man's world. Hey, the raid of the work. Welcome in, Meeks. I hope you had a good raid. Uh, shout out at. Does that work? Nice. I hope you had a good time. Playing 1, 2, 3, Slaughter Me Street 2. I hope you had a good time with it. How was your stream? Had a good raid? Did I say I hope you had a good raid? I hope you had a good raid. <laughs> it was during another trial related to the smuggling ring. Faraday was the prosecutor and I as the detective. Oh, a good time. Yeah, sorry. I got words mixed up often. <laughs> My apology. Took to the witness stand. You. She appeared out of the blue as the defense attorney. Her client was related to the smuggling ring, and she was defending them. Yeah. Oh my god, that's that image of Burn. Fuck. <laughs> you was pursuing the ring as best she could as a lawyer. And I think she defended Rel this time, for the same reason. Come to think of it, Ms. Yu did say something to the same effect. Edfon played the challenge mods, and thanks to chat, managed to finish strong with the support. Oh, you managed to finish. Nice. It's a horror game, so people love my screaming. Nice. Sure sounds like a, a, a jolly good time. <laughs> I <laughs> have my own agenda. <laughs> I'm still on the hunt for leads regarding the KG-8 incident, alright? And for that, you've not a single qualm about defending a known killer. 
Don't put words in my mouth. I said no such thing. The only way I had to get close to Mr. Rell was to be his lawyer. I had no intention of covering for him. Ever. I remember you played Spooky's Jumpscare so mentioned someone to read you. How's the history the investigation? So far, it's really fun. A lot of people have been saying this is one of the worst games. Apparently this is like the best case in it. But I've had fun with the whole game so far. It's really quite nice. Ahem. <clears throat> so don't you dare suggest I was going to. Hmm. It doesn't matter what her reason is. Helping a criminal is just despicable. You're so naive, little girl. And I could have stolen this lollipop from you. That's how naive you are. Now how dare you insult the daughter of a von Karma? Just like us, you felt that she had hit the limit of what the lawyer law could do. That's all. The law is merely a tool. There's no limit to it. Only the skill of the craftsman. You two. You're still too young. But one day you'll know what I mean. But enough sidetracking. What matters is that we met you again, in pursuit of the smuggling ring. That's all. So, what was your relation to Mr. Faraday? You haven't seemed to know Kay fairly well. I met him, when he was a rookie prosecutor. Known him ever since. And Kay, I've known her since the day she was born. Faraday and I, we cracked quite a few cases together. Is this case two? This is the fourth case. Hmm, but you two seem to have made no progress at all in the Atagrasu case. Did you send the sussy back a prosecutor to sus jail? So far we sent sussy prosecutor to jail, sussy, sussy uh, flight attendant to jail, and a sussy victim to jail, I guess. Did we touch a nerve? And hopefully sending a sussy defense lawyer to jail, if she is as sussy as I think. <laughs> I only have one thing to say to you. No one knew more about the Yadagrasu than me and Faraday. I missed a lot. Well, good thing the sussy backer report is up to date now with the current sussy backer now, yeah. I always keep my sussy backer report uh, up to date. I think Callisto is the most likely for this case. Because we haven't even seen if What's his face? Manny Cochin has, like, sprites, so I think it's gotta be Callisto. No way it's bad or the judge or anyone. Then me and Faraday. And that's why I was called upon to testify in today's trial. And also because she was, like, alone in the room. She was the last person to see Burn before he died. She must be the killer. To prove that Rel was not the real Yadagrasu. Which I would have done if he hadn't turned around and accused Faraday. After the accusation, I was asked to testify, but this time, to prove or disprove the accusation. But I guess I won't be doing that either. I sense that there's more to that statement than meets the eye. Perhaps a bit more digging into the Atagrasu is what's necessary. You claim to know much about the Atagrasu. Would you care to share what you know with me? Hmm. <laughs> what you two should be looking for right now? It's proof of murderous intent towards Faraday and Rel. I agree, which is exactly why I'm asking you about the Yatagrasu. What? The KG-8 incident, and the second KG-8 incident, both of these cases are tied to the smuggling ring. And in both of these cases, the witness who was to testify about the ring was murdered. However, there's one point in which they differ, and that is the presence of or absence of the great thief Yatagrasu. Mr. Rell claimed to be the Yatagrasu, however, in the middle of the trial, he suddenly declared Mr. Faraday to be the real Yatagrasu. Then, during the recess, they were both killed. Don't you find that to be the least bit odd? My is it worth? Stop beating around the bush and just spit it out already! I believe that there must be some reason that the two men suspected of being the Yatagrasu were both killed at the same time. A reason, huh? I don't think that, um... I don't think Burn is... The Atagrasu. But I don't doubt Kay as well. I think that the title was handed down to her by someone. But I don't know. I don't think Burn was. I feel like someone was. 
that knew Callista maybe? Is Callista the Adagrassi? But does Kay like her? Bad, I guess. Could it be bad? Kinda doubt it. I feel like it's mm, maybe between these two. No, it's many coaching. I, I don't want to think that it's bad, but it could be. I don't know. I don't think that's Burn. I don't know. I also thought that the victim in the last case wasn't one of the kidnappers, and I was completely wrong, so who knows, but... I don't know. A three-legged crow. And I have the same color palette as a crow. Pretty damning evidence if I say so. The reason, huh? And so in order to catch Mr. Faraday's and Mr. Rell's cold-blooded killer, I feel that I need to learn as much as I can about the Yatagrasu. If it'll help you solve this case. Then I'll tell you. I'll tell you the reason why we've never caught the Yatagrasu. Oh, what was that sudden outburst for? You almost made me whip you by accident. No! It still accidentally whipped me anyway. There are three main reasons why the Yatagrasu will always be one step ahead. <clears throat> First, the Anagrasu always knows the exact location of the target object. Second, the Anagrasu always knows exactly how to disarm the security system. The Anagrasu doesn't leave a single shred of evidence behind, ever. I see. So those are the Anagrasu's special traits. It sounds like an incredibly elusive thief. The Anagrasu has never been caught on tape, never tries to draw anyone's attention, and would never be something as low brows commit murder. And that's how I knew that Rel wasn't the real Yadagrasu right away. I don't know, with him describing the Yadagrasu like this, it could be because he is the Yadagrasu and he's like offended. He's like, ah, what the fuck? Or it could be because... I don't know. Now I'm thinking that he might be. Oh, uh, who knows. But you can't use that sort of logic on its own to prove that he wasn't. <laughs> Listen, little girl. I'm not done talking yet. Here. Yeah. What's different about this time was that evidence related to the smuggling ring was sent to the police. And the sender was none other than the one who infiltrated the Kodopian embassy. The Atagrasu. The Atagrasu sent this evidence. Till now, the Atagrasu would always publicize any corrupt dealings through the mass media. But not this time. The evidence this time was something only Faraday and I and the select few others knew about. In that case, how can you be so sure that it was the Yatagrasu who sent it? That's easy. A special card that was only the Yata that only the Yatagrasu uses was attached. That's how I can be so sure. And just what sort of card is it? Here, take a look at this article. Whenever the Adagarasu wants to publicize something, a white card is sent along with the stolen information. But, when we questioned Rell about what was sent along with the wet white card, Rell had no idea what it was. Ah, and that's how Detective Bat knew that Mr. Rell was a phony. Thank you very much. I have a much better understanding of the Adagarasu now. Hmm. Yo, what up? Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes? His Honor would like to transfer the evidence from today's trial over to you. So if you could please head over to the courtroom, it'd be much appreciated, sir. Understood. I'll be there shortly. Detective Bad, what does the law mean to you? Finding the answer to that question is the only reason I'm still alive. I became a prosecutor to find the answer to that question myself, and to play a part in ensuring that all criminals everywhere are found guilty. Hey, yo, what up, bitches? I have evidence. Like a gun. Oh, hi. Oh, it's you, Mr. Edgeworth. Ah. Uh, it appears that his honor is still a bit dis dispirited. For the first time today, I experienced what it's like to stand at the witness stand, even though I was at the defense bench. Oh, I now have a greater appreciation for just how hard it is to give testimony. 
Well, there's no reason for you to be all depressed about it, Yorna. As a judge, no one expects you to think about anything other than the verdict. Francesca, there's no need to further depress his honor. But I'm not trying to, Miles. Your honor. Uh. Your honor, I've come to collect the evidence that was to be transferred to me. He. Your honor, the evidence. I. Your honor. Oh. You. Yes, can I help you? I'd like to collect the evidence now, sir. Your Honor? Do you think you can stay focused long enough to at least do your job? Yes, I'm sorry. And I would, except that the defense attorney is set to arrive. She's busy with the investigation. So let's keep this brief, shall we? Very well. In that case, please confirm that all the pieces of evidence are present. Furthermore, the evidence that was used in the murders of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell are also included. So please go ahead and use them in your investigation into that case. Understood, Your Honor. The pieces of evidence that were used in the murder of those two men. This could be a very good chance for me to find new leads regarding their case. And maybe even something that will finally lead me to the truth. I've placed all of the evidence over at the prosecutor's bench for you. I love that the judge hasn't edged a single there. From the very beginning. Not a single new wrinkle on his face. Not a single, uh, more grey than normal beard. Just always our good old judge. How old is he? We don't have an answer. He is just everlasting. I see. Thank you very much. I will go and confirm that they're all accounted for. I'm looking at Callisto's desk. Ahahaha. <laughs> Wait, I want to look. Please. Evidence that Ms. Yu prepared is just sitting here on this table. You know you can't just walk off with it, right? Of course I do. Mezu must have been caught off guard by her client's sudden accusation. I wonder how she would have defended Mr. Rell in that case if he was still alive. So this is the evidence related to today's Kadopian Embassy trial from Mr. Faraday's bag. He means the evidence bag that was on the table in lobby number two, right? Yes. Finally, we can now take a look at the evidence itself and not just data about them. Let's be sure to thoroughly examine them while we have the time. Agreed. I want to take a good look at all of the evidence from the Embassy murder too. And why is that? Because I still don't fully understand what today's trailer was about. Oh, don't point your crop at me just because you don't know something. And don't you try to order me around just because Papa chose you today. I see someone still sore about not being picked by Mr. Von Karma. It's also real to see the knife up close. So, we have the knife. The gun, an envelope, and what's this organizer doing here? Oh, that's right. I completely forgot to tell you. About what, Your Honor? They found Mr. Friday's personal organizer inside that evidence bag of his. Detective Bad requested it be passed along to you. He said it would help the investigation. Detective Bad said that. What a strange stroke of luck. Well, never to look a gift horse in the mouth. We might as well flip through it, too. I won't rest until it's better if it's been looking cammy. Mr. Faraday's organizer. It appears he was in the habit of using it. It looks like he wrote his strategy for getting Mr. Rell convicted down in here. I've collected the evidence I need to prove that Rell was the killer between the handgun Rell had on him when he was arrested and the surveillance tip. I should be able to prove that he was the one. It appears that Mr. Faraday honestly believes that Mr. Rell was the killer in the case. Sound of handgun going off with uh, superb clarity in the surveillance video also have evidence. Rell is not the real autographic. And it would also appear that he had proof that Mr. Rell was not the Atagrasu. No matter how he may try to play it, as long as it was his key, I can prove he's a pony. If I present it to him in court, it should clear everything up. Hmm. And apparently, he also had a very definitive piece of evidence. It's been a long battle. I hope that this will finally bring it to an end. Yes, I believe that Mr. Faraday was well prepared to discredit any claim Mr. Rell may have made about being the real Yatagrasu. And he had a way to prove that Mr. Rell was the guilty party in the embassy murder. This organizer is a clue straight from Mr. Faraday. I'll have to take my time and give it a thorough read later. Look, there's a picture stuck between the pages here. It appears to be a key. And a rather ornate one at that. Just look at the design on the handle. The craftsmanship is superb. Could this be the Yatagrasu's key Mr. Faraday mentioned in his organizer? The Yatagrasu's key? Detective Bad said something earlier. What's different about this time? Was that evidence related to the smuggling ring? 
was sent to the police. And the sender was none other than the one who infiltrated the Kadapian Embassy. The Yadagrasu. The Yadagrasu sent the evidence? Honestly, I don't remember this part. <laughs> I was kind of just focusing on, on speaking. I wasn't paying much attention to some of it, so I completely missed that. Until now, the Adigarasu would always publicize any- This part I remember, this this specific, specific line, would always publicize any corrupt dealings through the mass media. But not this time. The evidence this time was something only Faraday and I had a select few others knew about. I remember that last part there. Mr. Faraday must must have been trying to keep this secret key safe. As the prosecutor on both the Atagrasu and smuggling ring cases, that's to be expected. So maybe the Atagrasu is Callisto, and Ben was going to prove that in court, and that's why he was killed. I took a quick look through these documents before the trial started. Well, I wasn't even afforded the opportunity to skim it. Hmm, I suppose I should explain it to you then. Yes, you should. Perfectly in its, in its entirety, if you please. On the night of September 8th, an embassy staff member was killed in front of the embassy. The staff member died of shock due to being shot in the heart. Macro was brought in that night as a suspect and thoroughly questioned, because the murder weapon was found on him, to which he was arrested on the spot. Terrell Bad so far is the coolest character, he's so... he's like... a very classic kind of character, you know, the... The gruff detective. But he's, he's really... what a suave guy, exactly. He's so like... he's so schlick with it, you know? <laughs> is Tyrell a pun? Is Tyrell Bad a pun? Well, I know that, <laughs> you know, what one part of that, you know, hmm, I don't know, hmm. Tyrell, I don't know, maybe like tie to the case, Tyrell something. Because the murder weapon was found on him, which he was arrested on the spot. A simpleton of a man, that's what he was. Hmm, perhaps he was the murderer, for the weapon wasn't the only incriminating evidence we had. Also, welcome in, Anka. Mr. Rell was caught in the act of on film by a security camera. He was an even bigger simpleton than I'd thought. I can't believe he didn't notice a security camera. The Kadopian Embassy's security system is supposedly, supposedly very well designed. He may have simply not been aware that there was a camera in the area. So, have you seen the contents of the video for yourself? Yes, the surveillance video the security camera took. It was played during the trial by Mr. Faraday. You can clearly identify Mr. Bell on it. Even the sound the gunshot was crystal clear. So the footage included sound, huh? I don't think I'd ever want to see the moment of someone's death in real life. Me neither. This gun, it was originally used to kill the Kadopian Embassy staff member. When the crime was reported, the responding police found Mr. Rell still holding it, which led to his immediate arrest. And then this gun took the original shooter's life. How ironic. Indeed. There doesn't seem to be anything else we can learn from this piece of evidence. It's the knife where... Is that knife... Am I crazy? No. Is it? No. That knife isn't the key, right? I can't tell what this is where. We can check the knife. Nah, it looks to be completely made of a different material, never mind. I just saw like a brown handle and was like, maybe? <laughs> it's the knife that was used to kill Mr. Faraday. Who would have thought that such a beautiful piece of art could be used for such a cruel act? And it's never crossed your mind that you use your writing crop for the wrong purpose. Hmm, that's odd. What is it? Mr. Faraday didn't mention anything about a knife in his organizer. This case is way longer than I remember. I, it's actually quite longer than I was expecting, because I knew that there were four parts. This is the third one, we're already four hours in. Still positive that we're going to finish with five or six hours. But like, pretty long. I was expecting it to be... Not done about now, but done in like, maybe five hours, five and a half. Doesn't look like it at this point, unless it's the, to be continued happens like now. That certainly is odd. The weapon that was used to kill the Dobbian em Embassy staff member was the gun. But if that's the case, then where did the knife that was used to murder Mr. Faraday come from? Isn't it obvious? It was brought into the courthouse by Mr. L. Exposition the case, yeah. <laughs> Is that the only logical conclusion, right? No, because it's not that easy to smuggle a weapon like that in here. Every person who enters the courthouse doors is checked thoroughly for contraband. 
Furthermore, the suspect was handcuffed, making it impossible for him to bring a knife as large as this inside. In that case, how do you suppose that knife ended up inside the courthouse? I need to think carefully here. There's nothing related to the knife written anywhere in Mr. Faraday's organizer. However, it is a fact th that this knife came from Mr. Faraday's evidence bag. Conversely, there's one item listed in Mr. Faraday's organizer that no one's going to have seen today. Okay, so it is the key. So in order to solve this mystery, I believe I will need to take another good look at the evidence. Miles Edgeworth, can I take the fact that you have yet to answer me? To mean that you don't have an answer for me? Actually, I do know the answer, Francesca. What? Is it now? What is it? One of the pieces of evidence that we have been holding has been hiding a secret of its own. And it was through this piece of evidence that the knife was brought into the courthouse. See, so that's something to do with the key, but I don't know if... I don't know what. This Yatagrasu's key, Mr. Friday mentioned in his organizer. I still think this case should have been the first. Yeah, I can see that. I, I could see this case being a first case. Especially with, like, Von Karma as your mentor. I heard you say you thought the key was the knife, and my brain exploded, it clicked so fast for you. Was that it? It's just that it is the knife? I just saw a brand handle and was like, oh, is that the same? <laughs> this Yatagrasu's key. Mr. Faraday mentioned in his organizer. This is how the knife was brought into the courthouse. You're not making any sense, Mads Edgeworth. Hm. We just need to look a bit closer, Francisca, to see what I mean. Don't the color and or or ornamentation of the keys handle remind you of anything? Well, there we go. He had the same thoughts as me. One, it does all the explanation e exposition needed for the game. Two, Young Edgeworth being fresh, fresh as an analogy for a first entry to the game and the tutorial. Three, chronologically first. That's fair. I was thinking, like, I wonder how the first case is gonna... Because, you know, with, with Phoenix Wright games, every single first case has some sort of reason for why it's explaining everything, you know? Like, the first case in A1, first other case, first case in uh, uh, Justice for All, it was, um, he had amnesia, first case in Trials and Tribulations, it was Mia, Rookie, uh, first case of Apollo Justice, Rookie, uh, first case of Dual Destinies, Rookie, and first case of Spirit of Justice is in a new l country with new laws, whatever. So I was like, what's gonna happen with Edgeworth? Like, is he also gonna get, like, fire extinguished and have amnesia? But no, he's just like, no, I just know everything. So it would have it would have actually been this bit of fourth case to be honest it transitions really good from PS3. I do agree with that too, yeah. Don't the colour and ornamentation of the keys handle remind you of anything? As they do remind me of his knife. Very good. Both the Yatagrasu's key in this photo and the murderer's knife. Have this very unique design on their handles. I feel like this case doesn't work as a first case, but young Edgeworth and another case would have worked as a first. Yeah. Furthermore, even though Mr. Faraday mentions the Atagrasu's key, the only object we found at the crime scene was the knife. You don't seriously mean to say... It appears that you've finally caught up. And yes, I do mean to say that these two pieces are in fact one and the same. Damn, I was right. But that's impossible. Even if that is what you believe, we should still investigate this possibility. Yeah. Now then. Let us examine this knife in a little more detail. Damn, I just got it. Now definitely it could be heavy to have this next to the tutorial. That's the reason I think it would be harder. But the story beats and elements I feel like should be introduced here. Yeah, that makes sense. It's the weapon that was used to kill Mr. Faraday. The handle and the blade itself both have beautiful designs worked into them. Look, there's even a flower-shaped design in this gold section here. If this hadn't been used as a tool for murder, I'd want it for myself. She seems to be drawn to the embellishments. Too bad this isn't mine to give. Is this the same? Yep. Oh, here it is. I can't believe it turned into a key. To think there was such a trick to this thing. So the weapon used to kill Mr. Faraday is actually the key the Yatagrasu stole. This piece of information is more critical than anything we've learned up until now. 
Frankly, I'm shocked. Mr. Faraday only mentioned the key aspect of this piece of evidence in his organizer. It's possible that even he had no idea that he was hiding a knife blade inside. But if that's true, then only someone who knew about the key to the knife trick could have killed Mr. Faraday. Even among us, I mean uh, law enforcement, this key was top secret. We're looking for someone who knew even more about the key than even Mr. Faraday. Meaning that the only person that could be is the one who sent the key in the first place. The great thief Yatagarasu. Uh, then maybe Mr. Hell really was the Yatagarasu. And he was the one who killed Mr. Faraday. Isn't that one possible scenario? No, not really. Especially since Mr. Faraday was absolutely convinced that Mr. Hell was not the Yatagarasu. Besides, as Detective Bud said earlier, but when we questioned Rell about what was seen along with the white card, Rell had no idea what it was. I see. All right then. I guess the person who knows the trick behind this key is someone else, and that person is the real Yatagarasu. So it's probably Callisto then. Hmm, it seems that this key is truly the key to solving this case. Because ah, 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 ah. I was thinking, what if the Adagrassi, because... What if it's more like an organization than just a person, you know? But I don't see Bad and Callisto teaming up, really, you know? That's odd. My short one piece of evidence. And the piece that's missing is the surveillance video that it was put in court. Is a surveillance video? How could a piece of evidence just disappear? Oh, where did it go? The video is showing the moment in which Mr. Rell committed the murder. How could it have gone indeed? Are you done with your inspection of the evidence? You've been taking a fucking ages. It was like 20 minutes. I said, oh, you're sure you can take a quick peek. If, if you wanted to be of associate. And then you took like 20 fucking minutes. What the fuck? Dude. Yes, I'm finished. However, Your Honor, I'm missing a single piece of prosecutorial evidence. Your Honor, are you de derelict in your duties? What? No, I dare not lick my duties. What do you take me for? No, Your Honor, the most important piece of evidence in today's trial, the surveillance video, is not amongst the evidence you laid out for me. Hmm. But I brought Mr. Faraday's whole bag with me from the crime scene. Callisto stole it when she killed him. Maybe the tape is still somewhere at the crime scene. There's something wrong here. Something about this missing piece of evidence. It would appear that for me to find the answers I seek, I would have to pay another visit to the scene of the crime, defendant lobby number two. Lang? Who's this bitch? I was about to say there's a long part, but then I got completely sidetracked. Hmm? That's Detective Bad, but who is he with? Look, their voices are quite similar. I've never seen that officer before. So, did you find it? No, not yet. And I've looked everywhere. I see. Well then, please continue with the search. Understood. I'll continue the search. Heh, <laughs> so you're the one running this show. Prosecutors like you shouldn't even be allowed at crime scenes. How dare you! Just who do you think you are? What a chad. <laughs> Comes in, tells the prosecutor he's a bitch and leaves. What a fucking chad. <laughs> what was that all about? And who was that man just now? Whoever he was, I've never seen a more impudent officer in my life. Does he even know that we're standing right here behind him? As a mirror, dumbass. I know you're standing right behind me. What do you want? Ugh. It looks like you were paying attention after all. Of course I was. I have eyes in the back of my head. Ah, so that mirror isn't for vanity's sake. It's for him to keep an eye out on who or what is behind him at all times. So tell me, Detective Bad, who was that rude man just now? And the guy came here. From the Republic of Zheng Fa to study. He's Agent Lang. Right, something about Lang that I wanted to say, by the way. I mentioned this very, very briefly last case, but I think that Lang maybe can't read English. Because every time that he was handed anything with writing on it, he, he always asked for Sheena to read it out. And then Sheena did pass him, like, scrolls, but all of those were, like, 
uh, Lang Z says, uh, fuck bitches, get money. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I feel like all of those were probably written in the made-up language of Zheng Fa. So I feel like you might not be able to read English, and that might be a big plot point. And if it is, I'm gonna feel like a big brain genius, and if not, then that's just a random thing that I thought maybe it could be something. He's Agent Lang. He's trying everything he can to revive the lost honor of his family. He's traveling the world to study different philosophies of detainment from scratch. By visiting various police departments around the world, he has a lot of dedication. He's still just a rookie cop, but I sense a strong grudge of some sort from him. The guy is more youthful than Gumshoe, even if he is rude. Well, he sure has a lot of guts to come up to this country and give prosecutors a hard time. I agree. However, I can think of one young lady that statement also applies to. Anyway, what was that agent looking for, Detective Bad? Earlier, that little girl was poking around in lobby number one as well. Like I said before, it's got nothing to do with the two of you. Hm. I highly doubt that it has nothing to do with me. Hm. Fine. If this is the game I must play, then I will take this opportunity to draw out what he's been hiding and happened in this room straight from him. You what up? Was this table here all along? Was this table here all along? I suppose so. Objection! Well, clearly it's out of its place. When you take this off into consideration, that table is much too tall. I get the impression that you were not meant to be used as a set, Francisca. Uh, I, I knew that. Oh, it seems she's lost her calm sense of judgement and her eager eagerness to defeat me. No, I think that's it. We just have to talk to him. Earlier, you were in lobby number one, and now you're here in lobby number two. You're quite the busy man, Detective Bad. Multiple returns to a crime scene brings about success. That's what we detectives say. I see. In that case, you wouldn't mind if I asked about what happened again, correct? Uh, I don't have anything left to say to you, boy. Uh, boy? You'll see, I will draw my answer from you one way or another! Stop making fun of me! I don't like when people yell! Would it kill me to help us e even a tiny bit in our investigation? I gave Faraday's notebook to the judge earlier. That's help enough, don't you think? Ah! Uh. Please, we are asking you for just a bit more of your cooperation. Don't push me, kid. Well, I'm going to. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I'd like to ask once again about what happened around here at the time of the crime. I refuse to answer. Any more investigating you do would be a waste of time. Besides, how am I supposed to answer questions about things I don't know about? Things you don't know about? But aren't you supposed to be to know everything? He should. Wait, is it possible? Maybe he doesn't know about the trick behind that piece of evidence. I should try showing it to him. The key. It may prove to be the key to getting some answers from this or the bad. Wait, that might not be it. Oh yes it is. Detective Bad, did you know of the existence of the item in this photograph? Hmm, <laughs> of course I did. It's my job to know everything related to the Yadagurasu case. In that case, let me ask you something. Did you know that the knife that killed Mr. Faraday and this Yatagrasu's key are one and the same? What? That's impossible. It looks like he didn't know after all. This piece of evidence, which we call the Yatagrasu's key, is actually a well camouflaged knife. <laughs> Mr. Faraday was planning to use this Yatagrasu's key to prove that Mr. Rell was not the real Yatagrasu. Isn't that correct? I guess so. So yeah, the Adagrasu is... Telesto, not bad. However, Mr. Faraday had no idea that it was in fact a knife. Yeah, I have to admit, neither of us knew that fact. And if neither of us knew, then no one in law enforcement knew either. How do we miss something as big as this? I noticed that since a little while ago, you appear to be searching for something. I presume that this key is what you were searching for. Uh, yeah, that's right. And why were you searching for it? Because I promised Faraday 
I promised that I'd protect that key with my life. But after he was killed, the key disappeared from Faraday's evidence bag. Who would have thought that the key is what took Faraday's life? Detective Ban, now that we may find the truth, please testify for me once more. All right. But it doesn't matter how many times I tell you about what happened. Nothing will change. Fuck, I didn't mean to do that. Detective Bad, I ask that you please testify once more. About what happened in lobby number two, and what you experienced in lobby number one. My answer is still the same. And this is the last time I'm gonna do this. That's fine, because I only need this one last time to clear everything up, and find the truth behind this case. I was in lobby number one, talking with you. We were talking about some trivial things. I heard the gunshot right before the trial was about to reconvene. When we heard it, you and I immediately dashed out into the hallway together. I saw Gumshoe goofing around there, and then we all ran into lobby number two. It sounds like the exact same story he told us before. Indeed. However, I feel that we've yet to draw out all the information that we can. <clears throat> I was in lobby number one, talking with you. Talking with me? <laughs> Why did Miss Yu choose lobby number one? Answer me! Who knows? She just said that she had something she wanted to talk to me about. And we walked into lobby number one together. That's all. So, his answer remains the same as before, I see. We were talking about some trivial things. I was hoping you could expand on what exactly we're discussing with Miss Yu. Trivial stuff. It was nothing important. That's for me to decide. Alright, I suppose that's for him to decide. Moving on then. <laughs> I heard the gunshot right before the trial was about to reconvene. Until you heard the gunshot, did you notice anything else that was out of the ordinary? I didn't hear any other strange sounds. Till that gunshot. If the gunshot detective Bat heard was really the one from the murder, that would give that other piece of evidence an entirely different meaning. I ask that you please amend your testimony with that statement just now. Sure. I didn't hear any other strange sounds. Till that gunshot. No other strange sounds? Detective Bat. You honestly don't remember hearing anything else. Yeah. Is it possible you were so involved in your conversation that you missed something? I've been a detective for a long time, and even if I were involved in something. I've got quite the habit of keeping tabs on everything that goes on around me. If there had been some other strange sound, you can be sure I would have heard it. Hmm, I suppose with this detective that's probably very likely. So the gunshot. When we heard it, you and I immediately dashed out in the, into the hallway together. And why did the two of you dash out into the hallway straight away? Because we clearly heard the sound of a gunshot. And we knew it came from somewhere nearby. And how did you know that it was a gunshot? <laughs> in my line of work, you hear enough of them to know. I suppose it's only natural for detectives to know what a real gunshot sounds like. But, given the circumstances... The only person I could think of whose life would be in danger was Faraday. And that's why I ran out into the hallway right away and headed for where he was. You can't really see his mouth when he has the lollipop in his mouth, but when he does, you can see his really, really, really red tongue. <laughs> so Gumshoe goofing around there, and then we all ran into lobby number two. Detective Gumshoe was there in the hallway. Yeah. Why didn't you attest to that earlier? When I saw Gumshoe, it was after I'd heard the gunshot. Having seen him then didn't change the fact that he still could have done the deed. Ugh! It sounds exactly like what Detective Bat told us before. However, is there something in particular we should be asking the detective about? There just might be. No one knew that the knife is actually the autographer's key. Reflecting on that, perhaps there are other things we that we now know, but Detective Bat doesn't yet. Yes, that should be my angle of attack. 
Wait, what? That isn't what I was thinking about, so one second. Didn't hear any other strange sounds. Did they mention something about the knife makes a strange sound when it's... It's this demo for sure. Okay, no. Good. Let me present what I immediately thought, because I'm going to be honest. I thought it was just the balloon. Okay, yeah. That threw me off when you mentioned the Riyati Grassu's key. I was like, what? Does, like, the knife make a noise? There we go. <laughs> I got thrown off by the, by the in-game hints. <laughs> Detective Bad, does this balloon fragment remind you of anything? It's the same color. It's the one Kay was holding. Oh, so you knew about Zepticoat's balloon? Yeah, I was sitting with it up in the gallery. During the recess, just before we split up, I filled that balloon up for her. Well, as you may have already surmised, this piece did indeed come from Kay's balloon. So, what about the balloon? I wonder if you might remember hearing this balloon pop at some point. What are you getting at? Hmm, this fragment was found in the hallway, right in front of lobby number two. Furthermore, it was the sound of this balloon popping that the judge mistook as a gunshot. Oh? So the sound that the judge heard was not actually a gunshot, huh? On top of that, his honor said that he heard the balloon pop. About 20 minutes before the trial was to reconvene. Yes, which means that his honor heard the balloon pop in the hallway. When you were in lobby number one, Detective Bad. And if you were in lobby number one at that time, you were close enough that you should have heard the balloon popping as well. So? Oh, don't give me a so! We just proved that there's a flaw in your testimony. The crackling of the truth is louder than the sound of your sweet naivete cracking. Yeah, you can see his tongue. I don't know why I'd like only just noticed that, but it's like there's so little color to him that just the lollipop in the tongue is like so much. And since you kids don't seem to know, let me fill you in on something. Did you ever stop to think why the doors and walls of this place seem so rugged? And that's because they were designed to keep secrets from being leaked. So how did you hear a gunshot? Hold it! What is that supposed to mean? The doors and walls are super thick. The window panes are double layered. To top it all off, even the curtains are made of a special sound absorbing material. Then you mean... Since I was shut up inside lobby number one, there's no way I could have heard that sound. N no Gah. I knew that that's what he was going to say. Then that means that Scruffface's testimony is completely useless. If the room is soundproof, then of course he wouldn't hear any sound of the struggle. No. That's also why it's only natural that I didn't hear the balloon popping. Now do you get it, kids? Miles, I thought we were the ones to be... Finding flaws in his logic. Not the other way around. The other way around? It's not possible to hear the sound of a balloon popping if one were in, in lobby number one. However, if we examine this situation in reverse, the person standing in the hallway should not be able to hear the real gunshot either. And yet, Detective Gumshoe claims to have heard it while he was standing in the hallway. Detective Bad, if that is the case, how exactly did you hear the gunshot? What do you mean, how? I just did. Hmm, it would appear that you have yet to realize the contradiction in your own words. Oh? How oh, so? If the rooms are as soundproof as you say they are, then how did the sound of the gunshot enter your ears? I'm wondering whether when the window's open, is that it? Ugh, I see what you mean. I guess I'm more out of it. I'm Faraday's murder than I had thought. Which means what exactly, Miles? In the end, what does it all boil down to? It boils down to this. There must be a reason. As to how Detective Bad and Gumshoe heard a gunshot, they theoretically couldn't have. It looks like we need to examine the state of the crime scene again, huh? Huh? The state of the crime scene? Oh wait, can it be... It's that ultra-strong perfume you wears. She spilled some of it. So yeah, it was the window. Oh! And way too noisy! Ah, is this a surveillance video? How could a piece of evidence just disappear? Where did it go? 
Oh! So she played the tape. And that's the gunshot noise. Oh ho! Oh ho 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 ho! Wait, so. I'm assuming it's these two and then those two. It's simply not possible for the killer to escape through barred windows. And yet the fragrance of the perfume managed to escape from defendant lobby number one. Of course, incorporeal things can move freely through these open barred windows. Y yeah, well done. What? Not exactly a shining example of the perfect line of logic. Bitch man? Oh, I guess it's these two. But still, the evidence was in the television. Bitch man. Now then, what else besides a smell can go both in and out of an open barred window? The answer is sound. So no matter how careful the killer was, if the windows were open, the jig would be up. And since the windows in both defendant lobby number one and the hallway were open, that explains how the sound of a gunshot could be heard in both locations. Where did it originate from? The missing piece of evidence is a video. That shows the moment in which Mr. Rail killed the embassy staff member. The sound of the gunshot left quite an impression on me when it was played during the trial. The video should have been returned to Mr. Friday's evidence, evidence back for the recess, and brought back here. If it disappeared after that time, then it's possible that this tape is still here in this room. Eureka! The evidence that the missing evidence created for me is the gunshot sound that no one should have been able to hear in the first place. Niles, what have you been thinking about? Stop wasting time thinking and let's start looking again. It's not a waste of time to think, for I figured out where we should look. And where would that be? I believe we should examine the television. The TV? Well, you kids have fun. Go ahead and examine whatever you like. I'll put on Teletubbies for you. Maybe My Little Pony. My Little Pony? What's that? Oh, you haven't heard? Come back in a few years. Come dress and tell a little little little. The window is wide open. The scent of flowers is being blown in from the outside. I think it softens the heavy air in here somewhat. Hmm, windows in both lobby number one and number two were opened. Maybe they were trying to air out the room, just like in lobby number one. Or maybe they sought to ease some of the tension to the, from some fresh air. With Mr. Friday and Mr. Rell in the same room, I imagine the latter to be the case. But was there really a need to open the window just for that? Earlier, when Detective Gumshoe touched this, it made a most terrible racket. You mean when Scruffy turned the television on, right? Actually, come to think of it, I don't think Detective Gumshoe actually touched the, the, touched the television at all. Furthermore, it seemed more like when a video feed suddenly stopped. Stops. At least it did to me. I wonder why that is. It's a video player, and there seemed to be a videotape inside. It looks like it. The tape must have stopped on its own when it reached the end. This tape? Could it not be the missing surveillance tape? I suppose, but... Detective Bad, would it be alright with you if I verified the contents of this video? Sure, knock yourselves out. Alright, then let's rewind this and see what we have. If I remember correctly, the footage of Rel killing the Embassy staff member should be at about the 30 minute mark from the start of the tape. Understood. This should be about right. Now then, let's see. Yeah, uh, this is. This is the footage of Mr. Rel shooting the Embassy staff member. I knew it. The missing piece of evidence in the surveillance video was here all along! The sound? The sound effect played twice! What's the meaning of this? It appears that Detective Bat has figured out the true source of the gunshot he heard. With this, I think we can figure out the trick behind this double murder. He 
you means that you figured it all out, Zen. Yes. All I have to do now is show what the gunshot detective's button. Really? You're going to pretend like we don't haven't figured it out? Fine. In that case, show me what you've deduced. Now to show what the gunshot detective's butt. Really? Fuck, there's nothing unusual, dumbass. So someone left his video on plays the whole time, huh? I suppose so. How's that only killing? There's hardly a sound on the rest of the tape. Then why did the television make that loud noise when Scruffy got near it? That's probably because the tape had run out and stopped its playback. It's not just bad luck. That detective has the worst timing in the world, too. Someone purposefully left this video on play. The question is why? Just as with the spilled perfume in lobby number one, if the windows were open, that piece of evidence and sound would also dissipate out. Now to show what the gun... Yeah. Can I exit? I can, okay. Go ahead and do your investigating. What? Just don't mess up the crime scene. You hear me, boy? Is it? I can't logic. What is happening? Francisca? Am I? I'm crazy. Oh, deduce! I'm confused though how I'm supposed to... Do I just go, yep, the video tip was... Do I... It came out, you can hear it? That was really odd, like, I, I think we could have figured it out. The window was open and the video was playing, like, we got it. <laughs> If the door and windows to the crime scene, namely this room that we were in, were closed, the killer could have used the gun and no one would have been the wiser. That's true. This courthouse does seem to be well designed for such a thing, as it were. However, what happened in reality was... Detective Gumshoe, Detective Bad, and Ms. Yu. All three of them heard the gunshot. Well, the windows in lobby number one, number two, and the hallway were open. So naturally, the people in those locations could hear it. Ah, but then why would the criminal open the window in the first place? To allow the gunshot to be heard, I suppose. Correct. That's the only logical conclusion we can draw from this. But why was that necessary in the first place? Francesca, do you really need to explain this badly? How about the real answer, Miles? I demand satisfaction. Very well. I believe that the killer wanted to manipulate our perception of a certain fact. Oh my god, what was it? I figured this out literally as soon, as soon as the ballistic markings were shown. That, not the ballistic markings, sorry, the gunpowder burn was shown. Like, oh my god. The killer wanted to fabricate the time of death to their precise wishes. And they used the gunshot in the surveillance video to do so. It is pretty obvious as well. So that's why the tape was left running. You mean, the gunshot I heard was from this video? Are we just establishing? I, I'm so confused. <laughs> Why? Am I crazy? Was this the most obvious thing in the world? I... Okay. Yes, which means that the murders really occurred at an earlier time than we thought. Ugh. It must have been during the recess, but before Detective Gumshoe was on guard duty. Somebody was no alibi for that period. Come on! I figured this out the moment that Callisto mentioned that she was alone. <laughs> And plan this crime out in advance. That person is the real killer. That was such an odd section. Miss Redworth, random bailiff. Yes, what is it? Miss Yu is asking for you. She's in the courtroom. Are we going to confront her in the courtroom? Or oh, this is going to be sick? She said she's identified the murderer, but then she wants to clarify something. It looks like Miss Yu is still investigating something. Understood. Please tell her that I will be right over. I'll come along. I want to hear what she has to say. It would appear that the time has come to uncover the truth. Ooh, heck yeah, final part. 
looking at fucking. Oh my god. If I'm right about Shino Alba or Bo, even, would be even better, then I've guessed every single killer that I know in this entire game. Because Lance, I didn't even know that guy, so, you know. Can't really help me for not knowing that he was the killer until. You know. But other than that, everyone else, I just fucking. Bam! Y'all kinda saucy. Killer. Why is this so slow? Is K here? Is, is that why it's lagging? Oh my fucking god, I knew it! You fucker! You're lagging my game! K! Stop it! What are you doing here? You're lagging my game! Leave, please! Why does she lag my game so much? Oh, hello, mister. I'm just investigating. Oh, I can't stay mad at you. If you were pearls, I'd be fucking pissed, though. <laughs> but the object you're holding for has already... Okay. Don't mind him. Please continue with your investigation. Okay. You got it. Oh, thank you. Please leave. I, I, I love you to pieces. You're amazing, but please, Kay, I do not want this lag. Detective Bad, haven't we already found what you were looking for? If it means I can keep her in the dark just a little longer, any little task will do. Oh, you're more sympathetic than I thought. Hmm. He was walking into that. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> he kept walking into it. I've been waiting for you, Edgeworth. I've also been waiting for the moment in which we can finally lay this case to rest. <laughs> <laughs> the moment in which we can finally lay this case to rest? Wasn't that when he when he, we placed Detective Gumtro under arrest? <laughs> I think we've more than solved this case already. <laughs> Don't you? We'll see. It all depends on whether or not your logic holds. Oh, I see we've never a viewer in the gallery. And why even Mr. Bad is here? Uh, you're in the gallery. I'm hardly just a bystander. I have a duty to see this case through to the end. No, no matter how it turns out. Oh, is that right? Anyway, I thought you might like to hear what I've s slaved away to find out. I've taken statements on every single person's movements during the time when our suspect was in the hallway. I also confirm that there is no possible route of escape from lobby number two. Therefore, the killer must without a doubt be... Detective Gumshoe. You sounds, sounds kind of sussy though, yeah. A little something is, um... You know. Also, her earrings are skills of justice. That's nice. And that's all you have? Yeah, that's all there is to my conclusion. And this case. Sorry, but I beg to differ. In a trial, there's always time for a rebuttal. And we are standing in a court of law. It'd be more than appropriate to follow the rules of court in, in this case, don't you think? <laughs> oh, absolutely like a rookie to think such a thing. But alright, I'll play along and give you a proper testimony. If my logic is correct, then I've already won. All I have to do now is to prove it by showing who the real killer is. I, can't I just present a profile and be like, hey, this is the killer. It's you, bitch. Everyone, Sans? Sans Undertale? Uh, uh, oh my god, it's Sans Undertale! From Undertale! Uh, uh, Let's use sauce. Uh. What the fuck? Everyone, Sans the suspect, has an alibi for when the gun went off. Furthermore, the heroes around the crime scene have all been thoroughly investigated, right? They also confirmed that there is no possible escape room from lobby number two. Which leaves us with one unshakable conclusion. That Detective Gumshoe is the killer. <sighs> now that you have your testimony, I expect a good rebuttal, Edgeworth. Hmm, but of course. There's no need to confront her logic head-on right now. I should instead focus on drawing out any trump card she's left she had to first leave. You sussy baka. Everyone, Sans Undertale, has an alibi for when the gun went off. Hold it! Sans Undertale? From Undertale? The suspect. But I thought that Detective Gumshoe's alibi has always been proven. <laughs> Are you joking, Edgeworth? I assure you that there's no joke. Look, I know you heard from the judge earlier. 
that the detective was in the hallway with Mr. Faraday's daughter, eating a Swiss roll. Yes, that is correct. But see, that was 20 minutes before the real gunshot went off, right? And the problem is, there's no one else who could corroborate what he did since the snacking. Hmm, I see she's done a research well. Which means that I should focus on drawing out whatever Trump catch is withholding. Furthermore, the errors around the crime scene have all been thoroughly investigated, right? Whether they've been thoroughly investigated or not is for me to decide. <laughs> the scrunched eyebrows and the lines on your forehead are back! Anyway, even if you believe it hasn't been exhausted, the crime scene, lobby number two, has no way out other than the hallway Detective Gumshoe was standing in. And because he claimed to be there, that makes him the only possible suspect. Get his ass, Callisto. Welcome back, Astra. Callisto's fucking absolute slaying. We love her. But isn't it also possible that someone escaped through a window and into the garden? Edward, shut up. <laughs> That's the first place everyone looks, silly. The police aren't a bunch of lazy bums. They looked into every possibility, you know. Isn't that right, Mr. Bad? Yeah. There wasn't a scrap of evidence to suggest someone used one of the windows. There also weren't any footprints or anything in the courtyard garden. I suppose they really did check everything that could be relevant to the case. <laughs> I also confirmed that there's no possible escape route from lobby number two. Are you absolutely positive that there are no possible... The, 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 the. Are you absolutely positive that there are no possible routes of escape? Of course, I'm sure. And why are you so certain? She's about to laugh. No, never mind. I keep on like trying to take a deep breath so that I can do a longer laugh, because holy fuck, she catches me by surprise. This is a courthouse, the place where criminals are brought to be judged. If there were an escape route, I'm sure every criminal would be using it to escape. It's just common sense. <laughs> <laughs> My Etchworth, I suggest you use a bit more of it in the future. <laughs> Which leaves us with one unshakable conclusion that Detective Gumshoe is the killer. You may think it's unshakable, but to me there are still too many unanswered questions. For example, who was it that placed the gun in Mr. Friday's hand? <laughs> but you're the only one still wondering that. Detective Gumshoe probably had no idea which hand Mr. Friday used to ride with. Even if you know someone, it doesn't mean you'll know which hand they ride with, right? I mean, I certainly don't care about that sort of thing. <laughs> Which means you're the killer! Bitch! Fuck bitch! <laughs> I'm not about to let her get a rise out of me with such a flippant statement. Hmm, I suppose you've really reached the end now. I already have my trump card ready. All that remains is to play it. But before I do, I think I should inquire into a little something about her argument. You said earlier that you confirmed the alibis of every person other than the suspect. However, I don't recall either Francisco or myself speaking with you about the subject. Ah, uh, but there were witnesses. For you, there's your mentor who gave you an alibi. I see. As for the little missy... She came to the courthouse during the recess. <laughs> and was stopped by a security guard at the door to the hallway. She gave him quite a whipping for that, or so I heard. <clears throat> I'm the daughter of Manfred von Karma. And I will not be possibly stopped by a guard, or a bailiff, or anyone else. Wait, so basically the only reason Francesca bothered to show up today was because she found out that I was to be the replacement prosecutor. By the way, Miss Yu, what about everyone's alibis before Detective Gumshoe was assigned to guard duty? What about them? Have you looked into what people were doing during the span of time? <laughs> what kind of idiot do you take me for? It doesn't matter when the killer went into lobby number two. From the time we heard the gunshot, to the time Mr. Bad and I arrived on the scene as we dashed from lobby number one, the only person who could have committed the crime was Detective Gumshoe. Yes, let's talk about you and Detective Bad who heard that gunshot, shall we? I suppose that if we go by your logic, then Detective Gumshoe is the only one. However, what if the crime had occurred? At an entirely different time than when that gunshot you heard went off. What then? <coughs> that gunshot was a trap meant to manipulate our perception of when the crime took place. Sadly, your explanation's very lacking, Edworth. The gunshot we heard in lobby number one. Can you explain how that could have been fabricated? Take that. Yes. That tape. Yes, it's exactly what you think it is. This is the surveillance tape of Mr. Rell, the prosecution. This is the surveillance tape of Mr. Rell, the prosecution presented in today's trial. Honestly, 
this was a very easy case. I don't feel like this even had to be four parts. I feel like this could have been done in two. I feel like this could have honestly been a first case. It was it was pretty obvious that just Callisto did it. <laughs> Maybe that's just because I know the characters though. I, well, don't know the Callisto, but I know like Bad. I know that he couldn't have done it. But like, I don't know. This was found loaded in the video player in lobby number two. That was connected to the large television that had its volume turned all the way up. You can't honestly mean that the sound we heard was the gunshot in the video. Ah, oh, but I do, which leads me to my next point. The murders occurred much earlier when, than when anyone heard the gunshot. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of, too. After committing double homicide, the killer took the surveillance video out of from Mr. Friday's evidence bag. This case is miles easier than, than the third case. It is, honestly. This case was easy as fuck. But, I, I don't know, I feel like... For the reason that people hit the third case supposedly, other than old bag, the reason of like it being kind of weird with how much you have to present evidence and like it's kind of like I feel like this case did that even more to be honest. Not that I don't like this case, I've really enjoyed all of these cases so far. But like this this did that exact same thing with that last part with just like Oh yes, the video. How does this correlate to anything? Just like over and over and over and over again. The killer took the surveillance video out from Mr. Friday's evidence bag, turned the television's volume all the way up, and left the video to play. If played from the beginning, it would take 30 minutes for the gunshot sound to come on. And since we now know that this method of time manipulation is possible, it opens up the possibility that the killer is someone other than Detective Gumshoe. Sounds from a television doesn't amount to much here. But of course Mr. Presky right worth and little Miss Von Karma. Already knew that much from the very beginning, right? But of course we knew, didn't we, Miles? Yes, of course. We know that about the soundproof quality of this courthouse's rooms. Of course, I'm not about to admit we had no idea until a little while ago. That's right. And if the rooms were soundproof, then we should not have been able to hear it. And yet we heard the gunshot clear as day. And? And? That's it. End of story. Like, this is all very obvious. Callisto... You didn't do a very good job, I'm sorry. Like, not at all. Hmm, but it's not. <laughs> How should I explain why she was able to hear a gunshot from the soundproof room? So that's why we got... Oh, never mind. The window was open! Bitch! I thought we were going to have to present the, um... Her perfume. Because I was like, why the fuck did we get her perfume in evidence? This. Perfume given to bad by you. Same perfume as the one spilled in lobby number one. I thought we were going to have to present that to be like... This is the window. This is actually one common point between Lobby 1 and Lobby 2. And it is that, despite the fact that both rooms have air conditioners installed, a window is open in each. Now we know that the window in Lobby number 2 was opened by the killer. However, a window in Lobby number 1 was also opened. <laughs> it's probably just coincidence they were both open at that time. Objection. Here I presented. <laughs> it was no mere coincidence, I assure you. Why was the window open in lobby number one? The answer is that a certain person did something to cause the window to be opened, and that the person who triggered that action, that person is the real guilty party. The real killer in this double murder is... Take that! Miss Callisto Yu. I hereby formally indict you for the murder of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. What? You indict me? Oh fuck, she's pissed. This is- this is not the shock that everyone thinks it is. Are you serious, Myers? Or why do you think she's the killer? I don't understand her motive just yet. But of course I'm serious. Because she is the only one who could have done it. Well, Miss Yu, do you still feel like laughing now? <laughs> of course I do, Miss Edgeworth. And you as the sussy backer, of course. From the very beginning. My argument must not be tight enough yet. Although I never thought things would spiral into this. But I'll have you know I'm enjoying this dance quite a bit. Oh no, it's lagging. Care someone near? And you are the killer. <laughs> I guess this means it's time for my own rebuttal now, right? Oh, thank god. I thought Kay was going to show up. It started lagging. <laughs> That's the sign of the <laughs> the great thief Yadagrasu. Wait, that means that it's Callisto. Oh, fuck! You argued that the window was open. However, do you have proof that it was I who did that? Furthermore, do you have proof that the tape was used in committing the crime? 
Frankly, I'm shocked at you for going around accusing people of murder like this. Especially with logic as full as uh, as full of hold as you're. You can't even speak, bitch. Fuck, bitch. This is where it really starts. I must have let my guard down for even a second, or the truth will blow away. Now is the time to put the patented von Karma perfect proof to the test. I'm sure that could just pre present the perfume on the first day, man. But I'm gonna pre press anyway. You're okay that the window was opened. How already have proof it was I who did that? Uh, no! Evidence? All I'd need to do is have some prints analyzed and we'd know straight away. <laughs> Be my guest. She sounds as though she has the room to maneuver, which means, even if we were able to lift prints, they'd only show that it was someone else, but... Why that someone else was forced to open the window? Hmm, <laughs> that's simple logic. Why don't I try presenting the... <laughs> Shut up! What's wrong? The scrunched eyebrows lands on your forehead, they're all back! More importantly, are you gonna be okay not running a fingerprint analysis? Yes, I'll be fine. Oh, well in that case, I'll just continue with my testimony, alright? Furthermore, do you have proof that the tape was used in committing a crime? I thought I'd just prove that it was. Sure, you proved the tape was there at the scene of the crime. However, that doesn't prove it was actually used in said crime. Unfortunately for you, Ms. Yu, the fact that the tape was there at the crime scene is in, in itself very important. How so? Hmm. By the very existence of that tape of the crime scene, it proves the possibility that the when of the crime could have been fabricated. And that possibility alone renders all alibis and witness reports irrelevant. Basically, it means we will need to re-examine every person's movements again. Whether the tape was used in the crime or not, that we can re-evaluate afterwards. Kim. So in conclusion, you're admitting that you can't prove that it was at this point. Frankly, I'm shocked at you for going around accusing people of murder like this. Even if you're shocked, that is of no concern to me. I do things my own way. Oh? I see that you're not laughing for a change. Because I'm shocked. Again, you being shocked is of no concern to me. Let us continue with the testimony. Aha! Uh -huh. Alright, but let me say just one thing. You shouldn't go around accusing people. Especially with lodging as full of holes as yours. I managed to say the line. Fuck, she said the line. Full of holes? Hm. Well, I suppose it might be. Oh, admitting to your faults now, are we? At this point in time is what I meant to say. Should I take that to mean that you're just a sore loser? <laughs> no matter how full of holes my logic may be right now, if I pluck them one at a time, I will ultimately make my way to the truth. What a paradox. Take care not to fall in one of those holes before you fill it up. <laughs> Maz, you remember, don't you? But why? Oh, okay, I'm, I'm skipping your text. 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 They're treating me like a dumbass. I just wanted to be lovely. What is the button? S. No. A. Fuck. W. I just wanted to press everything. You don't have to treat me like a fucking moron. Dumbass. Bitch. Fuck. 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 Bitch. Fuck. Bitch. Fuck. Bitch. Bitch. Fuck. 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 I'm sure you've seen this before, haven't you, Ms. You? <laughs> Petra, I never knew you were wearing that kind of perfume. It's not exactly what I'd recommend for boys, you know? I'm experimenting with my sexuality, thank you very much. That's right, it's mine, and I received it from Detective Bad, you see? Miss Yu, you can pretend all you like, but we know at least this much for sure. This perfume actually was quite nice on me, so... There, take that. I liked it. You got a problem with that? that this bottle of perfume was given to you to Detective Bad by you. <laughs> because it gets really strong really fast. So, what about the perfume? While you were in lobby number one, you made a big show of spilling some of the, this perfume. That's according to Detective Bad. <laughs> oh, I know. You also knew that if you spilled it, it would naturally move to open a window. Come now, I've already told you that it's just a big coincidence. After we opened the window in lobby number one, I just left it open, you know? So maybe it was just dumb luck that we heard the gunshot through the window. The timing of when you were going to spill the perfume is something you could control. And the most important fact about this case is when people were made to hear the shot. Furthermore, it would have been pointless if you didn't have an alibi for yourself at the time. Uh, you mean... Ms. Yu, you were the one who called Detective Bad into lobby number one. When you saw him bring Detective, Detective Gumshoe into the hallway, is that correct? 
All of today's premeditated events could only have been thought of by you. Miss you! Gah! <laughs> you accuse me of murder and the fact that I spilled a little perfume? Well, allow me to say this much. I couldn't have killed Mr. Faraday. Would you care to testify as to why? <laughs> Look, I've had a lot of fun today, really. But I grow weary of this game of cat and mouse. Let's make this the last testimony and wrap up this absurd case once and for all. Accusing someone of murder of a spilled bottle of perfume is a bit over the top. But I suppose forgery of evidence is to be expected of a disciple of Von Karma. In any case, it simply could not have been me who, sim who killed Mr. Faraday. After all, I don't even know where the knife that was used to kill him came from. Oh, uh, really? Niles, her testimony is flawless. Yes, but no matter what sort of trick she may try to pull, she won't escape me. And if I'm lacking in information, I'll just draw it out of her. Why, it couldn't be you. Uh-oh. Accusing someone of murder of a spilled bottle of perfume is a bit over the top. Oh, I think I already explained the significance of that earlier. You want to confirm that I did spill some perfume. But that's all. That you would accuse me of murder based on a simple spill. Don't you dare complain when I sue you for defamation of character. <laughs> Do as you like. But as for me, I believe. But as for me, I... What? You believe? I believe that you are the true culprit in this case. <laughs> My, you're enthusiastic. Of course, I should have guessed. But I suppose forgery of evidence is to be expected of a disciple of Von Karma. What? That's rude! I formally request that you desist in your attack against my mentor. Yes! I will sue you for defamation! <laughs> All I'm doing is telling the truth. Well, maybe more like spreading gossip. Although, your adamant denials are, shall we say, just adding fuel to the fire. How dare you! Say such a thing! Calm down, little girl. Don't let her get to you. <laughs> uh -huh. Aw, why'd you have to ruin my fun? <laughs> well, shall I continue? In any case, it simply could not have been me who killed Mr. Faraday. And why exactly could you not have killed him? <laughs> I was just about to testify to that. You're such an impatient man. I'm not really even into that, you know, Edgeworth. Uh, well, your preferences have no bearing on what is at hand. <laughs> Feeling a little uncomfortable, are we? Yes, you're being weird. Objection! Ms. Yu, he will desist in this tomfoolery and return to your testimony. And Myers, if you're going to lose your cool, then I won't show you any mercy. Um, sorry. Ms. Yu, please continue with your testimony. Sure. As I was saying, I couldn't have possibly killed Mr. Faraday. After all, I don't even know where the knife that was used to kill him came from. Cease this tomfoolery. <laughs> At this rate, she will inevitably escape. But if she really was the one who killed Mr. Faraday, then she must have known about the existence of the knife. I'm sorry, Miss Yu. Maybe you weren't aware. However, the knife that was used to kill Mr. Faraday was taken from his evidence bag. Uh, Miles, what do you think you're doing? Hm, I'm drawing the truth out of her. That's what I'm doing. Huh? But I don't recall a knife being present presented at the trial earlier today. Unless the knife was something that can be disguised as something. Whoa. Well, I suppose that's because the evidence was something Mr. Friday had yet to use. <laughs> ah, so that's what you're trying to do. Look, why don't you cut it out with the lies? I've already figured you out. There was no knife inside Mr. Faraday's evidence bag. The only evidence he'd yet to present was the key that Yadagrasu would send. And unless a key can magically turn into a knife, you really don't have a leg to stand on. Well, funny you mention that. <laughs> Did you really think you could trap me? Come now, be honest. <laughs> I never intended to do such a thing. It was all a misunderstanding on my part. In any case, I wonder if you might append what you just said to your testimony. Sure. Why not? I'll even say... First spelling mistake of the game! Woo! Let's go! Phoenix, right? The whole trilogy had 
so many spelling mistakes. First spelling mistake of this game is the final part of the fourth case. Or maybe I did mess some, but... First one that I've noticed at least. I'll even say it as many times as you'd like. There was a... Oh fuck, I pressed Alt. There was a key in his evidence bag, but you can't kill anyone with a simple key. Fuck. Finally, it would appear that you have revealed your true identity, Miss Yule. Niles, you have final statement. Yes, I do. Fuck, I pressed Alt again. Why is it so close to X? All I have to do is... But what is this ominous feeling that I can't shake? Miss Yu, I would like to confirm something with you one more time. Oh, about what's going to happen to Detective Gumshoe after this? I don't need to ask you about that, because he isn't the killer. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the number of wrinkles on your forehead have increased yet again. <laughs> Stop making fun of me! That issue aside, Miss Yu, I'd like to ask you about what was inside the bag. You're sure it was the Atarasu's key, correct? Yes, I'm sure. Which is why I'm completely baffled as to where that knife could have come from. I think I've just spotted the road to a perfect victory. Is it simply that the key is a knife? know about the key that's what I'm thinking that's why I'm looking through this because I'm like is it that she shouldn't have known about the key but I think it is just that we have to present the key and be like yo it's a knife Objection! yeah and there's you I wonder if you might take a look at this photo from me for me this is a picture of the key the Atagrasu sent to the police however well it may look like a key at first glance it, in fact, has the secret ability to transform into a knife. Which means that what was inside Mr. Faraday's bag was both the Atagrasu's key and the murderous knife. You knew that the key was inside Mr. Faraday's bag, did you not? Yes. Well, with the Atagrasu's key alone, it's more than possible to kill Mr. Faraday. Yeah. Do you understand now, just knowing of the existence of the Atagrasu's key? to fix my makeup. I still haven't had a good look at it. Showing it to me from that far away, you could be lying for all I know. You would even now still feign ignorance. <laughs> I'm not feigning anything, but we can't have you excusing me for crime with false evidence now, can we? I mean, Mr. Von Karma, I've heard some very interesting rumors about him. Ugh, are you mocking my papa? Don't you dare sully the good name of my mentor. Now take a good look. This piece of evidence is more than real. Give it to Bud, he can do it. She's sussy. Wow, who knew there was such a trick to this thing? Are you satisfied now? But of course you knew from the very beginning, didn't you? You knew that the knife and the Atagrasu's key are one and the same. Otherwise, someone like you who isn't a member of law enforcement, and who would never have been privy to this trick, would never would have never known about it to begin with. <laughs> Furthermore, there's something that the Atagrasu sent to the police. How did you have knowledge as to what it was? There we go. There it is. <laughs> Actually, I heard it from Mr. Faraday. Just before he dragged Mr. Bell off, he told me. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. He also told me about the key turning into a knife at that time. But he didn't tell me about how the key was actually transformed. What you're saying is simply not possible. Huh? Oh, and why not? Because Mr. Faraday himself didn't know about the hidden knife within the key. Within these pages, he mentions nothing about a knife. <laughs> I'm not sure he would have written everything in his organizer, you know? Wouldn't something of this importance be better left oral communication? Objection! Unfortunately, that is also impossible. Because Detective Bat didn't know about the knife aspect either. Chira! 
What would have been highly classified information, even within the police force? And is something that even the lead detective on the case didn't know. Why would Mr. Faraday have felt the need to share such information with the opposition? <laughs> yeah, I guess he wouldn't have much of a reason to. <laughs> Looks like I give a pretty lame excuse, huh? <laughs> How can you laugh at a time like this? He probably just realized the flaw in her logic and is actually in a panic over it. But that's not something we need to concern ourselves with. Hmm. I suppose you're right. Ms. Yu, I'd like to state that I also know how you know the real nature of the knife. Such a sussy baka, she's the sussiest. <laughs> Do you now? Well, why don't you put your money where your mouth is and show me? Oh, I will. And I'll wipe that smile off your face by the time we're through. This is it. The moment of truth. The secret behind the Yatagrasu's key. Only one person would have had knowledge of it from the get-go. Who would know from the start that... What if I presented... Calesta? Because it's technically right, but... There's only one person who would have known about the jeweled nature of the key. <laughs> and that is... And that is the person who sent the Yatagrasu's key to the police. That is to say, the Yatagrasu herself. He was saying that his lawyer is a great thief, the Yatagrasu! Yes, I figured this out ages ago. Shush. Miss Yu, you used Mr. Rell to lure Mr. Faraday into a trap, didn't you? You, who professed, a bear, who professed to bear a grudge against criminals. Why? Why do something like this? <laughs> Who would have thought that you, the stupid rookie prosecutor, would see through me? You're sending the biggest chill down my spine right now, Edgeworth. This feeling of thrill. It's even greater than when I sneak into some place. You! You! You killed Faraday! Why? Answer me! Callisto, you! <laughs> Callisto, you? Huh? That's not my real name. Oh, fuck! She's an imposter? A sussy baka? She vented? Oh my god, she lied about it. Oh my god! She's not Cece's sister! She's not real! Oh my god! Because my real identity is, yes, the great thief Yadagarasu. Oh! Let me tell you something, Edward. Mr. Faraday was one difficult man to deal with. For you see, he discovered my true identity. Which is why I had to erase him from the world of law. I made Rel an offer and a quitter for a little favor in return. All he had to do was accuse Mr. Faraday of being the Yadagrasu in court. But once he entered the recess, Rail was dragged off by Mr. Faraday, which threw my plan into a complete mess. I chased after them, and he stopped on, on them through a crack in the door. That Rail gives to only two things, money and authority, just as all thugs do. I feared my plan was going to be ruined if Mr. Faraday held on to Rel any longer. Plus, if I'd let them continue on the way they were, I would have been found out. And that's why I had no choice. I had to kill them both. But didn't you say that you despised criminals? <laughs> Do I really? No. Have you forgotten about the KG-8 incident too? Maybe. What sort of woman would? So then, was it your plan to kill Mr. Friday with the very evidence that you sent? <laughs> well, I had a good idea of what Mr. Faraday was going to do. I anticipated that Mr. Faraday was going to prove that Rel was in the Yadagarasu, by using this Yadagarasu's key as evidence, and that he would bring it with him. Which is why I thought to use the knife portion. With the weapon as well disguised as this, no one would be the wiser. Because who in their right mind would think something like this could be a weapon? <laughs> I did. I casually entered lobby number two on the pretext that I had to talk with Mr. Faraday. And in order to get in with him, I pretended to be worried about something. He then let, let me hold the Yadagrasu's key, just like that. 
He never noticed that I changed the key into a knife inside that plastic bag. Oh, fuck. Wait, no. Astro. I get what you mean. I was spoiled and I didn't even... I didn't... I didn't... Oh, I got the knife! Oh! I didn't... I didn't notice it! I just... Oh, my God! That is... Oh, my God! <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> you were right! Oh my god! You were right! <laughs> oh. oh my god! <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, I was spoiled without even realizing it. That is the picture of her killing Burn! Both of the profile pictures! Oh my god. I was like, one of your Twitter mutuals has an AI spoiler in their profile pic, and I was like, what? Yeah, I was so confused. I, I literally, I, the worst part is I looked through all of them again. And I remember specifically, I was like, okay, this profile pic has Callisto in it. Nah, no spoilers in there. It's just Callisto. Fuck! Ah, I think I know which person has that, yeah. Oh my god, I'm actually, oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Honey didn't have the chance to take a note. What? And he didn't have the chance to take note of the knife that took his life. I'm glad I was here for that. <laughs> oh my god. What did you kill him? I knew him for a long time, you know. At the very least, I thought to give him a quick and painless death. But if you killed Mr. Friday first, there was no need for you to kill Mr. Rell as well. I believe I mentioned why when we were placing Detective Gumshoe under arrest. Yeah, she was literally, she was saying what she did. Rell walked in, she was like, oh fuck, guess you're dead. Something about having accidentally created an eyewitness. And how that led the killer to think about setting them up as though they'd killed each other. What? I totally didn't know this. Then the trick with the surveillance tape. Yes, I hadn't actually planned to use a gun. The risk was too high that I'd be caught. However, that's when I remembered the existence of that surveillance tape. Which is why I had Rel help me set up the crime scene. And after all, the, all was said and done, I rewarded him for all his hard work with a bullet. You! You're a defense attorney, aren't you? How could you... How could you portray a client? <laughs> client? If you want to talk about who was a client of whose first, it was me. It was the client in the murder of the Kadopian Embassy staff member, Dade Man. E you ordered a hit job. <laughs> you still haven't figured it out, Mr. Bad? Rob was unfortunately... Wait, so is she the one who assaulted us? Rose, unfortunately, they're the wrong place at the wrong time. How cruel, yeah. Whoopsie. I had Dave Man killed because he was about to give away info about the smuggling ring. Now, who exactly do you think would benefit from such an assassination? It can't be. You. You're. That's right. I'm a member of the smuggling ring. Ugh. This is a shock. How could this. You don't mean. You're working with Manny Coachin too, do you? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Guess you'll never know. Zayata Grasu claims to be noble, but you're just another cold-blooded murderer. It is actually kind of a wild thing that Yata Grasu is, but I mean, Callisto, come on. She has smuggling ring written all over her. What kind of name is Dead Man? Somebody who's a dead man. Of course. <laughs> That's right, little girl. The Yadigarazi is just another killer. Be quiet. You! Yadigarazi! You can run from the law, but you'll never escape it. So just humbly accept the judgment of this court. <laughs> hey, Edgeworth. Did you know? The Yadigarazi has three legs. Do you know why that is? What? <laughs> no. Well, let me tell you. It means that the Yadigarasu has more than one razor sharp way to do her work. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, she has a fucking gun! Oh my god. <laughs> oh my... I said, oh my fuck, by the way. <laughs> my instant reaction was, oh my fuck. <laughs> Oh my god, this is fucking crazy. I love this case so much. You really are too naive, Edgeworth. 
He even handed the Yadagarasu's key right to me without a second thought. Exactly, that's why I said we should hand it to Bad. Why did you give it to her? You knew that she was the Yadagarasu. This kept slapped so much. Yeah, I understand now. At first I was like, eh. This is about as, as good as like Kestu and Kestu were in my opinion. But this is fucking phenomenal. This is amazing. <laughs> For a neutral special seat, she wields a gun. <laughs> no one expects the gun. Yeah, that was a fucking shock. Oh my god. <laughs> Everything may not have gone according to plan, but I'll still gladly take it. Ugh. You mean... The key was your real target? Obviously. Uh, and even after I gave you such great advice, this is like when we presented the fucking, um, the letter to Von Karma and turned about goodbyes. It's like, come on. You, you didn't expect that? Come on. This is the one thing I wanted to make sure not to tell you? The gun? <laughs> well, that's fair, because I would have probably assumed, oh... She has a gun while well, she's the killer. Even though I already was pretty sure. I might tell you the killers, but not the funny gun screenshot. That's fair. <laughs> and even after I gave you such great advice, didn't I tell you to always keep a good eye on a criminal? Well, you may regret what comes of your negligence. Yeah, exactly. I guess I do what's a rookie. But like, come on, bro. You two, get down! <laughs> Ugh, my body. I can't move. Okay. Hey, mister. To your right. Okay, get out of here. Oh, my God. Ew. <laughs> she runs. He runs. Oh, my God. Are you all right, Francesca? I I'm perfectly fine, Miles. Her voice is shaking, but it looks like she's unharmed. Hmm? Where did Kay go? Uh, oh, that's a gunshot. Kay saved Miles. She did. Oh my god, that was phenomenal. Oh, that whole scene was amazing. And a lot shorter than I expected. Sorry, but it looks like she got away. I called the precinct. They should have a perimeter set up soon. Detective Bud, are you alright? I heard a gunshot. I'm okay. Just got another hole in my jacket. He may say he's fine, but he looks quite shaken. But more importantly, boy, I mean, Mr. Edgeworth, Miss Von Karma, are you too hurt? Uh, I... I'm absolutely fine. I'm also alright, thanks to Kay. Speaking of Kay, where is she? Hmm, I don't know. She just sort of disappeared. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, Bad, for thinking that you were the Yatagarasu. But that doesn't make sense. Why is Kay the second Yatagarasu? Hmm, looks like Edgeworth didn't follow his father and having died a bullet in his shoulder for years. <laughs> hmm, I don't know. She just sort of disappeared. Hmm, I'll go look for her. Sorry about if I'm sussing you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for calling you a sussy back on my dead fellow. Oh, and hey, Detective Gumshoe. Uh, yes, sir. Detective Bud, sir. I'm sorry I doubted you. Uh, don't worry, sir. It's not your fault. I... Well, I lied to you guys too, after all. I heard about what happened. I'm Kay. Lying while giving testimony still unforgivable. But in this case, you're protecting Kay and her feelings. Looks like you just might have what it takes to be a real detective. Oh. Now don't you ever lose that detective spirit, okay? Y you got it, Pops! Pops? Pops. Watched one too many detective dramas recently, have we? They really tried to make you sus color stand him both. Well, the reason that I sussed him was purely... I thought it was the Yatagrasu. Because K had to have been handed it down from someone, and I didn't think it was Burn. So the only person in my mind that made sense was Bad. But, um... Guess not. Sorry, Bad, for calling you a sussy little baka. Watched one too many detective dramas recently, have we? Way to single-handedly destroy the cherry atmosphere with one snarky comment. Uh, I should get back to the investigation. Stop smiling, shut up. I swear, 
I'll catch you if it's the last thing I do. But uh, yeah, with Bad and Callisto hating each other so much, highly, highly doubt that he's any part of the Atagrasu. I thought it was like a, a leak at me to situation, you know? Investigating the crime while also being the one doing it, even though he wasn't actually Master Mask, but you know what I mean. He claimed to be, and he was in that one time. Be careful, Detective Bad, and take care. Thanks. Well, I'm off. Maybe we'll run into each other again someday. I hope so. He's lovely. I love Dad. I called him Dad accidentally, because I just fucked up my words, and I wanted to say Detective Bad, so I went Duh Bad. So I just went Dad. I'm gonna say Dad one day. Um, so, uh, thanks a bunch, Bell. You're the best. You're ready to find out the truth behind everything. Yes, well, I'm glad we solved everything before you were taken to prison. Oh, I'm a little bitch. I can't believe how much trouble I caused you with my testimony, Detective Gumshoe. Oh, it was no problem. Really. <laughs> I mean, I lied too, so I didn't help anything. It's really not your fault, Your Honor. Well, even if we didn't have his honest testimony, I think that lawyer would have found another way to get you to convicted on her behalf. Yeah, I can't believe I was about to get fired during my first week as a detective. Hmm, well, so long as you're not fired. You should work hard, give all that you have, and perform your duties well. Oh, and one more thing. Kay left a present for you with me. She did? Oh, what is it? What was it that Kay left for me? The proof of their friendship. I'm guessing it's the, uh, Swiss roll. Take that! It's... It's a courthouse special Swiss roll! Yet I really have it! Yes, it's a present meant for you, after all. Thanks a bunch! You have no idea how happy this makes me, Paul! I'm gonna eat this right now! Sure, go ahead. The Swiss roll is Detective Gumshoe and K bought together. Oh, look at them! <laughs> well, the one K saved never reached her father. It would appear that her sentiments have touched the heart of this detective. He's so happy it's as though he's having a welcome back celebration of his own. Well, I was asked by Kay to give it to him. Whoop! That was good, Paul! I can't believe I got to eat two of these delicious things in one day. It's like I'm in Swiss World Paradise or something. I've got to thank Kay myself. Hey, wait, where is she? He only noticed just now. Was his mind not present when we discussed her earlier? Detective Bad left to go search for her earlier. Maybe you should go join him. Yeah, you betcha, Paul. I'm gonna go help him. Oh, uh, but first... You know what, Paul? Actually, I guess I shouldn't be so rude to you anymore, huh? I'm gonna stick right by your side from now on, Mr. Edward, sir! Oh, this is so nice! I sense nothing but a most troublesome relationship from that ominous statement. We should go to home too, Myers. We have to hurry and report what has happened to Papa. I won, bitch. Agreed. Well, I'm afraid we must be going now, Detective. Roger, sir. And don't you worry, I'll investigate the next case run real well. I'll, um, be counting on you. The scent of trouble is definitely in the air. Thus, like a bad dream, my first outing at, a, at court came to a disturbing end. A few months later... I was finally able to properly stand in court as a prosecutor. But the detective in charge of the investigation was, as I dreaded, Detective Gumshoe. After that, he became my direct subordinate. I have tried, but words fail to describe the immeasurable suffering he has caused me. But I suppose that's just how things are. As for the little girl who suddenly disappeared, she's now... Oh, I care. Oh my god, it was the cravat! <gasps> she handed back the cravat. Oh my god. <laughs> cute, cute, cute. So much cute. So, so cute. Such a good kiss. If anyone doesn't like kiss, but they do not have taste. Yeah. She just happens to have the cravat. Yeah, she kept it. Oh my god, she returned it just like she said she would. So, do you remember now? Yes. I remember everything. Okay. It's been a while. 
Okay, you sure grew up a lot. Of course, but thank goodness. I thought you two had totally forgotten about me. You know, I was really worried about you after all that. Where have you been all this time? <laughs> Gummy, I didn't know you cared. After my father died, I went to go live with my mother's relatives. They live really far away, so I wasn't really able to come back here all that much. And was your mother's relative perhaps someone by the name of Callisto Hugh? Oh, is that what happened? Well, I'm just glad you're all right. Well, I'm assuming... Don, I'm not going to be able to look up Callisto after this. That is sad. I've, I've kind of been looking up the killers I know are not the best idea, but just looking at the sprite gallery specific. Do not look her up? Yeah, because that's a fake name. And she's definitely going to show up in KS5 if that's the case, fuck. Damn. I don't get to see her funny laughing sprites. I don't get to save laughing gifts of her, fuck. Oh, is that what happened? Well, I'm just glad you're alright. <laughs> so, does it all make sense now? You betcha it does. Oh, you know what? I was going through my father's bookshelves recently, and... Wait a minute. Actually, there are still a number of things that don't make sense, okay? There's no way it's here, right? I don't know, I haven't been spoiled in saying. I... Didn't you men mention earlier that it's a secret at the end of Case 4? Because I... Didn't understand what that meant, but is this where the cameo happens? Are we going to be able to walk around and see Phoenix and Maya? Nope. Okay, never mind. I have no idea when that was in Case 3, then. I legitimately... I... Cameo is in Case 3, yeah. I never was able to move around in this... Uh, area. That's odd. Actually, there are still a number of things that don't make sense, okay? Oh? I think it was probably right at the beginning of Part 3, when you're put into the Wild Wild West. You probably go right, and you can, you're can you just allowed to go there. That's That's the only time I can think of that I can think of. Oh? First of all, why did you come all this way to see me? And second, why are you calling yourself the Yatagarasu? The Yatagarasu is Callisto Yu, the woman who killed your father. No, you're wrong. The real Yatagarasu was my father. I don't believe that for a second. Mm, Mr. Faraday was the Yatagarasu. Like I said, I was going through my father's bookshelf recently. And I found a secret diary hidden among his books. I have no regrets in choosing to walk the path of the Yatagarasu. Are you sure that he wrote it, though? That was written in his diary, and that's how I know for sure. Oh, but that's... that's impossible. Unless it is what I thought, is it like an organization? But why would this happen? Why would Callisto shoot and kill him? For revealing that she's the Yatagarasu, if he's the Yatagarasu, along with her. But that's... Uh, that's impossible. What's with that book? You don't believe me? It wasn't just the expression of my face, I clearly said it was impossible just now. Alright then, how do you explain this? It's a way of disarming any security system of the user's choosing. Yep, that's Little Thief. Truth be told, this is the Adagrasu's greatest secret. And this little gizmo was used by my father. Wow! Mr. Farrah, he wasn't just a great father, he was a really great thief, huh? Yeah, my father worked really hard to steal the truth. But he was killed. And the Adagrasu was no more. But despite that, the Adagrasu has been spotted again recently. Someone other than you. Hey, Mr. Redworth. You'll find out in, like, a day. Someone's gonna hit you on the head. Take a look at this article. The Adagrasu sends card to Embassy. Ooh, next kiss. The Adagrasu sent the Embassy. A calling card. Yeah, meaning this person's a fake. I'm almost certain that Callisto, that Callisto you ladies behind this. Because the real Yatagarasu would never send something like a gaudy card out. But the Yatagarasu did send a white card along with anything to be publicized. That's what Detective Bad told me seven years ago, if memory serves. Well, as soon as I heard the news, I got all wound up, and I knew I couldn't just let it go. So I searched you out, so that I could obtain the truth behind the Yatagarasu. Because if anyone can help me find it, I figured it's you, Mr. Redroy. So you're saying that I have your father and Ms. Yu's identities backwards? Yes, because the real Yadagrasu is noble to the end. And I want to revive the real noble Yadagrasu. If I don't, my father will never be able to re rest in peace. Okay. Okay. You're so honorable. I don't care what anyone else thinks. I'll always be here to cheer you on, Belle. Even if you are honorable, honorable, a thief is a thief. And if you are plotting to commit a crime, then I'm afraid I can't be complicit. 
Must rush forward. Oh, you guys are not making it easy for me. Who am I supposed to support now? Mr. Edgeworth, what, if I, what I want from you is not to steal something. What I want is the arrest of that evil woman. That evil woman? You mean Callisto, you? I think it's too hard for me to catch her all by myself. But I thought that since you were able to expose her for who she is, then maybe... Please, Mr. Edgeworth, won't you help me? Sure, why not? Come to think of it, I do believe I owe you. Huh? Owe me for what? When Ms. Yu made her escape, it was you who saved my life. Furthermore, you helped me with the investigation today. I'm not so rude as to leave favors unrepaid. Then you mean... Yes. That case has been weighing down my soul ever since that fateful day. Perhaps the time has come to settle things once and for all. If you don't intend to sully your hands in a crime, then I believe I can help you. Mr. Edgeworth, thank you. Yay, Mr. Edgeworth, sir! Isn't that great, Kay? Yeah, it sure is, Gummy. Even though he had completely forgotten about her until just now. Ugh, oh, what is with that chummy relationship? The Great Thief Yatagarasu. After all that time, the true identity of the thief sank back into the darkness. Glenn Faraday, Callisto Yu, and Kay Faraday. The phantasma... The phantasmagorically changing identity of the Great Thief Yatagarasu. And the Yatagarasu's real goal. It would all come to light the day after I made that promise to Kay. The end! Oh my god. That was such a good kiss. I loved that. Oh my god. Turn about a blaze, bow! Hey, bow! How does it feel to fucking be a bitch? Bitch? Gumshoe, why would you say that? Well, you don't like- you don't like when Kay steals things. That's a bitch move. She's awesome. It's K. Look at that. It's K. Oh, it's K. Alright, that is going to do it for today. That was so fun, but Callista... Well... She's not really dead, is she? Hmm. I won't kill her in quite the same way, but she'll- she'll just- <laughs> Alright, she's dead. In her own way. Quirkasalba. He's next! You see him? He's next! But anyway... For today, Lank Oldly, start, there we go. <laughs> uh, for today, that will be it. That was so much fun, actually. I think the next time that I can stream is in like three or four days, uh, which is good, because it'll give me time to rest my throat from Von Karma and Bad, even though Von Karma didn't uh, have much of a role in the case, so it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So I probably could, could stream it tomorrow if uh, my mum was at work, but she's not, so in like three or four days or something. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to finish case five in one stream because there are apparently seven parts in total, one beginning, three middle, and three ends. So I doubt that we're going to be able to finish that in one stream. We'll see how it turns out, basically. That was a really thrilling case. I'm glad I stayed for the end. Yeah, the end of that really, really made it. I loved that. You will not finish in one stream it is long. Chloe? Chloe, how many times have you said that? Twice? Chloe, are you sure? Are you positive? Are you absolutely certain? No, I'm kidding. I don't think I'd, I'd be able to. <laughs> but you have said that twice now, and I finished in one stream both times. <laughs> Astro can back me up this time. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to finish it, but I don't know when I'll end. We'll see when we get there. I'll have to keep track of which part we're on, so that I don't accidentally miss one like I did with case 3. <laughs> I remember going a little insane with it. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to do it for today. Uh, I really enjoyed that. That was so much fun. 5,054 5, minutes, almost 6 hours. But also it was my first day of games, so I didn't really know long cases, yeah. Felt very long near the end. Fair enough. We might do the first... Uh, what, four parts together in one stream, and then the next, the last three in the next stream. Maybe we'll have to split it, split it into three streams, I don't know. What's your longest stream? My longest stream was about 7 hours 40, I think. It was uh, The Greatest Attorney uh, 1 Case 5. The ending for that was like 7 hours 40 minutes, I think. 
Yeah, the greatest donate one cast five was insane. Yeah, <laughs> after an eight hours back to back, and I feel scared knowing this other people who go over twelve hours. Yeah, when I, like whenever I hear like a twelve hours, I'm like, holy fuck! I can't even watch something for twelve hours, let alone do something for twelve hours. Like, oh my god! I've never got an eight hours though. Wow. <laughs> Long streams are sometimes fun, but sometimes it's like, oh. First four parts is actually a great stopping point. You'll know when when you get there. All right, we'll do the first four parts then, then leave. The last three. Um, I'm gonna have to keep track of it though. So we'll find a way to do that. I'll be keeping track though. But yeah, uh, we'll be doing... I feel like I can do 12 hours. But I'm scared for my health. That's fair. And plus you'd have to have like nothing lined up for the whole day. Might crash and just faint, yeah. You'd have to have like nothing lined up for the whole day. First four parts of the amazing half, I see. Yeah, we're gonna end that for today. Damn, it's 1.26am now. Uh, gonna end that for today. I had a really good time with that case. The ending really clutched that as, like, an amazing case. I liked it, but it wasn't, like, outstanding. But that was fantastic. <laughs> and this is the last three parts, we don't talk about those. I'm sure it's gonna be a fantastic end to my Ace Attorney experience. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna end it there for today. 5.56 hours, damn. 5 hours and 56 minutes, rather, is how you would say that. Yeah, we're gonna end for today. I hope that everyone had a fantastic time watching. I certainly had a fantastic time playing. And hopefully, the fifth case is not as bad as everyone's making it out to be. Bye!